The Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark. The Events at Black Tor, Episode 1, Such as Sit in Darkness, a story set on the Yorkshire Moors in which our hero first encounters the powers of evil. Police house, Scarp End. Oh, yes. I see. Well, the constable's out at the moment. It's not very likely. He could be anywhere on the moors. If I were you, Mr Brooks, I'd drop it into the station in town next time you're there. Yes. Yes, all right. Goodbye. Dee, 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 this was a fair sample of Tang Tao Din... I didn't want any more. I began to wonder how I was going to survive my first year in the wilderness. I'd already had enough. You should try a scarp end, love. Da da dee 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 da. Ah, sounds like my lord on his charger. Oh, I'll soon have another of this blasted fresh air. Oh. What the hell is it? Well, don't Here wreck the place. Tell me what it is you're looking for and I'll tell you where it is. Don't tell me how to find things. I've been on a CID course. Have you seen the cream? I think my lips are getting <laughs> chapped. Oh, so funny. Oh, Jamie. Country bobbies aren't supposed to get chapped lips. They've got faces like leather. Is that damn bike? <laughs> But it's the middle of summer. Not on that damn bike, it's not. Well, where is it, then? In the top drawer. No, no, the cabinet. Hey, any mail yet? Not yet. God, we do better by a carrier pigeon. Oh, poor soul. She must cycle 20 miles a day up and down these hills. <laughs> I bet she's not got chapped lips, though. All right, smarty. <laughs> Wait, listen. I know what I had to tell you. You'll never believe it. I didn't at first, and I saw it. I mean, I've always thought it was a bit medieval around these parts. I mean, you know, you walk up this door and you leave the 20th century behind. Well, I was on the Clayton Road, right on the moor top, on my way home. Well, I'd just come round the bend past Geary's place, and there, calm as you like, sitting on what was left of the dry stone wall at the side of the road... <laughs> you'll never believe oh, it. Oh, come on, Jamie, for crying out loud, what? A monk. A what? A monk. Well, a friar, I suppose, really. Anyway... There he was, black cloak, hood, beads, the lot. I nearly died. Honestly, I nearly fell off the bike. I couldn't take my eyes off him. I kept waiting for him to disappear in a puff of smoke. Oh, really, Jamie? <laughs> oh, yes, Miss Clever. It's all very well in your own kitchen, but you get out there on those moors and see a silhouette like that against a lowering, gloomy sky. Oh, was that the mail? Huh? Oh, it sounds like the local suffragette. He was quite cheery, really. Gave me a grin and a matey wave. Hell of a size. He must have been nine foot tall. I think Mrs Bullock's permanently injured your faculties. Well, all right then, six foot four. Let's see now. Another swine fever order. Ah, oh, aye, aye. You'd better paper that back bedroom. Inspector's visit next month. I will not. If he thinks he can do any better against this damp, he can damn well have a go. What's that one? Oh, no idea. Postmark Debden. Well, it's not official. Well, who do we know in Debden that's not official? Open it and find out. You're a very logical woman. I suppose that's why I put up with you, despite all the cardboard. Oh. Let's see. Morning and mass. Hey, are you turning Catholic by any chance? What are you talking about? Well, listen. This morning, a mass was offered for the repose of the soul of Walter Spittlehouse. Spittlehouse? Deceased of this parish. At 3pm tomorrow, a short ceremony of remembrance will take place at the cottage deep dyke. 
May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Signed, Michael Probert, O.P. Oh, it must have been wrongly addressed. Oh, no, the occupier, police house, Carp End. Hmm, do we know a spittle house deceased? What was the name, Walter? I'm sure I don't. Well, I wouldn't forget a name like that. Who's died recently? Nobody, they live forever round here. Oh, I've seen the electors list often enough. But no spittle house in that. What about that address? Cottage Deep Dyke. Well, that's the valley bottom below the Traveller's Rest. There's no cottage round there, not for miles. I mean, it's all scrub and woodland. Hey, except that well, there's an old cart shed affair falling to pieces. Spittle House. Hey, is there any more tea? Mm hmm. Michael Probert, OP. Yeah, it might be in the dictionary. Let's have a look. Here we are. Oh, let's see now, uh, abbreviations. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, here we are. O.P. Order of Preachers. Brackets, Dominicans. Well, that's it then. Hey! Ten to one they were a black habit and even money. Yon lofty great fry was one Michael Probert O.P. But why, I mean, what's going on? Here, drink your tea. Well, perhaps it's some kind of leg pull. <laughs> well, I don't think members of religious orders go about making jokes over masses for the dead. Now, there must be a reason... It's just that at the moment there's a link missing. Unless... Here, hang on. What are you up to now? Shh. See, uh... Oh, hello, Sergeant. Hey, Hewitt here, North Pole. How's crime in civilization? What? Yeah, about the same. Very intimate with cattle and pigs. Uh, no news about my transfer yet, is there? No. No, well, there wouldn't be. Hey, listen, Sarge, uh, does the name Spittlehouse register with you? Walter, deceased. I don't know how long. Uh, we're going uh, back a bit, maybe uh, 10, 12 years. Yeah, wasn't there some old gaffer foully done to death up here? Yeah. Well, his name was Walt, wasn't it? But it wasn't Spittlehouse. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know it's before your time and mine, thank God. Couldn't bear to have been here that long. Yeah, that's right. Hedger? Walt Hedger? What? Huh? Well, was it Hedger, or was that just because of his trade? Hmm? Yeah? Yeah, I see, right. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we'll see if you can root out the book, Sarge. Well, I'll have a look in later on. Will you be in? Hmm? Right. No, 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 just curiosity, really. That <laughs> makes a change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll see you then. Bye. Elementary, my dear Pamela. Old Walt, my dear. Old Walt Edger. Born Spittlehouse, me darling. Born Walter Spittlehouse. Dead by person or persons unknown. Down in the forest, something stirs. I wish I had your touch with this damn thing. It wasn't my idea posting you to that outside beat. You can stop your flannel, Sarge. I'm not going to type it for you. You know, it's making an odd money, you, Jamie, then, Moores. <laughs> yeah, so despite these first reports, there was really never any mystery about the old man's murder. No, according to Harry Bassett, not for long anyway. Well, he was identified pretty quick, considering his head was missing. Oh, uh, nothing to it. I mean, he'd been inside a few times, poaching, vagrancy. His dad's were on file. The theory was he didn't take the air to prevent identification, more likely to hide the mode of death. It's a bit determined, you know, carving the poor devil's head off. Well, not if he thought the wound in it was bound to point to who did it, like being shot in the head at close range from another poacher's gun. Messy wound, but one that would tell quite a story. Type of gun, size of shot. Could have narrowed things down a bit too close for comfort. Harry mm. says they were pretty certain who'd done it. I mean, why kill an old recluse like that? Who'd want to accept another poacher in the heat of an argument about snares or a ferret or... Or well, more likely, still writes to a piece of ground. No. John Woolley Sanderson was strongly fancied. Rabbit Sanderson. He's still up your way. Still up to his old tricks, they tell me. Poaching, I mean, not murder. That 
Wasn't really in his line. Yeah, I've seen him, a uh, little fella. He looks just like that chat here of his. Oh, that's him. Apparently they gave him a right going over, but he wouldn't budge. Wouldn't say a word. If he got no alibi, of course, at that time of night, he'd be out poaching. He'd been known to fall wrong of old Walt odd times before. Anyway, he wouldn't cough, and there was no evidence. And they never found the head? No, no. Not surprising, I mean, not out there. You see, it was almost open and shut. Except they couldn't quite shut it. Oh. Yeah, I don't look so disappointed. It's passed the money for you nicely. And it's brought you down here just in time to give me an hand with this clerical. Well, you've not left much mystery in that. I don't know why this bloke's raking it up again. Would the old man be Catholic, do you think? No, I shouldn't have thought so. Not round here. I suppose you must have been. Else, why is this friar of yours offering masses for him? Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, well. So much for the busman's holiday. Ah, oh, come on, then. Move over. Well, what are you copying up, then? This? Ah. Uh, hey, you're a messy paper, man. Seems like a long track for someone who's decided that the whole case is open and shut. Well, that was before you told me he'd sent those mess for the dead cards to every house in the village. Oh. It appears that Father Michael Probert, OP, doesn't think it's open and shut. I don't know why you couldn't visit this place in the daylight, then. And let the whole world know I'm interested in. You know how much they miss round here. No, it's better this way. A man taking his dog and his wife for a walk. In that order, I notice. Oh, damn. That's a pair of nylons you owe me. Well, look where you're going, Tony. The moon's bright enough. Hey, come on, lass. Come on. Come here. I'll put her on the lead now, I think. It can't be much further. I don't necessarily want to announce our arrival. Ew. Quiet, girl. Quiet. What's the, what's the matter with the dog? I'll tell you what's the matter with the dog. She's damn well scared stiff like me. Oh, no, come on. Now, come on, both of you. Now, come on. Look at her. She's terrified. Oh, what's the matter, pet? Well, feel her. She's shivering. The hair's standing all down her back. Yeah. All right. Yeah, all right. Well, look, she can stay here with you, and I'll go and have a quick oh, look. Oh, no, you don't. If you think I'm well, going to stay... It's only just down there. I huh? don't care. You're not leaving me alone for one second. OK. OK. Look, she'll have to stay here, then, while we both go on. I'll, uh... Well, I'll tie her to this. I think she'll be all right. Oh, why not? She's obviously happier here than going any further. Right. Oh, that should hold her. Oh, poor old thing. Shan't be long, darling. Cheer up. Well, come on, then. And keep quiet. Oh, shh. Now stay there, girl. Oh. Stay there. Come on. Hey-ho. Shh. Oh. She's settled down. Oh, she'll be all right. Hey, look. Look down there. Look, you can just make out the roof, what's left of it. And the chimney, see? Mm, I think so. Well, let's move across there. You'll see it better. Hey, watch where you tread. Mm. That looks pretty quiet. Good. All right, you've seen it. Let's go. Well, hang on a minute. I mean, damn it all. Let's have a look inside. Oh, Lord. Well, there's just that piece of open ground across if anybody's watching. And look... I'll go first. Oh, Jamie. I'll make sure it's all quiet and then signal you. I'll wave a hanky, OK? Now, watch the way I go and you do the same. Keep yourself between the house and the trees and watch your footing. Don't run blindly. it would be a hell of a way to cart you back with a twisted ankle. I'll see you. Be careful, Jamie. Jamie, best foot forward. Where are you, Jamie? I bet he's forgotten I'm here. Wherever you are, Walter Spittlehouse, I hope you rest in peace tonight, body and head. That darling dog's the only one of us with any sense. Oof. Wonder if he's got a clean handkerchief. Ah, here we go. Good, good. Oh. Lovely. Oh. It's all clear. Come on. 
been inside. No, not yet. It seems all quiet. The door's partly open. We can easily get in. You're sure there's no one in there? Of course not. Just shift this door a bit more. There. Oh, come on. Right. <laughs> what was it? A partridge, I think. I must use these beams. The roof's wide open now, look. Anyway, now we're certain it's all clear or the bird wouldn't have been here. Did he really used to live here? Apparently. It's a bit deteriorated now. Oh, no, but even then... It reminds me of your sister's sort of Scandinavian bear. You should have warned her about marrying that arty type. That's funny. She used to warn me about you. Hey, look, there's quite a view out here. That must be Black Tall. Where? The tallest peak. Looking very blunt in North Country in the moonlight. Because we don't normally see it at this angle. Is that a campfire or something? Yeah, it looks like it. Taurus, maybe. It seems very big. I mean, it must be quite a way off. Yeah, so it must be pretty nippy up there. At least it's warm enough down here. Well, well we might as well have a rest for a few minutes. Jamie, we are not stopping here. Uh, not for long, but I'd just like to hang around for a bit, see if anything turns oh, out. I should have listened to my sister. She said policemen were absolutely unscrupulous. <clears throat> now listen, Jamie. Well, what does that? Jamie, that's Bess. Jamie, we've got to help you. Yeah, come on. Hang on, lass. We're coming. Hang on. Hang on, girl. Bess. Jamie, what's happened to her? She's near here somewhere. Bess. Here, Bess. Here, girl. Come in, girl. Jamie? Jamie? <gasps> Is she... She's dead. How? I can't tell. There doesn't seem to be any wound. Oh, sweet. Oh, Jamie, bring her beer and let's go home. Please. Please, Jamie. Yeah. You're right, love. There's more here than I bargained for. For both of you. It's all right. <laughs> She's not that heavy. Oh. <sighs> Did I sweeten it? I can't remember. You ought to go back to bed. You didn't get much sleep. Did you? I kept trying to figure it out. When are you going to... What, Bellia? Yeah? Mm. Well, not just yet. I rung the vet. I'd like him to have a look at her. Post-mortem? Mm. I've had another look in daylight, but I can't see a thing. There's not a mark on her. Poor old thing. I feel so guilty about her. Who's that? What? Oh, it's your apparition from the moors. He's coming here. Yeah, that's him. Spectacular habit, isn't it? Black on white. I told you he was nine foot. Well, I don't know how the hell he folds into a mini. Hey, fasten your tunic. Did you leave the office tidy? Relax. They finished with the Inquisition. One of his brought a few answers this time. Oh, go on. Don't keep him waiting. Constable Amos James Hewitt. Well, that's right, Father. Well, come in. You are only a slender shoot, Amos James. I expected the usual cumbersome dignity. I'm the modern image, Father. Hey, sit down. Thank you. A mixed blessing, then. But maybe you'll be older with the helmet. If not, the situation offers its advantages. I'll be able to play it like the Hollywood bit and give you the old my son treatment after every pearl of wisdom. Are you in the market for pearls of wisdom, Amos James? I'm in the market for information, Father. Hmm. Now, the thing is, Amos James, what goes on under the helmet, under the tunic, seat of the affections? What can I rely on? Well, we don't come with any guarantees, Father. They tell me some of you policemen can go a long way on simple peasant cunning. It isn't enough. They tell me in the old days some of you friars could manage with it quite well. <laughs> You've been in bad company, Amos James, picking up tidbits like that. Uh, will you have one of these? Oh, uh, oh no, thanks. No, I've got a packet somewhere. Oh, come on. I'll catch it back. You'll not get one up on a mendicant. <laughs> well, thanks. Did the dog die? 
Why, yes. Well, how did... I was there. I saw you carrying her afterwards. And what were you doing there? Same as you, I imagine. An instinctive check. I was interested in seeing if my little announcement was working. Well, I wondered too. What did you say? Well, thanks largely to your flat feet, Constable. Nothing. <laughs> it wasn't your fault. Well, that's very charitable of you. Oh, think nothing of it. I'm in the trade. Anyway, our instincts were right. There was quite a lot happening. What exactly? Tell me first, where were you when the dog started to howl? In the cottage? Yeah. I uh, thought as much. Then you owe that bitch a great deal, citizen. They were on their way there when she got wind of them. If they'd walked in on you, you'd have seen too much. I imagine she saved your life. Well, from what, Father? I mean, who were they? Some of your parishioners. Well, you probably know them all during the day. I don't, unfortunately. Neither does my informant. But he does know they murdered the old man's spittle house. Well, don't worry, I'll arrange for you to meet him. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not with it. I can't see why they would want to kill Pam and I, whoever they are. Oh, they didn't want to. It would have been most awkward. The last thing they seek is the limelight. But they would have had to if they felt you even suspected their activities. The dog gave them time to keep out of your way to avoid an embarrassing confrontation. Well, what were they doing? The ceremony of malice. Well, don't ask me why. Probably simply because they knew I intended to perform something clean there later. It's possible that things wholly irritate like grit in the eye of the bestially unclean. They slit the throat of a young pig, for one thing. I heard that. The rest I wasn't able to find out. You put them on their guard. They're religious fanatics. Only they don't worship God. What, then? Satan. They worship the devil. I mean, really, physically and actually, horns, tail and the lot. They don't attempt to rationalise it either. They don't claim they're worshipping the spirit of the new technology or the new humanism or something. That sort of jollops for the masses. These are the real devotees, the spiritual hardcore. Hmm. I can hear Freud nagging away inside you. If you're convinced that I'm some sort of a nutcase, you'll be able to check. No, of course not, Father. It's just that... It's a lovely morning, Amos James. Sunlight on the moors, a bit of wind. Just as it was a lovely night last night. But not in that valley. Didn't you feel it? Thick and palpable evil. Your dog did. She died of fright, you know. Sheer terror. Can't you face that fact? But if you know all this... Why hasn't it been reported? What's to report? I know next to nothing. Certainly I can't prove anything. I'd no intention of telling anyone at this stage, but after last night you'd leave me no choice. I can't let you wander about loose at nights. It's too dangerous. Ah, uh, relax. You're not obliged to believe anything. And anything you do believe will not be taken down in writing and given against you. You'll learn that there's enough solid crime in this to keep you fully occupied. You can leave the sin and the supernatural to others. How many others, Father? Uh, just myself and St. Joseph. He's particularly good at this kind of thing. Though there is one other ally. I'd like you to meet him at the cottage this afternoon. Will you come? Well, yes. Yes, I can do that. Now, I don't see how I can report any of this just yet. <laughs> and I doubt whether we've got a suitable form. Even if we win, Boyo, and this does finally come to be written, I'll promise you one thing. You'll not need any forms for refreshing your memory. The trouble will be in forgetting it. Over there, Father. Oh, you can just see the roof and chimney. Oh, it doesn't look any better in daylight. Well... Oh. I can't see any sign of your informant. You won't. Not till he sees we're alone. It wouldn't be healthy for him to be connected with either of us. We might as well wait inside. Uh, the, the door's not... not really functional. Uh, Come on, no. Well, he's not arrived yet, Father. He was maybe watching from outside somewhere. He's more at home out there. Give him time. Yeah. Um, a cigarette, Father? Later. It's the time I read my office. Oh, well, uh, I'll have a look around. <laughs> you needn't, you know. I don't lay on a bed of nails or anything. You can still smoke. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just that... 
Oh, heck, say one for me, Father. I intended to. Deus in antitorium meum in the Gloria Patria et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, Sigurat in Principio et Nascent Semper et in Sacro et Saclorum. Father! Father, over here! Too late for that, Father. No, I'd rather things were left just as they are for CID. You know who it is? Yes. It's the man you police think was the murderer. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Father. Sanderson. Rabbit Sanderson. Couldn't live with it any longer. It looks like he did do it after all. That's what it's supposed to look like. Well, what do you mean? I mean they did more than just kill the pig last night. There was a more startling climax to the ceremony. This. Don't you understand? This is my informant. This is the man I brought you here to meet. That was episode one of The Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark. Listen to the next episode of Alan Akeborn's production of The Events at Black Tor, The Unquiet Dead. Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark. The Events at Black Tor, Episode 2 The Unquiet Dead, in which Jamie and Father Probert, who have already brushed with violent death, find further evidence of the forces of darkness. The jury soon made its mind up. I can't see why not. Well, maybe so. Have you decided on your verdict? We have, sir. Would you tell the court what it is? <clears throat> we find the deceased, John Willis Anderson took his own life whilst the balance of his mind was disturbed. The court will record that verdict. Thank you, you are discharged. The our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I somehow expected Father Probert to be taking the service. Well, Abbott wasn't a Catholic, apparently, so it'd be one of his demarcation disputes. I wonder why he became involved, then. Association of ideas, I expect. Our own vicar's a bit too rural England for the psychic phenomena. There aren't many here. Oh, I expected more. He wasn't exactly local boy makes good, but he must have had lots of cronies. I mean, why aren't they here? Perhaps too scared to come. Oh, give over. I mean, why should they be scared? It's a queer business. All right, so it's queer, but it's not as weird as all that, is it? <laughs> There's an atmosphere here you can cut. That's a funeral, love. Any funeral. A little bit different back home over a cup of tea. Oh, I suppose so. Is that poor woman his sister? What? Oh, yeah. I wonder what she thinks of it all. It was hard to tell. They call her daft Maggie. She looks so thin. Oh, well, it looks as if it's all finished now. I'm going to wander over there now. They've gone. I'll come with you. Well, I'd just like to, uh, well, you know, uh, throw a handful of dirt, that's all. Just a gesture. You're lovely, Ripley, aren't you? 
It's a kind gesture. They'll not like the lack of space, will they? Not much room for a poacher. You know, blokes like him spend most of their lives breaking the minor laws. Regulars. The sort of Bobby doesn't mind. Well, not really, no. I'm sure he'd appreciate a farewell from the law. Go on, throw it in. They want more room than this. See? I told you you'd feel better. Yes, I do. Of course you do. You can't go all extrasensory perceptual in a police house. It's against nature. It's probably against police regulations too, come to think of it. Conduct prejudicial to good order and police discipline. Do you want another cup? No. Next time I had a ride outside. I've still got a beat to patrol. I'll have the natives going berserk, brewing their own ale and nicking each other's sheep. Maybe that's why they weren't at the funeral. They're careering up and down the hills in some wild, sensual frenzy. Oh, yes. I can just see that round here. Madly gay they are round here. I can't even remember a smile. Will you be long? Oh, a couple of hours. Mm. Well, I'll have a ride as far as Craddock's Edge. I mean, somebody's got to tell them Queen Victoria's dead. Oh. And police house, Scarpend. Oh, hello, Sarge. Well, tomorrow? Well, I wasn't, but I will. Afternoon? Yeah. Yeah, of course I don't mind. Well, get me off the prairie for a bit. As long as you don't mind sheep dung all over your office liner. <laughs> yeah, OK. Yeah, will do. Bye. What was that? Oh, he's got to go into DHQ tomorrow. He wants me to cover for him at the station for a couple of hours. Oh, you are an up-and-coming bright young thing. Well, be a change. Hey, look, I'll have to go. Well, that's not a police bike. It's Father Probert. Oh, Lord. That medieval rig out on a motorbike. I don't know what he's like on the collections, but he can certainly beg the transport. He's coming in. Enormous, isn't he? You know, I sometimes feel a bit conspicuous in this outfit, but compared to him, I'm CID. Well, don't just stand there. Help me clear away. Put these over there. Come on, move! You know, he's trouble, is this bloke. With the best intentions in the world, he's trouble. Good day, Moss James. Ah, oh, Father. If it's me that's making you fidget, you can pack it in. There's nothing up these voluminous sleeves. Oh, sorry, Father. Well, sit down. Will you have some tea? Hmm. Yes, I will. Good. I shan't be a minute. It's May. Uh, you were at the funeral? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there weren't many of that. No, there wouldn't be. Well, I thought you might have been there. About the time they were burying him, I was saying a mass for him. That makes me a well-wisher, if not exactly a fully paid-up member, no? Yeah, I suppose it does. Did you wonder why there was nobody there? I did. Ah, good. The sugars are there, Father. Uh, thank you, Les. If Rabbit wasn't a Catholic, how did you become involved, Father? When I was a lad, my family used to holiday not far from here. We did odd jobs for my father. He taught me how to snare. After I took my vows, of course, we lost touch. Oh, I'd nearly forgotten him. He traced me through my family, and he came to see me. And that wasn't easy for him. Expert as he was round here, the rest of the world was a bit overpowering for him. He couldn't read or write, of course, and if you can imagine, it took a bit of a determination. Well, he found me. He had a drink and a bite to eat, the usual embarrassed reminiscences, and then suddenly he was telling me this incredible story. I didn't have to prompt him. I sat there and it poured out like lancing a saw. His old accent got thicker and thicker and his stained old teeth kept reappearing and I've never doubted his sincerity for a minute. Nor did I suspect his sanity. So what could I do but believe him? And you still do? Yes, I do. How much did Rabbit tell you? I mean, what exactly did he know? He knew that there was a group operating in this area and performing hellish ceremonies. A few he'd seen himself, others he'd heard of. He knew why old Walt had been murdered and he knew why they'd taken the head. He didn't know who they were? No. It's very little, really, isn't it? Until you realise that the great big fact is to know about them at all. This is the thing they can't tolerate. They depend so much on secrecy. Rumours they might welcome as providing the right climate of fear, but definite concrete knowledge of their activities they can't permit outside the group. Can I read you this? 
One of the indictments against Susan Barker was that she feloniously did take up a skull out of a certain grave in the burying ground of the parish church aforesaid, being part of the body of a certain deceased man lately buried there, with intent to use the said skull in certain evil and devilish arts. When was that? 1616. You see, you've had a supernatural problem round here for some time. Well, that's going back a bit, isn't it? I mean, they all believed it then. The problem of doubt? Then listen to this. A peasant drawing water from a well was horrified to find a recently severed arm. When the authorities drained the well, they discovered a number of mutilated human remains. An investigation proved that several graves in a nearby cemetery had been disturbed. The caretaker of the cemetery was arrested, and in his house were found books dealing with the black arts. Would you like to guess the date of that one? Same period. October 1931, Finland. All right, Father, so there's always been some... In to... that same investigation, the Finnish police appealed to Scotland Yard for help in tracing the activities of a society of devil worshippers with members all over Europe and a high priest in London. So they delude themselves? Then believe in that. It's enough. Because those delusions, as you prefer to call them, result in solid, concrete, physical crimes. Don't you see, Jamie? It doesn't matter that you can't share their beliefs. If they are doing these ghastly things, then it is your concern. Well, certainly. If there was any evidence of that sort of thing... Well, you're the lad to find that out. Is there a way you can do it without involving anyone else at this stage? Well, it's possible. Well, brief details, anyway, going back about... Well, ten or a dozen years. When? Well, tomorrow, as it happens... I've got to go into the section station for the afternoon. I should be out on my own so I can get the old occurrence book out. Well, then it'll be the various facts. I mean, all the statements and reports will have gone to DHQ. But there'll be enough to show the kind of things we're looking for? Well, yeah. If anything like that's been happening, it'll be there. Uh, you'll uh, be on your own, you said. <laughs> all right. All right, if you should happen to turn up about 4.30, say, I should be able to give you a progress report. Well, it's a bit thin, Father. Just the one in all that time, another thing for years now. Hmm, there should have been more. Bear in mind they're not seeking to advertise, but there should be more. They need certain bits and pieces for their ceremonies. Anyway, what have you found? 21st of June, Wolfville Damage to Cemetery. At 9.10am this date, a telephone message received from the Reverend Brooks, Vicar of St Stephen's, to the effect that during the night damage had been occasioned to certain graves in the churchyard. Headstone had been toppled, ornaments removed and recent graves levelled. PC-412 Riddler and PS-390 Waters to the scene. Apparently no one was ever convicted. Now what about the two officers? Well, Riddler's retired, uh, Waters posted. Mm, that's handy. Now what about the vicar? Oh, he's still here, part of the landscape. Well, we'd better find out what he remembers. Are you sure it's worth it? I mean, it could be an ordinary case of vandalism. That's what it was supposed to look like, to distract attention. From what? Those levelled graves. I'll bet you they were more than levelled. I must confess I don't quite understand your interest. I could recount it equally well in the vicarage. Are you certain you don't care for a whiskey, Father? Uh, thank you, no. I'm afraid I don't keep any beer. My tastes don't run in that direction. I've always been a quality rather than a quantity man. The essence of the spirit rather than the outward manifestation. An almost unassailable moral standpoint. Yes, it, it's rather a fundamental of mine. It enables me, for instance, to feel not one whit less clerical for this collar and tie than does your own rather more um, uh, conspicuous attire. An impeccable tie, naturally. Mm, even exclusive. Or would you insist that our duties are only to the masses? Uh, now, uh, this was the place, I think. Of course, the graves were new then. They all look very similar now. But it was these, I'm sure. It was more than one. Oh, yes, yes. It looked like a circus had been through. Uh, do you ride, by the way, Father? Yes, as a matter of fact. Oh, oh I see, really. Oh, that's splendid. A wonderful relaxation, I find. I keep a pair. It's just the place around here, of course. Uh, what's your mount, Father? A BSA 500cc. Uh Yes, I thought you weren't the type. What exactly can I do for you, gentlemen? A little information, Vicar. Inform a Catholic. Very exhilarating. Uh, tell us what you remember about it. I remember no one was ever caught, Constable. An event all too typical of our enlightened modern climates. Young louts going about unpunished. Did you have any reason to suspect it might be you, Vicar? Who else? 
I suppose one would be expected to applaud them for having the imagination to graduate from cinema seats. If you are finally onto them after all this time, I shall still press charges. I shall want them prosecuting whoever they are, of no matter what denomination, Father. So if you've come here to plead a case... What I... did they do? They raised havoc in my churchyard. Sheer hooliganism. Considerable damage. The really appalling thing I remember was the total lack of any regard for the solemnities of the place. They levelled some graves, didn't they? Kicked them flat, deliberately trampled them. It was like a building site. Soil all over the place. Was it all topsoil? That's a peculiar question. It's important. Well, you've no right to expect me to remember a detail like that after all this time, but I do. I remember thinking it a nuisance. There were quantities of clay around. It stuck to everything. Clothes, boots. Now, that rather suggests that it wouldn't all be topsoil, doesn't it? I gather you think it was more than just news. I think it possible that the graves were interfered with at a deeper level than was first thought. I wonder why it is. As soon as the RCs arrive, one's knee-deep in phenomena. I still don't see what makes you so sure. The date, Jamie, 21st of June. The following night is a big one in their calendar. The night of the Spring Festival. It calls for something special. I'd stake my life one of those graves is empty. It's still no good asking for an excavation order. You've no real evidence. I agree. Besides, we're not sure exactly which grave. What now, then? So, you're with me. Welcome aboard, Jamie. It's up to you for a while now. A matter of finding their trail. Well, back to square one, then. I'd like to retrace Rabbit's movements on the night he died. It's still unofficial, mind. Absolutely no grounds for taking up police time. I don't spoil it. You're sounding like a Protestant again. It's all yours. You're the expert at this stage. Now, where do we start? Rabbit's sister, tomorrow night. I've got to return some of his effects anyway. Tomorrow, then. His knife and... Oh, well, there was also a bit of poaching gear. You understand I can't return that. He'll not be needing it. Now it's killed him. I always said it would. I told him. You can't go on killing things, little things. Maggie, do you know who I am? Aye, he said. What did he say? That you'd come to help, but I knew you weren't. I told him there'd be no help till he stopped killing. How could there? He'd laugh at me. Not lately, mind. He didn't laugh lately. Well, why's that? Was he uh, worried about something? He was feared. Sometimes before he went out, others be came back, but he still killed. He used to leave them there on sink, their little bodies still warm and bonny. What is there that's half so bonny? You could feel how much he had to pay for one day. I could see, but men won't listen. The night before he died, out there in plain, I saw his funeral. But he wouldn't listen, and so he's dead. Choked with his own snare. What will you do, Maggie? Stay here. With me cat, like old daft women are supposed to do. She's soft. With me in her road. And if I watch her, she won't be killing. Not if I watch her. If I'm careful. You're a gentlewoman, Maggie. Bless you for it. Funny ideas. That's the problem of pain she's wrestling with, Jamie. At a level of involvement quite as deep as a theologian's. Hmm. She'd seen the fear in him, obviously. She'd seen all sorts. What was it? Uh, on the night before he died, I saw his funeral. Yes, that was strange. She didn't appear to be given to visions. Well, at least she settled one thing. We know Rabbit never reached home after he left the grave. So somehow they got him between the pub and here. Ah, but how... He must have been on his guard. Anything suspicious and he'd have disappeared. He could move like a shadow. It would have to be this lane, if anywhere. They'd have to allow for some sort of struggle, however brief. It's the only safe spot between the cottage and the pub. They'd use a vehicle. Or would they? Well, this bogey element puts me off, Father. I don't feel confident with the normal thought processes. What can you rule out with this lot? I mean, for all I know, you could be telling me that they... They took him off on a broomstick. You just provide the detection spot. I'll handle the supernatural when it comes. Right, then. Well, a vehicle. Now, I don't think they'd follow him. He'd notice. 
No. No, they'd wait. Here in this lane. It's narrow, so that should mean at least one wheel on the grass verge. Well, it's been a bit dry lately, but there still might be a mark. Look, you take that side. I'll do this. Uh, what are we looking for, exactly? For well, anything. Any mark at all. Just give us a shout. The trouble is, it'll be dark soon. Jimmy, come here. What is it? Was this his dog? Poor little mutt. Yeah, that was his. He never went anywhere without it. Well, that clinches it. He was killed. He'd never have done this. I mean, what a vicious swine. They've... Well, they haven't just killed it. They've... That's the kind of malice we're going to be up against. Well, it'd be a pleasure. What's that tied to it? It's a warning. They call it the witch's ladder. The knots on the rope represent the number of days left to the victim. It doesn't look much like a ladder in this case, since there's only one knot. A warning? To all who listen to the rumours and believe. They couldn't hang it round Rabbit's own neck, of course. That might have invited awkward questions at the inquest. So they hung it to his terrier and left it where it would be seen eventually by someone. And the warning's clear enough. The dog and his master both dead. Yeah, well, it must have been seen. I wonder why no one's reported it. Do you? <laughs> they wouldn't go near you, Jamie, not after this. Aye, they're a close lot anyway. You can't drag things out of them. I think the woman may have told us something. Oh, Maggie? Yes, more than we thought. I think she saw them the night he disappeared. I think she saw them in the lane here waiting. Though, of course, she wouldn't know what they were doing. You mean, the night before he died, I saw his funeral? Yes. Yeah, but she said the night before he died. Now, did she? Or did she mean in her dialect, on the night he died before he died? Uh, they, they use that kind of construction round here. It's it's possible. A and if it was that same night, whatever she saw here in the lane was probably them. I, I still don't see now, what... She saw the vehicle. Uh, now, the kind of vehicle that prompts us to say, look, there's a funeral. You, you, you think she saw a hearse? Why not? Anyway, we'll check. Well, it'd be a handy thing for them to have. Who's going to question what's in that sort of box? And if they didn't want to use a coffin... Well, there's always the hidden compartment underneath where they shove the unceremonial stiffs. But you don't just hire one of those. I mean, you're, well, not self-drive, anyway. No. It would have to mean an undertaker with some funny habits. Well, we might as well begin locally. Yeah, who have you got? Funeral directors. You see, uh, well, there's two. A co-op? <laughs> That's not really likely, is it? No, uh, old-fashioned but hardly satanic. Uh, who else? John Eddie Brown. He does a bit of everything, including thieving, we think. Now, he's much more likely. Uh, it fits, you know. It would explain, for instance, why there's been so few graves tampered with. You mean, who needs to dig? Why not just not bury him in the first place? God, this one's looking at all right. Uh, count me in for my turn on watch. Well, you're going to lose some sleep, Father. I think it'll be his night journeys that will repay our interest. We're all going to lose sleep till this thing's over. Well, come on, then. Look, we'll have another word with Maggie. A sheet and lend us a shovel, we can bury this dog. I don't get too close. As long as we don't lose him. I must say you're well disguised. This rattle trap seems very unpolice like. It's warmer than that damn bike. Thinks. Where's a rising young policeman going to get a shabby van like this? I have my contacts. Hey, look, he's turning right. There's not much out that way either. He's going somewhere and with a coffin. Oh, I'm just grateful for the break in monotony. I wasn't looking forward to another wasted night watching his bedroom light go out. It might still turn out to be legit. Which is more than can be said for our little outing. Don't you believe in lights, or is this just another novel feature of our carriage? <laughs> Don't chicken out at this stage, Father. It's a good job we're off the tourist routes. And mind you, they do tell me there was a car through here last March. Aye, aye. Aye, there he goes. What is it? It's the entrance to a one-time stately home. It's an old folks' rest home now private affair. Very plush, they say. Uh, for the aged and well-heeled, who also die, apparently. Just the same as the poor folk. Don't give you much encouragement, does it? Look, I'm going on past. We'll wait on the other side, then assuming he'll be going back the way he came, he's not likely to see us. 
think we're wasting our time anyway. It's probably a straightforward no monkey business trip. This time, we will try again. He's a long time, isn't he? You see, there could be several things to do. No, oh, here he is. There's at least someone. Yes, it's him. I suppose the coffin's full now. I expect so. I'm inclined to think we're on to something. Uh, he's alone. Uh, he wouldn't be, would he, if his errand was routine? I mean, his burdens are always heavy. There must be someone who normally helps him, even on night calls. Hey, he's turning right. He's not going back home. Where's that lead to? Well, nowhere much. Well, there's a farmhouse come pub. The travellers rest. <laughs> a bit late for a pint. Well, the landlady's got a bit of a reputation. He's not really dressed for courting, is he? We mustn't lose him now, Jamie. I want to see exactly what happens to that coffin. Everything. And push it as close as you dare. Right. It's not just oil that's burning. I'm beginning to detect a whiff of the fires of hell. is in that barn affair. Come on. Come on here, boy. Oh, tell us, please, that young of yours. Right. I'm going inside. Suppose he comes back. We'll hear him. Why do farmers never oil their hinges? Do you want me to risk a quick look with a torch? Yes, it's better than falling over everything. Uh, just a touch now. Yes, yeah, that'll do. Uh, get on my that petrol tin. At least the coffin's still in the house. Yes, but what's inside the coffin? Well, do you think they've... They were in here quite a while. They weren't carrying anything when they came out and went into the house. No, but there's more than one door to this place. Now, I want to look inside that coffin, Jamie. Or rather you than me. The Temple of the Holy Spirit, Jamie. Well, not in the films I've seen. Now, give me a hand with this door. Now, if you'll hold it, I'll get inside. Ah... Uh, uh, I think you'll have to come on in, Jamie. Steady this lid. This is definitely beyond the call of duty. <clears throat> right. Have you got it? There's only a finger hold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right. I'll raise it when I give the word. Just gently now. Right. Now I'm going to raise it my side. Do you want the torch? I dare risk it again. No, I'll have to... Feeling oh, now. Oh, oh, what is it? Pass me the lid to my side. All right, I have it. Let go. What was it? What's wrong? Feel for yourself. Put your hand in and feel. It's empty. Yes, but what else? What? Well, it's warm. It's still warm. That was episode two of The Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark. Listen to the next episode of Alan Eckborn's production of The Events at Black Tor, The Fires of Hell. The Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark. Events at Black Tor, Episode 3, The Fires of Hell, in which Jamie and Probert meet fresh terrors, and Pam is in danger of her life. It's still warm. So whoever was in here was still alive, yes. 
I've never been much for muscular Christianity, but I'm sorely tempted towards roughing up this lot of beauties. You'd better get on, or you'll be missed. All right. You're the only thing going to miss me, then. Cue for exit, Brother James. The lead. Gently now. Right. Mind your great feet. Let's disappear. Right. We've got to close the door. Ah. Do. Well, if you want the torch, I can get through that. If there's any doubt, shove it wider. Get out of it. Go on, damn thing. Don't move. All you have to do is hold the light. Does it feel better having me doing things at your suggestion? Is that it? You're getting a bit of your manhood back, are you? Well, how am I going to see you? You know when. On your own, I mean. You know what I mean. I know what you mean, all right. You'll get your share. Turn and turn about. Don't be greedy. <laughs> You've still got a lot to learn. Ah, oh, here, Tib. Where are you? Here, Tib. Oh, don't start that thing yet. I don't want him running over. Oh, he's here somewhere. Can you stop waving the light about. Here, Tib. Oh, you're over there. Come on, pretty kids. Where are you? Where did that drop from? Look at his face. Oh, what's the matter, Tim? Oh, it's you. He doesn't like you. Oh, well, it's mutual. I'll tell you that much. Never mind, Tim. Show the light. The light. Hold your shirt on. And don't forget, tell Valias I'll need more powder. You can pick it up from him at the funeral. Shall we come and fetch it? You bring it up. Same night, here, before somebody wakes up. You better not mess about. I'll bring it. Shall, uh, shall you be here on your own? Well, night be to be You'll have to see, won't you? You'll have to see. <laughs> Whew, had his flaming claws in. I could feel you were about to explode. It left in rather a hurry. It had some help. I thought she was coming over. She was. What now? We'll wait a minute. Let things settle and then we'll have a look around. What for the... Uh... For the poor wretch they brought here. This place connects with some of the other buildings. The funeral that pet were talking about. But it's probably the same poor wretches. Only they'll be burying an empty coffin. With suitable weight and ceremony, yes. Which leaves them with a spare human being and no strings attached. It means that somebody at the old folks' rest home must be signing death certificates. Including the one for his own immortal soul. So there's a doctor in it up to his ears. Would he be the one they called Belias? Uh, it's a title among them. Belias, prince of the order of virtues who tempts men to arrogance. Undoubtedly one of the more successful devils. It won't be his name. By hell it's neat, isn't it? By hell it is, Jamie. By hell and of hell and for hell. In a way, I regret having had to involve you. The responsibility in this is much heavier than you should have to bear. Oh, forget it. As long as we can do something for that poor... Oh, come on, let's get on with it. We'll try this door. Some sort of passage. I suppose whoever it is will be drugged. Well, let's hope so, anyway. Drugged and unattended. It's a bit optimistic, isn't it? Oh, now what? Yes, can I help you? Constable. Oh, I'm afraid not at the moment. He's out. Is it urgent? Aye. Oh, well, I can ring through to the section station for you. They'll send someone out. No, this constable. But if it's urgent... I'll wait. I, I don't know when he'll be back. It might be some time. I'll wait. Are you a local man? I, I could send him to you as soon as he comes in. I'll wait here. I suppose you'd better come in the office. You can wait in here. If you get tired and change your mind about me ringing through to the section, just knock on the door. I'll um, help you through here. Come on, Jamie. Let's 
hope he's changed his mind. Yes? It's cold. It can't be that bad. We're centrally heated. Oh, now look here, I've given you several alternatives. I, I suggest you give me your address and go home and I'll... What are you doing? I'll wait in here. You can't come in here, this is private. I'm going to ring the section. Don't. I'll just sit here in this chair, out of your way. But this is... And you sit there, still, nice and still. I... That way we're apart. But Please. not if you get excited. If you get excited, then we won't be apart, will we? Well, that cupboard's bare. That leaves only this. <laughs> Sounds like a fold yard. Oh, smells like one. Gently does it, then. We don't want a stampede. It could be quite a size. There'll be doors off this place, too. We're starting all over again. Oh, what's that? A cow or something. Well, this place gets me. I don't know what to expect next. A beast from 50,000... It doesn't sound like any midget. I think we'd better risk another quick flash with your torch. Yeah. OK. You ready? Go ahead. <gasps> Jeepers! Some cow! It's like a ruddy buffalo. Journey's end, I'm afraid. We can't get past that without shattering them all in peace. Back up, Jamie. Ever so gently now. Phew. So whoever was in that coffin would be somewhere on the other side of that bull. Yes. It's not a bad way, you know, to prevent prying eyes. Tramps have been known to keep in barns. But no one's going to be nosing round there. What a place to wake up in, though. I hope whoever it is is well drugged. Amen to that. We can't just leave them there. I know, but we have a couple of days, and so have they. These people won't be doing anything till after the funeral, at least. I'll tell you later why I'm so sure. In the meantime, the best service we can do for whoever it is is to make a silent exit. And uh, one more thing, Amos James. Don't be talking to me on the way back in the van. Whoever is in there needs all the rosaries they can get. Can't you give me a better description than that? No, I can't. He was so ordinary. I thought you said he gave you the creeps. Well, he did, but it was his manner, his total lack of expression. Well, what exactly did he do? He didn't really do anything. Oh, I know it sounds nothing like this, but imagine how I felt at the time. Well, what really scared you? Everything about him. The way he could come and force his way in when you were out. Uh, the sense of threat, Jamie. Easy to imply without being specific. Aim probably as much at you as at Mrs Hewitt. He took a risk, though, didn't he? All right, he got away with it this time, but it was a risk. I mean, not real sensible. I mean, how did he know when to leave? Suppose he'd still been here when I got back. He wasn't, was he? How long before we arrived did he leave? Oh, just a few minutes. Coincidence, Jamie? He must, must have been somebody outside to give him a tip-off somehow. The real point, Jamie, is that we take the hint. One, we don't leave Mrs Hewitt alone again at night. And two, well, there are certain other precautions we can begin to take. I, uh, I want you to let me indulge myself in a little ceremony in this house. Well, of course. Uh, well, what kind? As far as you're concerned, it's more spectacular side will be the Latin and the sprinkling with holy water. I think I'd like that, Jamie. Well, if, uh, if you think it's necessary, Father. I do. Let me put it this way. Because of the hideous practices carried out in certain places, the concentration of evil becomes almost solid. And I'd feel happier if, if in this house at least, we began to cleanse with the counter-energy of purification and prayer. Jamie? All right, yes. Go ahead, Father. Good turnout from the rest home. It all looks very proper. <laughs> that good vicar would be doing his well bred nut if he knew he was performing over an empty box. I suppose the opulent looking gent is the rest home director. Yeah. Hey, do you reckon he's Belias? Mm, probably. Did your cleaning woman know what Mrs. Leslie is supposed to have died from? Old age, probably. Apparently, they had Mrs. Leslie in a private room. 
It was well established that she was a dying woman. Uh, so no one's surprised by this funeral. I seem to be finishing. Then we'd better withdraw. They see us watching this. I'm afraid Mrs. Leslie soon would be dead, and this time for real. It's odd, isn't it? In a morning like this, yet in this quiet little English country churchyard, that foul charade's just been played out. There seems to be a mark of evil that it has no sense of the ludicrous. Well, love, we're back. Your dinner is ruined. It's my fault, I'm afraid, Mrs. Hewitt. Oh, it's not. We've been across half the blasted hills in the county. Oh, I'm bushed. Is there a cuppa? There is, plus the burnt remains. Well, was it worth it? Did you find what you were looking for? Not a sign. Dead sheep or two, that's the lot. As far as you know, we've covered all the places that the locals seem to hold in bad odour. Yeah, as far as I know. Mm. I felt sure it would be one of those. Unless... Unless what? Unless its reputation is so bad that they never speak about it at all. What about the fire we saw that night? What night? Well, the night poor Bess died. You know, in that awful cottage you dragged me to. Hey, that's right. I'd forgotten. We saw it from the window in the cottage. It was up the hill, um, a uh, black tour direction somewhere. Uh, Jimmy, have you got a map? Yeah, um, uh, where's the Ordnance Survey? Well, it should be in here, but knowing your tidy habits... Ah, here it is. Ah, that's it. Right, uh, now then, uh... Ah, oh, that, 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 here's Scarpen. Yeah. Now, where's the deep dike, uh... Down here somewhere. Ah, well, it's an old cottage. It's probably shown. Uh, yeah, look. look. It was the back window, wasn't it? Yes. Don't you remember? We looked up and uh, to the right. Yeah, I thought it was some camping party. Uh, so that's out uh, out this direction, mm -hmm. Black Tor itself. It's a good place. It can only be seen from the deep dike. And, I mean, who goes down there? Mm, except a few poachers. Yeah, that's right. And we know what happened to them. Well, the name itself should have told us. White being the traditional calendar of purity and innocence, we can gather what reputation Black Tor must have had in the district. Do you think this is where they'll be taking Mrs. Leslie? I should say so, yes. Yeah, we'll check first, of course. We'll pay a visit. Well, have we time to check? Oh, yes. We've still got two nights. It's on the 3rd they'll be using it themselves. The date again, you see... The 23rd of June, night of the summer festival. When they do what they plan to do to that poor woman, will she be conscious? They're not going to do it. Not this time, Mrs Hewitt. But there will have been others, and I'm afraid I can't imagine them sparing the victim's feelings. Well, now, I, I really must leave and put a few hours in at my parish. Tonight, then, Father? We're going to have a look at Black Tor? yes. If it is the place, then we have both ends of the chain. We know where Mrs. Leslie is, and we shall know where they intend to take her. Now, surely, knowing that, when the time comes to call in the cavalry, we can get the job done without any accidents. Oh, I don't know. Can't we call them in now? Oh, believe me, Jamie, I'd like to. I'd like to share this, but I daren't alert them. We're going to have to take them, all of them, while they're fully committed in their ceremonies. Otherwise, some are going to escape. And if they do, there'll eventually be some other Mrs. Leslie. It's a risk we haven't the authority to take. We've got to get the lot. I thought we might just as well get our bearings from the cottage itself. Uh, that's wise, I think. It's a pretty wild country up there. We could wander about for a long time without the proper bearing. Do you think they might be performing tonight? Oh, there's no calendar reason. It's just possible. It depends on how committed they become to a regular ritual. Also, there might be something in the nature of a rehearsal for the festival. Their procedures are quite complicated. You're telling me I've been reading. Seems hardly possible that people in this day and age behave like that. No, they're totally dedicated to evil. There are no limits. Oh, well, here's the cottage. Well, it seems quiet enough. All right. Let's go in. I feel better tonight knowing that that wife of yours is not going to be alone. Police house, Scarp End. <clears throat> Speaking. Oh, hello, Madge. I'm just making some supper for us. What do you fancy? Oh, um, no, no, it doesn't matter. Can't be helped then, can it? No. 
Yes, all right. Some other time, then. Bye. Talk about atmosphere. This is not exactly my favorite cottage. In view of its associations, that's not surprising. At least two men have been murdered near here. Now, uh, you think from this window, this angle is about right? Mm, out to the best of my recollection, yes. Yeah, well, if we set this to that bearing, then, it will probably get us somewhere near. It's going to be a tough old pull. From this end, yes. I assume there must be some easier access, though. Some route where they can get quite near with a vehicle. Oh, yeah, there will be, from the other side. Hey! Hey, look at this! Hmm? Where? Up the hill. Flames! They're lighting a fire. That's strange. For a rehearsal, I, I thought they wouldn't. Well, we won't need the compass now. It looks like we're in luck. If we can get close enough, there might be some faces in that firelight that I can recognise. Are you ready? Ready. The enemy materialises. Our first close contact. Uh, hold your horses, policeman. It's a long climb. No. We ought to be able to see them from here. Unless they're all on the other side. No. No, not a sign. We might as well go in and have a closer look, then. Must have finished. Jamie. All right, we'll do that, but first a warning. Back in the cottage, you felt the atmosphere, remember? Well, up here, around that fire, this place must be crawling with evil. You mustn't go in there with your mind unprepared, undefended. You must focus it now and keep it focused, whatever happens, on something strong enough and pure enough to support it. The cross is the strongest symbol. You understand me? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, all right. Hold fast to it, Jamie. Promise me. Yeah, all right. Good. Now, well, if you're ready then, come on. Now, if you find the idea slipping away from you, pray. Say the words distinctly and clearly. If I hadn't got your promise that you will, that you'll do as I say, I'd not dream of letting you put foot in this place. Believe me, Jamie, I'd send you bowling down this hill first. I believe you would. By the size of you, you'd probably be able to do it. OK, you're the doctor. Anything you say. Come on, then. Can you feel the heat of hell, lad? Because that's what it is. Are those stones the ones we're looking for? Yes. And over there. Look. They're altar. I can't tell whether these are stains or shadows. Oh, this fire's hot! Strange colours, too. The shapes. What's that? The shapes in the fire. Turn away. Turn your back on it. Don't look. What? Oh, no. No, all right. I'm all right. The altar. There could be stains. Look. Can't tell in this flickering light. But when the time comes, there'll be all sorts around here for your forensic people. What worries me at the moment, however, is why there's no one here. Why have they left a fire like this? It'll have burned for an hour yet. Maybe more. This is it, Tereski. The shape of these stones. Too much smoke. Even in the flames. And they can pentagon. Too thick. <laughs> Dancing. They've made attempts to pentagon up their filthy deities. No! No! Oh, 
God! The horns are rising! Jimmy, go back! No, no! No in the flames! Look what's in the flames! Oh, God, I'm messing! Look what's in the flames! Get you to some cleaner there. Now, come on. Breathe now. Deep. Come on. Now, can you stand? No? All right. Flop down here. I'm... I'm going mad, Father. I saw the devil. Breathe. Breathe deep. You're not mad. Nor are you going to be. Now, what did it look like? Don't ask me. I can't bear to remember. Well, listen. Answer me this. You've been reading. Now, were there any illustrations in the books? Pictures of devils? Yes. It was like one of them, wasn't it? Yes. I never thought when I looked at those books that... Well, that such things could really... Relax, Jamie. We've been had, don't you see? You already had the picture in your mind. You brought it with you. That's what you were looking at, your own imagination. Oh, excited, yes. Stimulated to excess, but nevertheless feeding on what was already there. They've been a jump ahead of us tonight, Jamie. I don't know. I don't know how, but... They were expecting us. That fire was an invitation. A loaded invitation. They were salted with something. Well, you, you, you remember the colours? There was a smell. I thought maybe it was a kind of incense. But it wasn't. It was a drug. But what kind? Who knows? But remember, they've a tradition of expertise in strange mixtures. And we think Belias is a medical man. Well, that gives them all the old secret skills with herbs, plus the products of modern drug houses. So real. And damn dangerous. Do you know you were walking into that fire? I had an idea. It was, it was the only way I could be rid of it. That's all I wanted. To be rid of it. There are reports of several suicides following the taking of the drug LSD. Oh, that in the fire might have been something similar. It plays on the imagination, overexcites it, creates its own temporary reality. Then, as in your case, that reality is so horrible as to be intolerable. Well, fortunately, things didn't get so far. What is still disturbing is the precise way in which we've been anticipated tonight. How could they? I can understand their knowing our activities in a general way, but how did they know we were out tonight? Why were they so sure that fire would attract us? They must have known that one of the things we've been looking for is the site of their meetings. Yes, perhaps they've had one prepared for us every night. Unless... Who's sitting with Mrs. Hewitt? Well, Madge. Uh, Madge Harris. Girl from the grocer's shop. They, they talk to each other in the shop. What did you tell her? Well, just that I'd be up. What? You don't think that... Then you run. Get your feet back in use quick. You see, if they knew we would be out here, they'll know she's down there, not terribly well guarded. Come on!
That was episode three of The Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark. Listen to the next episode of Alan Eckborn's production of The Events at Black Tor. The Hounds of Hell. The Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark. The Events at Black Tor, Episode 4, The Hounds of Hell, in which the police move in and Pam, Jamie and Probert are trapped. There's a light on anyway. I never realised how alone and lonely the house is. I think it might be best if, if we got off the road and moved quietly. I know you feel like rushing, but just in case... All right. I do suppose a minute longer will matter. Hell, I hope not. Can we cut the angle here? Across the field? Yeah. There's no wire, just a ditch. Come on. It seems quiet. I'll have to be getting another dog. She ought to have a dog for when I'm out. We'll walk in natural, shall we? I mean, slow. No sense in making a fuss if she's all right. Agreed. Put through here, then, and then we're back on the road. I shan't leave her again till this is all over. It's lunacy. Way out here like this. But the door's wide open. It's been forced. Pam? Uh, are you there, Pam? It's Jamie. We're home. Where are you, Pam? Are you there? If she's been hurt... Perhaps she left with a girl. Swing for him. Is she on the phone? The girl who was sitting in? This won't be upstairs with the door wide open. Are you there, Pam? Pam! The other girl. Uh, this Madge. Was she on the phone? Oh, now our old man keeps dogs. They live miles from anywhere. Take him hours to get here. I was going to take him back on the bike. I'm going to ring the station. Yes, I think it's time. There's nothing here. It's dead. I must be mad. I mean, fancy leaving her. Where could... What am I going to do? Shh. Listen. Pam! Pam! Oh, Pam. Where have you been? Well, what happened? The, the door's been... Give her a chance, Jimmy. Are you scared us to death? The door's wide open. The phone's kaput. What's been going on? Have you had your supper? Well, of course we haven't. I'll get you some. You have tea or cocoa. Oh, tea will be fine, Mrs Hewitt. Gently, I think, Jamie. What is this? I mean, doesn't she know? What's, what's going on? I'm not sure, but I think we're going to have to find out slowly. Pam, and listen, love. What happened tonight? If you want something warm, you'll have to wait. Pam, what about the door? It's been forced. There's some cold meat if you'll have a sandwich. No, no, put those things down and listen to me. What are you doing? Now don't worry about the tea, Mrs Hewitt. I'll see to that. <laughs> now, love, look. Now, listen. What happened tonight? Now, tell me. What happened to your face, Jamie? Your face all smudged. You, you look funny. Tell me what happened to the door. You smell of fire. You were out when we got here. Where had you been? Outside. Walking. Where? In the lane. I was in the lane. 
I don't know. Let me get you a drink. I was making a drink. Never mind about that. Perhaps it would help, Jamie. I suppose that phone will still be dead. Well, yeah, of course it will. You're not expecting it was an exchange fault. No. Now, well, I bet the wire's been cut. I think something similar may have happened to Mrs Hewitt. You mean that's why she won't tell us anything? I don't think it's a question of her being unwilling. I think she's unable. But why? Because she's forgotten. Well, just like that, I mean, amnesia. She remembered me. Well, you, I mean, I, I thought everything went. The law. Uh, not always. Sometimes it's a safety valve. In effect, you forget what you have to forget. Have to? Or crack. Oh, so they say. You mean the head shrinkers? Oh, it doesn't seem at all unlikely to me that there should be some natural way of cushioning a shock which might otherwise be unbearable. After all, I believe in a god of mercy. It's the instinctive equivalent of what the doctor does with his sedatives. Poor kid. I wonder what the hell they've done to her. By the looks of it, nothing physical. At least you can be thankful for that. I should say they've worked on her nerves. Scared her half to death. Well, she's had a hell of a shock. Yeah. I think shock would be the medical term for her condition at the moment. Questioning only distresses her. In my own house? I look forward to the time when I can get my hands on somebody's collar. I mean, somewhere behind all this hokey-pokey, there's bound to be some flesh and blood, and I'm going to get me a piece. I mean, why pick on her? Your most vulnerable spot, Jamie. The way to a man's heart is through his woman. I'd like to pay a visit to that rest home. Sort out that Belias twit. And make it plain to him that we know all about him and therefore about Mrs Leslie. If we can conceal that, she has another two days to live and we have a chance of saving her. But we're not going to be able to do it without help. Uh, you've had a taste of the malice that exists behind all this. It's evil and it's alert. It's time we called in the cavalry. It's going to be like walking on eggs, but somehow we've got to set the full machinery in motion without tipping our hand. It's funny, I... Can't seem to find the sugar. Oh. Well, maybe Madge put it somewhere. Madge? Lord, yes, Madge. Well, what happened to her? What, did she leave early? Don't know. I can't remember. Why can't I think? There's something about Madge. Uh, don't worry, Mrs Hewitt. Jamie, I'll get the bike and ride over to the girl's place. Check she's all right. Oh, thanks. There was something about supper. I was... Making something for supper. Yes, I may have made some pastry. Well, that's something. If it's been eaten, she must have only left recently. It's here. It's not been eaten. It's not even been baked. Why? Why can't I remember? Oh, Jamie, what's happening to me? It's all right, love. That's all right now. You've had a scare. Now it'll all come back. Looks like the girl might not have come at all. Very convenient for them. Yeah, too convenient. It'll be worth finding out what made her change her mind. I'll see her in the morning and hear what she has to say. Right. What are you going to do now? I'm going to take Pam to the section house. I'd better get the doctor to see her. No, I don't want a doctor. Uh, that might be wise, providing you can invent a suitable reason for her being like this. Well, you, you, you don't think that can he might... Can we afford to take any chances? God, no. Oh, you're right. If she can sleep, it'll be all right. If not, you'll have to risk it. Make something up. Or say nothing. Well, I'll be glad when I've told the sergeant and get some of the weight off. Will he believe it? Well, he will if you're in attendance. Well, there's your phone in action again anyway. Pity the rust won't mend as easy. I'm just thankful you believed it. In the shade of that muscular great monk, what else? Well, I hope they're listening to him at DHQ. They must be. He's been there all morning. I thought when I saw you coming back so quickly that they'd laughed it off. Oh, I got sussed out early. Well, you know the force. Secrets only for the chief superintendent and above. Well, he can't be telling him anything we haven't already told you. No, but you know how it is. Well, it's bad for their image, you know, mixing with sergeants and things. So report back to your section, Sergeant. We'll take it from here. I hope they take it easy, that's all. Yeah. That poor old dear on ice up at the pub. Well, they've got the message, you'll see. I know it's hard to believe, but they can walk softly when needs must. They want to know why you didn't report it earlier, incidentally. Oh, naturally. That's the standard operating procedure. In every situation, leap unerringly to the old standby and see what you can blame the PC for. You know just how much they'd have been impressed if I had reported it at the beginning. I know, but you get a rollicking anyway. You can't argue with the facts of life. What are you planning to do with that lass of yours uh, till all this is over? Would you uh, like her to stay here with my missus? Or would you? 
She's been here in the bed all morning. Oh, thanks. Well, it'll only be till tomorrow night. All right. Win, lose, or draw. Well, what do you think? I mean, can it be done? Can we get them before they can kill Mrs. Leslie? I don't know. The trouble is we've nothing on them. Nothing solid. They'll have to be taken in the act. It's the only way. Exactly. And how do we ring the district without tipping them off? Well, the answer to that little problem is no doubt what they're working out right now at the HQ. Hey, come on, get your helmet. I don't fancy sitting around here any longer. Let's go and see your uh, sitter's father. What's his name? Harris. Ah, oh, that's right. Come on. You think the lass herself is all right, then? Match? Oh, yes. It was obvious she was as puzzled as anybody why he was making such a fuss. She said it wasn't like her old man to get excited about anything except his dogs. Apparently he got pretty nasty before she understood that he wasn't kidding. Did he, uh, give her any reason why she wasn't to go to your place? Well, none that made any sense. But he was determined that she shouldn't go? Very. He'd have thought it was a matter of life or death. That's what she said. And what do you think? Sounds like he was told to warn her off by somebody who was able to give him a right scare. It'll be interesting to find out who, if we can. Well, he must know enough to know what to be scared of. It's the best lead we've had. I mean, hell, it's like old times. It's the only normal bit of police work I've been on since all this started. Anything that worries me, should we be following it out? I thought about that. Well, they'll learn about it. Very likely. But it still won't give away what we know. It would be a sight more suspicious on our part if we didn't follow it up. Now, that really would get them thinking. No, they'll be expecting this to go as far as this. What worries me is, why are we suddenly being presented with this solid, clear-cut lead? That's his place. Through the gate behind the trees. Oh, he likes his seclusion, doesn't he? Oh, he has to. Breeds and trains these dogs. I don't suppose it'd go down well with neighbours. Yeah, and watch how you go, incidentally. He's got some as big as ponies. Oh, that doesn't sound much like a pony. That's the one he keeps for feeding to the big uns. Damn quiet. Why aren't the big dogs barking? Where are the kennels, then? Round the back of the house. We'll go there in a minute. Oh, I've got a feeling something's happened to that solid, clear-cut lead you were on about. Look, you're jumping to conclusions. I've told you before. That's for civvies. He might be in there yet, in the in a carsey or something. You want to bet? That's rather peculiar. It doesn't feel right. Oh, give over. What are you? Clairvoyant. Take it one step at a time, without the atmosphere bit. I do so admire your professional calm, Sergeant. Come off it. It smells, you said so yourself. I mean, why aren't the big dogs barking? There ought to be a hell of a fuss. I can't see anyone in this room. Only the dog. Try the other window. Uh, no, nothing in here. I'm gonna have a look around. Hang on, I'm coming. You try the kennels, I'll check round here. They're all like this one. Cages wide open, nothing, not a thing. No, there's not round there either. Maybe he's got them all out somewhere, exercising. Well, I shouldn't have thought so, not all at once. And they take a bit of handling, especially on what he feeds them on. What does he feed them on? Raw meat. In that storeroom down there, a load of it. Maybe he cooks it. Not by the look of the scraps in the cages. They'd be a bit of handful, wouldn't they? I mean, big dogs on a diet like that. I shouldn't care to meet one in the dark. Hang on, there's still the barn. Let's have a look in the barn. <laughs> you nosy old devil. You're the same old bobbies poke around for hours when somebody's back's turned. Well, it's the police instinct. Oh, I that, and not trusting your mother. There might be another door down that end. Now, if we can open that, it'll let a bit of light in. Well, I suppose a bit ripe in here. What the hell was that? Stand where you are. And don't move. I can't see it. Now, draw your stuff. Slow. Oh, for God's sake, don't startle it. Now, edge away to your left. Away from the door. Now, give it room to get through. <laughs> Move. I was hoping he'd buzz off when he saw the way clear. We'll have to give him a shove. Play it cool, Sergeant. A sudden noise, maybe. Listen, Jamie. When I give you the word, explode. 
All the racket you can make. Right. Me too, now both together. Yeah, hey, listen, cover your face, okay? Yeah, okay. Right, when I shout then, yell and jump about. <laughs> Just his eyes. Why won't he move? What's he got there? What's that? A pitchfork. Get over to the wall. I'm going to have a go in with this. Watch yourself, then. Get out of it. Get out of it. <laughs> ah. ah, you've got it. Oh, there he goes. Hell, what a size. What's he got down there? Some meat? His muscle looked all red. Hey, Sarge. Have a walk down there and open that door. Now get me some light here. What? Well, yeah. Yeah, sure, okay. Well, that all right enough? Plenty. Well, what is it? What have you found? What have he got down there that he didn't want to let go of? Well, he certainly tried to... Good God in heaven. He certainly had some meat, all right. What is it? What was that? Harris. Yeah, as far as you can tell. Poor devil. He's cold. But not stiff yet. How long would you say? That's the medic's pigeon. Oh, come on, mate. You're not in court. Yeah, all right, well... Between friends, I'd say, uh, Early this morning. Fairly warm in here, he wouldn't cool off all that fast. Well, what went wrong, I wonder? He knew too much, that's what went wrong. What, you mean... Well, you don't think it was an accident? Yeah, give over his own dog. Oh, you hear some funny stories about Alsatians. He was an expert, not some unattended kid. I knew it was too good to be true. Having a lead like this, now look at it. Look, all right, so he knew something. I mean, I can understand why they figured this was necessary. But how? I mean, how did they manage it? Well, I don't know that it would be too difficult, given time. An idea they could have had lots of that. Wait a minute. What about his daughter? Where was she last night? Well, in town. She spent the night with her married sister. Convenient, isn't it? Why, did she say? Well, be because he was in such a temper. Well, by the time he'd finished making sure she kept away from Pam, they were having a tearing row. Now, I think she was scared to go home. Hey. Do you think that's what he intended it to be? Well, don't you? It's obvious he was under some sort of instructions to keep her away from your place. I'll make a little bet those instructions went further. And he was told to make sure he came home alone. So they had all the time in the world to provoke the dogs somehow. Or dogs. Where are the rest of them? The kennels are empty. They're all loose somewhere. But just roaming about savage. Good God. We'll have to warn the farmers. There's nobody else out here, is there? It's not half as bad as the alternative. What's that? Well, they've got them under control somewhere. Ready for when they're needed. Oh, get away. Yeah, it's potty, isn't it? Till you look at Chummy here. Well, all right, I mean, once. Well, this I can see, but again. But it's right up their street. Messy, put the fear of God. Well, you know what I mean. Up the district when it gets around, and above all, it's clever. Clever? Jamie, lad, look, both you and me, we know this poor slob's been murdered. And we both know what the verdict's going to be. Accidental death. Because we haven't had a chance, not an orb, of proving anything else. That's clever enough for me. Now, let's face it, Jamie, if one night they trot out another animal somewhere, all worked up to kill, and some poor devil's found with his throat torn out, it's going to be the same blasted verdict. Accidental death. They're onto a good thing. You better stay here and keep an eye on things. I'm going to ring in. Hey, hey, what if Fido decides to come back? Well, you know what they say, never pat strange animals. Come on. It's always the same. I've told you before, you've got to face the facts of life. I mean, you know the faults. The minute anyone in uniform turns up something a bit different, bingo. CIDs swarming all over it. Well, what did you expect? Well, I expected to get shoved out, but not so quick. I mean, not straight back to checking pig licenses. You know what's really bitching you, don't you? Somebody's pinched your case. Who's been taken over? Well, forget it. It always happens. 
It was high time it was turned over anyway. Well, I hope they'll be quieter tomorrow night when we're trying to save the old girl than they were just now. Clattering all over Harris's barn. Oh, give them a bit of credit. Look, I told you they can move softly when they have to. The whole point about that altar site on Black Tour is that it can only be seen from one place, down in the bottom. From Deep Dyke, yeah. Ah, oh, well, let's have a look. Maybe that'll satisfy you. Put your mind at rest. The cottage is just down there. Uh, you'll see it in a minute. Yeah, they ought to have somebody down here keeping a lookout. I always said you had the makings of a superintendent. Yeah, I'll have that in writing. You know, I'm right there. I mean, somebody who could signal the party up on the tour if there was anybody snooping about down here. Hey, hold it. Hey, will you look at that cheeky mister? Calm as you please. He could do with a wash. He could do with a boot. There's no time to be encouraging tramps. Hey, look at that fire. I bet there's a rabbit in that ruddy pot. That's if he hasn't lifted a chicken from somebody. I'm going to move him on. We've enough on without this old tea leaf here. Now you're talking like some typical country bobby. Hello, Governor. I'll give you hello, Governor, tatty old lad. What you doing here? I'm just having a bite to eat. There's no law against that, is there? About half a dozen, that's all, depending on what's in that pot. Smells all right. Oh, aye. Does the job right, does this one. What is it, then? Fair or feathers? Oh, fur, sir, fur. I couldn't hardly come by feathers, honestly, now could I? No, I found this line on the road. Hardly touched it, sir, hardly a mark. You'd scarcely believe it. <laughs> I don't encourage him, Sergeant. He's flying off, is this one? <laughs> I have always thought so. How are you, Walter? Oh, nicely, thank you, George. How's yourself? If you'll just excuse me a minute while I flash the boys on the hill to carry on. Hey, hey what is this? Detective Sergeant Merrion, a crafty old Bobby. I'm not a bad cook. Will you sample a piece? <laughs> oh, you funny, funny pair. <laughs> you could have told me. I mean, you didn't have to make me feel a twig. <laughs> he, he was scared to be clumping all over in your biggest boots. <laughs> I thought I'd better let him see for himself. Ah, oh, you did right. You're not a twit, son. It's your job to worry about things like that. But you can relax in this case. It's being done gentle. There's been nobody snooping round here, I'll guarantee that. Where are the boys then, Walter? Yon ridge, about halfway up. Where it levels off. Here, have a look through these. Aye. No, well, I can't see them. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, aye. Oh, there they are. Oh, oh, that's very nice. Whose idea was that? Well, I couldn't have them laughing at me being the only one togged comic. Have a look, Jamie. Old Moffat looks a treat. I'll bet. <laughs> hey. hey. Hey, there's somebody else up there. Hikers. How many? Uh, four. Shorts, Russex the lot. All right, that's them, Jamie. They're all bobbies. Every one. What? Well, what did you think? A bulldozer? Well, you learn something every day, don't you? We've upset him, George. I'm not doing any harm. He's got brains. The experience will be good for him. Be a good bobby eventually, will he? Well, eventually. I hope your <laughs> rabbit burns. <laughs> Early night for once. Do us all good. Oh, not so early either. Sunset already. Wonderful sky. Too red. Reminds me of... I'll put the light on. Oh, no, wait. Wait. Uh, uh, let me draw the curtains first. I know what you mean. You feel like a target. Uh, you can be seen a long way from here. Right. That's better. Not that they'd use anything as simple as a bullet. Accidental death. That's their line. Something horrible's happened to Mr. Harris and he won't talk about it. You'd think I was a child. She's still edgy. I'm not surprised. She must have a heart like a bull to be here at all. I wish she wasn't. I tried to persuade her to stop at the sergeant's, but she was getting all worked up. I mean, you know how she was last night when I was trying to question her. Yes. To be honest, I'd be happier if both you and Mrs. Hewitt were staying with the sergeant. Orders are to keep surface appearances as normal as possible. It might look a bit odd if we just quit the house. It might set somebody thinking. I suppose so. Well, I must be off. Well, you're welcome to a bit of supper before you go. Oh, that's very kind of you, but I must go. Come and see me off and bolt everything behind me. Quite dark already. What about you? I mean, you must be high on that hate list, remember? Now, don't loiter. I won't. Good night, Jamie. Say good night to Mrs. Hewitt for me. What's that? No. No, don't go. Now, come in the house, quick. The dog? Or dogs, yes. Harry's had several. Hey, you're not going up there. None of us are. These bolts are staying fastened. 
I haven't got the lock fixed yet, but these bolts should hold. You don't think it might be just a stray? I'd hate to gamble on that and lose. I saw Harris afterwards. That sounded nearer. You can bet on it. They're coming this way. I don't know how they're being handled or how they make them so savage, but we're about to come under siege, Father. Now we'd better check the defences. I bet that damn phone's dead again. Well? Lifeless. Uh, check all the doors and windows down here, will you? I'll go upstairs and fetch Pam. I, I feel better for all in the same room. I agree. Uh, and while I'm up there, I'll shut everything up. I don't know why, and the damn things can't fly, but I'll shut them anyway. You do that. I'll see to things downstairs, then we'll settle in here. It might be a long night. What are they doing now? Can't see anything my side at the moment. Nor am I just now. I was hoping they might have gone. Yes, I know. Gets on the nerves. Which is just what they're after, of course. Aye. We're safe as long as we sit tight in here. Do we have to just sit here in the dark? Yes, we do. But there must be something. No, that's what they want us to try. Some cowboy caper out there. Here it comes again. Oh, God! Is she still asleep? I think so. At last. What are they doing? I think I felt better when they were making a row. It's more than an hour since we heard anything. But they'll still be there. Don't worry about that. Look, uh, but why don't you have a nap? We can take shifts. Amongst the... Well, what's out there? What is it? That was episode four of The Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark. Listen to the next episode of Alan Eckborn's production of The Events at Black Tor. The things that emerge with the dark. Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark. The Events at Black Tor, Episode 5 The Things That Emerge with the Dark in which the trap is sprung and Jamie receives a shock. Surely they can't not do a job. It's a trick. Of course it's a trick to get us outside. But it's a good one, isn't it? The best. It's perfect. We've no choice. We've just got to go. We can't leave him out there. We're not amongst those... those fiends. Aren't there any limits? Oh, Lord, is there nothing they won't do? Mister? Mister? He must be nearly out of his mind. Out there like that in the dark. What are you doing? Jamie, don't go out. Maybe they'll bargain. You out there! Listen! You can't bargain with evil. We've got to do something, Father. Listen! Can you hear me? Don't harm the child. Tell us what you want, but don't harm the child. Can you hear me? Don't harm the child. Please, mister. 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 It's useless. Bastard. 
Let's let's have this window shut. What's out there, Father, that they can behave like this? I'm beginning to wonder. Jamie, we've got to help the poor little mite. I don't know how, but we can't You're just... not going outside. I don't fancy it, but we've got no choice. Look, if you'll take the poker, I've got my staff. And what are we going to do? Have you seen them? Do you know exactly where they are? Can you see anything, Pan? They're not on the road. Not at this side, anyway. Are you sure? Well, there's nothing moving. But they could be in the shadows. I suppose so, yes. Well, they'll move if we go out to them. They'll do that, all right. Look, maybe maybe a quick dash will do it. I'll go first. You cover the rear, Father. Pam, you bolt the door behind us. I can't do that. Look, you've got to in case we haven't got time to get back. Use your loaf. We can't leave you here behind an unlocked door. No, and we're not going to. Come on now, Father. Don't get in the way. I'm not moving, Jamie. Well, get out of the way, Father, please. I mean it. Oh, this is stupid. Yes, it is. Why? I mean, why? Because the more I hear that noise, the less I believe that there is a child out there. How can you say that? It's too pet. Altogether too well timed. Look, I know what you're getting at, but it's a hell of a risk. I mean, it's hardly a thing we dare make a mistake about. Suppose we're wrong. Have we the right to gamble? No, we haven't. It's not ridiculous. Not we, Jamie. Me. It's my decision. I'm not going to let you go out there. Well, somebody's got so to. So you can rest your conscience on that. That would be despicable. It's got to be a joint decision or nothing. You're both crazy. What's the matter with you? You've heard him oh, crying. Shut up, Pam. Help me. Please, mister, help me. Listen to him. Just listen. I won't shut up. They mustn't be allowed to win, these people. Not in any way. Don't you see, Mrs. Hewitt, the most vicious weapon of evil is its ability to insinuate itself where there was once confidence and trust. Even love can be undermined. She was only feeling for the child. I know, much credit to her. It sounds so real. If only I could be sure. Well, that at least we can be sure of. Try and get her to rest, Jamie. It's still a long time until daylight. Another cup, anyone? No, not for me, thanks. I think I'd better just have a look out of the window. They're pretty quiet. Let's hope they stay that way. Obliging of them to let us have the tea in peace. Maybe this is plan three. Keep us guessing, waiting for the noise to begin again. Oh, there may be something in that. The silence is a bit deafening. I keep waiting for it to explode. I can't see anything this side. Nor this. Is it my imagination or is it a bit lighter? Can't see much difference here. <laughs> no. Savage! 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 Get her behind you. Cover her and stay like that. Is that clear? What do you... Don't argue. Do it. You ready? Yeah! yeah! Oh, no, no! They'll never hold it. Not with that little chap. God, he's down! God, he's grappling with it. Father! It's, it's all right. It's all right now. It's over. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Strange how ludicrous and unfrightening that sounds now. I'm scared to death. We're going to win, Jamie. We're going to beat them. Let's tell them just that. Can you hear me? Are you out there? You've lost! You've lost! We're going to beat you yet! Stop it! Savage! 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 Drop dead! Savage! Not very practical, but I feel better. Hey, it is getting light, you know. Oh, God, can we have the house lights on now, do you think? Yes, let's have them on. Let's have them all on. They'll have to scarp us soon now. It's nearly morning. Well, how about that, Father? I suppose they disappear in a puff of smoke at the first ray of daylight. Uh, switch them on, Pam. Oh, it's good to get out of that darkness. God, look at the size of that dog. How the hell did he get in? Hey, Father, 
Just a small point, but well, whose blood is that trickling down your fingers? Oh, God, he's hurt. I rather suspect it's mine. Well, get some hot water, Pam. Well, why didn't you tell us? I mean, why let me go waffling on, shouting defiance through the windows like a great twit? Oh, do you know, I wasn't absolutely sure there were so many sensations. Here, let's have a look. Come on, roll up these damn great sleeves. Oh, oh. oh Father. We'll have to tie something round there. Uh, the sleeves were a great help, really. They took a lot of the impact from the teeth. <laughs> it's funny, but the arm didn't seem to matter at the time. You think only of the face. So you strangled him? Well, let's say I couldn't think of more subtle reactions. Oh, he's a big brew. It's a good job you are, too. <coughs> well, don't ever turn lawless, do you hear? I wouldn't fancy those great mitts of yours round my throat. It's not the same dog that Harris got, incidentally. It's a different colour. And they must have some others, too. Well, one other, at least. Here. Here, does that feel too tight? Uh, yes, it does a bit. Oh, then it'll do. Here, now, you come on into the kitchen. That water should be ready. So you tell me, Sergeant. With two bolts on the door and the window secured, how did it get in? You sure they were secure? Oh, leave off, Sarge. We were expecting trouble, remember? I fastened them myself. So now what? A phantom canine strikes... Well, you tell me how it got in. Well, not through the keyhole, Jamie. Oh, very funny. I know it was real enough, so does Father Probert. You should see his arm. But the fact remains, there we were behind locked doors, and yet all of a sudden there was this dog. It's put years on me, I can tell you. Ah, uh, Look, do me a favour, get some sleep. We're all going to have a very busy night. I'm all right. Oh, sure. How much sleep have you had in the last two nights? Enough. For the normal type of emergencies we're used to, maybe it would be enough. But this isn't normal, is it? You've had your nerves strung up tight until you don't know what's what. Look, go and join that wife of yours. There's nothing you can do till tonight anyway. Then there'll be plenty. How can you settle when you don't understand things? It's like an appetite. Is it? Well, they tell us those are things we've got to keep under control. You ask your friar friend, you know, the uh, dog strangler. It's marvellous what they've got in reserve, some of these men of peace. You're in a right mood this afternoon, aren't you? You're as keyed up as I am. You old faker. Bumpf. It's nerves. That's why you're so bitchy. All right, ten out of ten for observation. Well, 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 why didn't you say so? You don't have to pretend with me. Uh, don't get cocky. Well, what is it, then? Ah, it's just a waiting, I think. Be all right when we get moving. Isn't it going right, is that it? Oh, the machinery is moving. You know the machine, it's cumbersome, but eventually it grinds exceeding small. We'll turn them all over with a bit of luck. God, I hope so. Me too. Because there's obviously some ripe fruits in this lot. What they intend doing to the old lady and what they did to Harris, tried to do to you. We can forget Harris. We shall never prove that one. That's just it. How much else are we going to have to forget because we can't prove it? There's too many holes at the moment, too many gaps. Even a bad lawyer could make us look silly. But surely, if we take them tonight, right in the middle of what they intend to do to Mrs. Leslie... Oh, that'll help a lot, naturally. Mainly, it'll help Mrs. Leslie... Ah, uh, maybe it's me being greedy. I don't like to think of any of this lot ever being in circulation again, that's all. Now stop nattering and get some sleep. I've got to get into division. What for? The conference. There's going to be half a blasted force out tonight. All on tiptoe as well. Superintendent speaking. Yes? Oh, hello, Doc. What have you got? I see. At least two, is it? All right, well, don't worry about that. By tomorrow, you should have all the bits you need. No, definitely not before then. We can't go tramping around there till it's finished. That's why we only sent you those few bits and pieces. Ah, all right, it doesn't matter. Not yet, anyway. Doc... Doc, I don't care what sex they were, not yet. Today it doesn't matter. To be quite honest, you've given us all we needed from you at this stage. When you gave us a definite identification as human, that's all we needed to start things moving. Uh, come tomorrow, though, I shall want to know the lot. Sex, age, height, weight, you know. And uh, <laughs> if you can get the names and addresses as well, we shall be obliged. <laughs> ah, of course you will. You'll have lots more bits, a lorry load, maybe. We'll do the job properly, then. All right. All right, right. So long, Doc. Oh, he's a good man, that, but a bit formal. But a lot's going to depend on what he can tell us, I'm afraid. 
There's a shortage of evidence, Sergeant. <laughs> you see, if I say it like that, it sounds like your fault. Can we get round it, sir? Well, we'd better. Anyway, one thing at a time. Let's get tonight's little programme sorted out first. Here's a question for you, Sergeant, and think about it. Don't just waffle me an answer because I'm the superintendent. About tonight, are they going to be there? Well, looking at it from their angle, there's every reason why they should be. By their calendar, it's a big night. They've got a body on ice which they can't keep indefinitely. And tonight's suitable for a sacrifice. Well, more than just suitable, according to Father Probert. He was telling me yesterday how he believed that tonight they'd try to raise the devil. I mean, literally that. Every reason then, sir, why they'll be there tonight. Aye, every reason but one. What's that then, sir? A nosy PC and a nosy priest. And yet they've gone out of their way to antagonise those two. Look at last night's performance. Practically inviting attention to themselves. Now, why? It's either very cheeky, very cocky indeed, or it's very careless. And I don't believe they'll be careless. It worries me, it just doesn't fit. It could be cockiness, sir. As long as they don't see any extra police activity, they... I mean, they know that Father Probert and P.C. Ewart are interested in them, but they must know also how little in the way of evidence they've got. Oh, well, they're right there. Well, the big thing is, sir, they... They don't know we've learned about the woman they intend to kill. And you think they're satisfied that so far suspicion's gone no further than the P.C. and the priest? It must be that, sir. And providing we're quiet enough tonight, we stand a chance of taking them. Oh, we'll be quiet enough. And I hope you're right. And supposing you are and we do take them... What then? What have we got that we can hammer them with? Come in here a minute, will you, Chief Inspector? We'll ask the expert. I've had him on it all day. I hope he's found more than I can see. Oh, I doubt it. The trained legal mind is a bit of a Mary Ellen when it comes to chance in its arm. Come on in. Oh, good morning, sir. I... Oh, uh, I've been checking our position. Oh, it's all right, Chief. You know the sergeant here. It's all happening on his patch so you can lift the security. Oh. Sit down. Mm. Now, what have you got? Well, sir, <clears throat> that depends on what assumptions you wish me to make. If you don't wish me to make any, then I can foresee things like uh, cemeteries damage in, disorderly conduct in, death, false statements, dead bodies disinterment of... Uh, at the very best, abduction. Abduction? Back it in, Chief. I want something a damn sight more lethal than that. I don't want these articles loose around here any more after this. Oh, the rest is pure speculation, sir. Go on, man, speculate. Well, assuming a successful conclusion to tonight's affair, and I would recommend rescuing the intended victim at the last practical moment, by then, the ritual pattern should be pointing clearly towards sacrifice, and the criminal intent ought to be provable. In that event, a prosecution for conspiracy to murder becomes a distinct possibility. It's a misdemeanor. Yeah. Good God, can't we find a felony? What about attempted murder? Oh, I'd question whether a court would construe the ritual pattern itself as amounting to an actual attempt to murder, since that offence usually requires some physical violence to have been offered in furtherance of the attempt. <laughs> We can hardly afford to wait until that happens in this case. Although it would unquestionably strengthen our position. In fact, if we let them kill the old girl, we're laughing. <laughs> well, there's something of a conflict of interest between Mrs Leslie and ourselves on that point. Come on, Chief Inspector, push it a bit further. There's got to be more. Only if the pathologist can help. If we can provide him with remains from the site and he can testify to deaths that were not natural. But, but even then, without the corroboration of some strong testimony, uh, ideally by confessions from some of the group involved, well, I shouldn't care to be prosecuting counsel. So, if they know enough to keep their mouths shut, we're in trouble. Mm, yeah, I'm afraid that's about accurate. They'll not talk, sir. For a start, they'll be too scared. They know best of all what happens to those who do, and people like this uh, Belias bloke, well, they'll be too fly. Aye, oh, that one. He's a genuine registered MD, incidentally. That much is legal. Mm. I'm having inquiries circulated. I don't expect he'll have any form, but you can never tell. <sighs> oh, come on. Don't get depressed, Sergeant. There'll be something. The Chief Inspector here is professionally committed to looking on the black side. Mm -hmm. We can't have girlish false optimism from the legal department. <laughs> One pales at the thought. Ah, we'll turn them over, Sergeant. One way or another, we'll root them out. Well, we, sir. Just transplanted or really torn out by the roots. I intend to make it the latter. Yes, sir. Right. So do I. Then let's get the ball rolling, shall we? I want subdivisional inspectors, road traffic inspector in my office now. Oh, and there's a wireless bod from County in the building somewhere. Find him as well. Now. 
and then get on to both neighbouring divisions and find out from the superintendents how many men I can expect. Come in, Father. Glad you could manage it. How's that arm? Oh, I wouldn't miss tonight, Superintendent. The arm will heal, thank you. Good. Well, come and sit with the sergeant here. Keep him down. He keeps wanting something to do. Hello, Father. I must admit I'm fed up with this waiting. Well, I know just how you feel, Sergeant. I've been watching the clock, too. Well, you can both just sit there and watch me stick these little flags in the map. You see, I have got something to do. Privilege of rank, you know. It's not energetic, but uh, it does make you feel a bit like Napoleon. Who was that? Spider 3, sir. Reporting Spider 5 now nearly reached the summit. Oh, aye. Somebody else fed up with nothing to do. Making unnecessary reports. Spider 5 at the moment, Father, is climbing Black Tor with a damn great set on his back. He'll be able to look right down on them. They'll not expect anybody up there. I shouldn't think they would. It's sheer rock face from above that altar site. Ah, he volunteered. It's his hobby. Some idiot from the next division. You know, they get younger, these bobbies. I'm sure I was never as young as that, even at school. We've not sent him up before now, in case he freezes to death. We've got the rest of the area cordoned, as you can see from the map. Now you seem fairly thick on the ground. It's as big a turnout as I can remember. Whatever goes out or comes in, we shall know. Uh, that is, if they use the roads. I'm assuming that broomsticks are out. You can't get the bristles, you know. Hello, Webb. Hello, Webb. Spider-5 calling. Turn it up a bit, son. Sir? Hello, Webb. Hello, Webb. Spider-5 calling. Message for you. Over. Hello, Spider-5. Receiving you strength four. Pass your message. Over. Hello, Webb. Message begins. I'm in position. I'm in position. Excellent view. I say again, excellent view. Over. Just listen at it. He thinks he's up there for the scenery. Time to keep his head down. Hello, Spider-5. Your message received and understood. Now maintain maximum concealment. I say again, maximum concealment. Over and out. Hello, Webb. We'll go out. He's done well making that climb. Oh, well, if he gets down in one piece, he'll no doubt pick up a commendation. Well, that's the last flag. The web's complete. All we've got to do now is wait for the dark. And for the things that emerge with the dark. Get that cadet to get some tea in here. Have another one, Father. I'm smoking far too many, but I will. I shall regret this indiscipline come next Lent. Is uh, Jamie going to miss the party, then? No, no, he stays in the house just long enough to make things seem ordinary, that's all. Pretends to go to bed, you know, that sort of thing. We'll uh, pick him up when we begin to close in. And Mrs Hewitt? Well, Mrs should have her tucked up in bed by now. Hello, Webb. Spider One calling. All right, this could be it. Let's all hear it, son. Sir. Hello, Webb. Hello, Webb. Spider One calling. Spider One calling. Message for you. Over. Hello, Spider One. Hello, Spider One. Pass your message. Over. Hello, Webb. Message begins. Suspect has just left his premises in grey, unlettered van, believed Thames trader. Registered number, Banjo X-Ray Fox 132. I say again... Banjo, X-Ray, Fox, 132, heading north. Message ends. Over. That's the undertaker. Heading north. That'll be here. This road, straight for the traveller's rest. Tell him OK, maintain position. Hello. That grey van will be for Mrs Leslie. Maintain position. It looks like the game's Open on. Out. We've started. Hello, Web. Hello, Web. Spider 4, calling. Message for you. Over. Hello, Spider 4. Pass your message. Over. Hello, Webb. Message begins. Grover salute yard. I believe five occupants just entered Traveller's Rest Yard. Message ends. Over. That makes four vehicles in there now, including the undertaker's plane van. Uh, ask him if the, he can see what they're doing. Hello, Spider 4. Your message received and understood. Have you observed actions of occupants of these vehicles? Over. Hello, Webb. Hello, Webb. Van driver observed to enter premises. Not yet returned. Occupants of other vehicles are still in their cars. They're just sitting there. Over. OK, tell him to maintain observations. Hello, hmm. Spider no doubt about it now. Maintain this is it. They're Over waiting for and... Belias. I shall feel a lot better when he's safely under our noses. Have you uh, got someone near the home, Superintendent? Yes, Spider 2. From where he is, you can see the drive. He'll know when Belias leaves. Hello, Webb. Hello, Webb. Hello, Spider this could be it calling. now. Hello, Webb. 
Hello, Webb. Spider-5 calling. Spider-5 calling. Message for you. Over. What the hell's he want? They can't be at the toy yet. He sounds frozen. Hello, Spider-5. Pass your message. Over. Hello, Webb. Message begins. Nothing to report on Black Tor. Over. Oh, get him off the air. Oh, Hello, lad. Spider-5. You're not going to keep him up there till daylight, are you? It's a summer night, remember? Night of the summer festival. Uh, not at that height. No wonder he felt he had to call. He must think the world's empty. Ah, we'll get him some lights up and help him down as soon as we can. He'll be all right. Think of the stars. Then there'll be a moon later. He's got enormous guts climbing up there. Hello, Web. Hello, Web. Spider 2 Hello. calling. Oh, that's it. Oh, oh, all right. Spider 2 calling. Message for you. Over. Hello, Spider 2. Pass your message. Over. Hello, Web. Message begins. Bentley Saloon car. Registration number not known. Left the old people's home at 22.45 hours. Proceeded north on B6149. Message ends. Over. Oh, that's five minutes ago. I bet he was trying to call us when young Mountain Goat was on the air. If it is Belias, and who else in a Bentley? They'll be nearly at the Traveller's been out. Tell him to resume watch. Hello. Do we begin moving in now, Superintendent? No. Not until that car turns into the Traveller's, and then only to the second positions. I want them all on the tour, nicely preoccupied before we really close in. Hello, Spider 4. Pass your message. Over. Hello, Web. Message begins. Bentley Saloon car. Registration number not known. Just entered the Traveller's Rest Yard. Message ends. Over. Okay, son. Give them all the word to move to their second stations. I shall be in the car if you want me. Sir. Come on, Father. Hi. Sergeant, let's get on the way. Hello, all stations. Hello, all stations. Web calling. It's a genuine democratic touch. I hope you're suitably impressed, Father. Superintendents didn't give lifts to PCs in my day. I confess I suspect your motive. I could have followed on the bike, sir. You didn't have to... Constable, I didn't pick you up so you could natter all the way. You just sit quietly in the back and concentrate. I believe you're a cynic, Father. You think I've done it for some mundane reason. Like I might be needing his local knowledge. The idea did flitter across. Hello, Webb. Hello, Webb. Spider 5 calling. Spider 5 calling. Message for you. Over. Hello. Young head in the cloud. Sounds like he's onto something. Hello. Spider 5. Pass your message. Over. Hello, Webb. They're here. Uh, message begins. They're here. They're below me now. They've left the cars. I can see them. In robes. They're lighting torches. A queer colour. A dark flame. Uh, over. Message, message ends. Hello, Webb. Superintendent here. I heard all that. No need to relay. Out. Some message. What's he on about dark flames? They use a kind of pitch to give a dark flame. It's blue, really. Which is as black as they can get it. Black being their liturgical colour. Oh, you live and learn. I thought he was going potty. Put your foot down, driver. We will. He's waiting till that fire of theirs gets good and bright. With the light in their eyes, they're not going to notice us. Meantime, keep your head down. They're beginning to circle the fire. They look like the Ku Klux Klan. There's certainly no more appetizing. They don't all dress alike, then. No, no. They have their ranks and hierarchies. There's one there without an order at all. Look. It's a woman. Hey, up. There's a signal. Come on, let's go. Now watch me and stop when I stop. Relax. We can see from here. No point in going any nearer till they produce Mrs. Leslie. I can't see any signs of her, can you? Not yet. What a mob. You wouldn't dream, would you, not in this day and age. And what a way to get your kit distorted, isn't it? Didn't their movements seem vile? Yeah. And look, there's that one without the hood again. Gosh, she only looks a bit of a lass. How did they... What the hell are you doing? Get down, Jimmy. What's the matter? Get down, let get down. Let me go. Let go of me. What's the matter with him? Oh, Lord. Look. Look who it is! It's Pam! It's Pam! That was episode five of The Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark.
Listen to the last episode of Alan Eggborn's production of The Events at Black Tor. The Deepest Dark. <laughs> Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark. The Events at Black Tor, Episode Six The Deepest Dark, in which Probert and Jamie triumph and darkness is dispelled. God! What's Pam doing there? She can't be one of them, it's not possible! Steady, lad, keep your head down. We'll find out all about it in a minute. We'll get her when we get the rest. Let me be the one. Leave her to me, Sergeant. Yeah, all right, all right. I'll keep down. I'm waiting for the signal. At least we can guess now how the dog got into the house last night. No. She went into the kitchen to make some tea, remember? Well, no, she wouldn't. She must have drawn the bolts then. Yeah, but they were still fastened afterwards. I checked. Because she fastened them again. Don't you remember? You were fixing my arm. She went back into the kitchen to get some water. I don't believe it. Can you believe any of it? These are English hills, an English summer night. Yet look at that lock round the fire. Where do we stop believing? What do I do? What is there to do except go on trusting her? You've got to. That's right, lad. Now wait until you find out. Hey, oh. look. There's something happening at the fire. Why doesn't he give the signal? Because it isn't time yet. He knows what he's doing. He has to wait until they're working up to the sacrifice. We've got to take them almost in the act. They're carrying something. No prizes for guessing what's in that bundle. No, indeed. Damn it, they'll smother her wrapped up like that. They'll not do that. They want her alive. It'll not be long now, Jamie. That's Mrs. Leslie they've got laid on that slab. Pray God she's still drugged. Amen. Can't see any movement, though. So it does seem likely. I've lost Pam. I can't see her. They're forming up round the altar. She'll be among them. That'll be Belias, then, in the fancy robes. I imagine so. How long will it take us to get down to them? Or slot down here a minute or so, but the boys above should be on them as soon as the whistle goes. And they'll get Pam first. You said I could... You'll get her as soon as we get up there. And when you've got her, hold on to her. Well, don't you worry about that. They're beginning. What the hell are they doing that for? There you see the essence of the rites. A blasphemous travesty of the liturgy. Those altar vessels, incidentally, are not designed for holding wine. No, I can guess what. There. Did you see? That's their interpretation of genuflection. Deliberate, obscene parody. It's getting rather near the time for that signal. What instrument will they use for the... Uh... Some sort of blade. They require quantities of blood. Well, that's what the super will be waiting for. To catch Belias with it in his hand. That's running things a bit close. There's a lot at stake, legally. This'll be it coming up, then. With the two acolytes on the cushion, you will take it and raise it first, offering it to their sickening deities. Then, lad. Go and get her. Get that one with a knife. Keep him away from that bundle on the slab. You three, yes, you man, get to that altar. Don't let anybody near and don't touch that bundle. Sergeant, Sergeant, tell this fool to take his hands off her. Jamie, he's only doing his job. She stops here. Now shut up, Jamie. It's all right, son. You can leave her with me. I'll see to it. All right, by me. You're the sergeant. I can't get near the altar. Your superintendent's declared it a prohibited area. She won't look at me. Won't, Jamie, or can't? Lend me your torch, sergeant. What? Oh, here. 
They're bringing Belias in. I was beginning to think he'd nipped off. Look at her eyes, Jamie. She's drugged silly. How the hell did they get her away from my missus? No, Dad, we'll find that out later. In the meantime, rest easier, Jamie. She doesn't look like someone who's here by her own act of will. At the moment, I say she hadn't even got a will. What about that business with the boat? It'll keep, Jamie. Just look after her. She's had a rough time, worse than any of us, except perhaps that poor Mrs. Leslie. Aye, oh, keep her warm, lad, and take that fancy dress off her. Wrap her in somewhere else, and take her nearer the fire. Bring that man over here. If it is a man under that hood. Now then, mister, let's have a look what you are planning to do with that knife. I must warn you, Inspector, that there will be repercussions. The rank is superintendent. Repercussions, superintendent. This intrusion into a private antiquarian gathering. Not to mention the rough handling. Ah, we'll see how private... Unwrap that bundle, Constable. Quite an assembly you've got here. What do you say it was? Antiquarian, Superintendent. All quite legal. You find us celebrating a very ancient festival. He's a cool devil. Sir! What is it, Constable? I think you'd better have a look, sir. Uh, what's in here, sir? What the hell? It, it's a... That's it, right, Superintendent. A goat. A black goat. I assure you it's the customary offering on these occasions. Hell, fire! They've been leading us up the garden path. You appear surprised. Were you expecting something else? The animal's quite dead, of course. We no longer practice with quite the same exuberance as our forefathers. You will find it's been humanely slaughtered. We wouldn't care to contravene any regulations. All right. You've been very smart, very clever. And that's a nice line in patty you've got there. But you're nicked, matey. You and all the rest of this... Noddy club. Good man, that's the way. Now get that out off. Let's have a look at you. Do it yourself or have it torn off. Very well, Superintendent. If you insist, of course. But you really are digging a pit for yourself. Let me worry about that. There. That's not the liars. Oh, no. How wrong can we get? I must warn you that anything you say from this point onwards may be taken down in writing and may be given in evidence. Palmer. Sir? I want the pathologist. Try his home, try the hospital. Get him down here tonight. And tell him to bring his tools. He can work in the mortuary. Now, don't tell him that we haven't got anything for him to work on yet. If that digging crew don't fall asleep on their shovels, that should be taken care of by the time he gets here. Sergeant. Yes, sir? Have you got a mortuary key? Yes, sir. Right, we'll get somebody to get it opened up then. Get him some water on. Plenty of light. Right, sir. Palmer, you can ring from the house. Come on. Right, Sid. Let's have that landlady in here. Unless we can make somebody cough, you tell me how we're going to be able to help that old girl. He'll not talk, Father. She's too hard-faced. Besides, none of them will. Not with Belias loose. He's been a jump ahead all the time. I was hoping someone might be peeved enough at the way he's left them to take the rap to tell us about it. What rap? Oh, come away, old oh, Father. Unless he gets knocked off, unless we can prove the link between the home and this little lot, they're going to walk off free. Oh, surely not. Ah, I mean, that night Jamie and I saw the undertaker leaving the home. What did you see? An empty box. What kind of evidence is that? So an old lady has to die a terrible death. If we have to wait for the proper channels, yes. Is there some other way? There might be. I don't ask me. Just answer me this. Will she still be alive? Is there still time? If he wants her as part of an attempt to conjure up some horror better left alone, then I think she has about an hour of life left. In this sense, the witching hour is not midnight, but the deeper darkness. There's one chance. If, and it's a big if... We can scare somebody more than Belias himself can. How on earth can we do that? I've got the undertaker in a cell that we don't use much now, away from the others. Wait for me. I'm going to get the dog handler and his mutt. Give me five minutes. If it's going to work, it'll have worked me then. Well, it's about time. How long do you think you're going to be able to hold us like this? Shut up, Undertaker. Don't you talk to me like that. I know what's what. Hey, hey, don't you lay a finger on me. Sit down. I'll stand. I want to see a solicitor. You can't shove me around. Why don't you get off your dignity? How much do you think you've got anyway since we took your belt and shoelace? Yeah, all right, all right. Have your laugh. Go on. But you regret it because I'll have you. I'm not some tuppenny eight tea leaf you can shove around, you know. I'm a business member of this community. Respected. You're a slag. And you're as bent as any oak on this manor. You're a receiver. And if there was any opportunity, you'd be a punce. Oh, hey, oh, you, you done it now. Oh, I, I, I've got you now. You, you know, you're finished, you are. Washed up. 
Oh, you're done. Pull your trousers oh, off. I've got you now. Oh, boy. That, that, that was libel, that. That was libel. That was slander. Libel has to be in writing. Yeah, well, whatever it was, mate, you're through. You need a witness. Look around, Undertaker. Where's your witness? We're all alone. Right. I can make a statement on oath. Just you and me, in his isolated cell. You lay a finger on me and I'll scream the bloody place down, I will. But it won't do any good. No. Oh, but it'll make me feel better. Nobody will hear you, remember? Now look, I forget what I said about making trouble. That, that was just talk. I don't know hard feelings. I mean, you've lost, that's all. And this mob's too clever. You'll not find anybody talking out of turn. <laughs> well, it's nothing personal. It's a bit personal for Mrs. Leslie, though, isn't it? I don't know what you mean. You took her to the Traveller's Rest. But the thing we're really interested in is where is she now? Where do you take her from there? I don't know what you're talking about. You must have an idea how little time she's got left, so you'll understand why this interview can't be general. Oh, God, Sergeant, look, can't you see? You can't do anything to me half as bad as they would. Oh, there's one flaw in that argument, Undertaker. It assumes that we stick to our own methods. But supposing we don't? Supposing I borrow one of theirs? Like what? Listen. No! We found the dog that got Harris. You wouldn't! I saw what it did. You'll never get away with it! I'd hate to condemn any man of what it did to Harris. You're crazy! Well, it'd be an accident, you see. I mean, they brought it in and shoved it in this old cell, never expecting it to be occupied. Oh, God, not Sergeant! Tell us, man, tell us! Now, if we can clean it up, then there'll be nobody for you to be scared of. Now, where did you take her? I don't know what you mean. Leave me alone. We know the words. The words that dog's trained to respond to. I'm telling you, I don't know what you mean. It's savage, isn't it? <laughs> savage. 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 <laughs> savage. All right. Savage. All right. Savage. All right. Savage. All right. When did you take her from the travellers? This afternoon. How? He telephoned. Elias? That's right. He told me to pick up a van. He, he had it all ready for me. He, he told me where to take her. Where? Where? Um, Grassingly. The car park. What? Honest. Leave her there in the van. Lock it up. He had another set of keys. I came home on the bus. What sort was it? A black dormobile. Number. Number. I don't know, honest. Where are you going to take her from there? I don't know. I, I don't know. He wouldn't tell me, would he? I mean, that was the whole point of leaving it in the car park. I wasn't it, so nobody would know where he went. Damn. What was in it? Anything? Oh, come on, man. There, there, there was an invalid chair. You know, one, of, one of them fold-up things. Anything else? Oh, some tools. What kind of tools? Digging tools. A, a shovel and a pick. Well, we can guess what they're for, can't we? Where did you pick it up in the first place? The same place they kept the dog, the, the old quarry. If you've held anything back... I'll feed you to that dog, so help me. I can't see what good the map's going to be, Father. It's another dead end. Uh, we'll have to confine ourselves to a ten-mile area. There just isn't time for anything else. Look, uh, you take this side of Grassingley, I'll take the other. Right, what are we looking for? The conventional signs for places of worship. The more remote, the better. Ah, there's one here. Uh, a bit near the village. Ah, uh, they all are. Either in a town or somewhere... There's nothing out on the moors. Not in that line. We'll have to look further afield. Oh, I'm getting spots before the eyes. Age, Sergeant. We shall all be years older after this. Like this ancient monument here. The young will wonder how we came to be what we are. Good Lord! That's it! It's been here all the time. And we've just been looking for crosses and steeples and things. Look! Look! Ancient monument? Yeah, I saw that. Look at the name! Devoe Abbey. And look at it. It's miles from anywhere. Sergeant, this is it. It has to be. That's where he'll be. At the high altar. Come on, let's get the superintendent. There might still be a chance. Wait, Father, wait. Not that way. It'll take too long. You'll have to explain everything to him. He'll be dubious. He's been twice bitten tonight already. Well, what else can we do? Ourselves, we can do it. We can stop him. Father, I've seen this devil wriggling all night. If we try the proper channels again, we're going to lose him. Can we do it? I'll stop him. I mean it. I'll stop him. Come on, then. Get in the dog handler's van. He's the only other one we'll need.
Not far, no. I should hope not. It was criminal to stop at the quarry like we did. We weren't gone too many, father. You know how important every second is. Trust me. I'm sorry. I'm in your hands, Sergeant. You must do what you think best. It's just that I felt you could have silenced their killer dog on the return journey. Your own animal doesn't seem to like travelling, Constable. Oh, he likes to be on the go, sir. And we are moving a bit. Keep it quiet another minute, Alex. We'll be there. Uh, Look, there's the sign ahead. Uh, Devoe Abbey. Uh, Turn here. How near dare we go in this thing? Beyond the next bend, I'll cut the engine and lights. We'll glide as far as you'll go. It's the right sort of place. It's certainly out of the way. Easy, boy. Probably a Cistercian foundation. They always went for these secluded valleys. There it is. Look. Aha. It's creepy. It's moonlight, I expect. It's beautiful. It's we who bring our own evil. That looks like the road in down there. Easy, boy. Steady. Can you see anything yet? Not yet, but this will be the refectory. That'll be the church over there. The tallest of the remaining walls. The high altar will be at the far end. He'll be there. Can we rush him? We daren't. If he decided to kill her, he could do it before we could stop him. Providing he hasn't already. Alex. Yeah? You stay here and keep the dog quiet. If I flash a torch, come running. Right, Sergeant. Let's go, Father. We'll work our way round by this wall. smell it. What is it? Some kind of incense. There he is. Those black flames again. Look. We're in time. She's in the wheelchair. Oh, look at the way she's strapped in like a a chicken on the block. There's a gap in the wall down there. We can get a bit nearer. (sighs) There. Right. God, did you see his face in that firelight? Like a... a gargoyle. Something from the Middle Ages, yes. It's all on his features. Avarice, lust, fear. Yes, that's right. Fear. And with good reason. He knows best what terrors he's encouraging. That's the reason for all that paint around him. Those signs and sigils. Their defences. It's not just rigmarole, it's his lifeline. Notice, he has Mrs. Leslie within the circle as well. He daren't step outside, not now the ceremony's begun. I thought the things here, whatever they are, he's calling up. I thought they came as servants. Yes, but reluctantly. They're sullen and treacherous. If he makes a mistake, they'll destroy him. Do you think there's anything there? Look at him. He does. He knows he's on the very edge of the pit. Oh, it's out of my depth. This is not police work. This is... There's no machinery for such as him. Yet somehow he's got to be stopped. We've got to get her away from him. Once outside that circle, she's safe. He daren't follow. Not even then? Not for any reason. There's nothing outside that circle he fears half as much as the things that are trying to get in. Right. Hey, look. Look at that wall behind him. The ledge up there. How's the arm? Could you make it up there? Yes, I can do that. I was thinking, if you were to appear there in those robes of yours against the sky, it should give him a hell of a shock. And while you're holding his attention, I'll make a dive for that wheelchair. It's mostly grass all the way by the looks of it, and by the time he hears me on the stones, I shall be there. Sergeant, when you make your rush... Don't stop moving, whatever happens. Keep your eyes off him. Look at the woman, all the time. That way your mind will be focused on your errand of mercy. Now, it's important. Do you understand? Yes, Father. Benedicat vos omnipotens, Deus, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. I'm on my way. Ah, ah, The Lord be with you.
She's all right, Alex. Listen to her breathe. She's all right. Good. Take her to the van. We'll see she's well wrapped up. Leave the dog with me. Now, look, if you're determined to go through with it, let me give you a hand. Take her, Alex. That's an order. Aye. I gather it would be. Well, keep him on a firm lead, then, till you're ready. He's still in the ring. You can make your arrest, Sergeant. Go back to the van, Father. Am I suddenly useless, Sergeant? He's still dangerous. Please, Father. The woman needs you. Well, in that case, of course. But be careful. Let the dog take any risk. Can you hear me? I'm a police officer. I gather you're not impressed. I must warn you that anything you say may be given in evidence. I must warn you that you're not obliged to say anything. I must warn you that I'm unleashing the dog. I must warn you that this is the animal you yourself had trained. I must warn you that he's savage! 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 It's good to feel the wind up here. I shall miss it. You'll come back. Oh, it's not likely, though perhaps. Where are those two? Ah, oh, they're playing hide-and-seek with that gormless pup of theirs. <laughs> this is good to see them like that again. Getting that pup for her was a stroke of genius, Sergeant. I wondered for a while if they'd ever want to face a dog again. Mind you, as soon as I saw the thing, I knew he was right. Saddest, most unfierce looking mutt I've ever seen. She fell for him straight away. Love at first sight. For both of them. What a capacity for recovery this weaker sex has. Mrs. Leslie looks as if spilling tea at the vicarage was the gravest trouble she'd ever known. Only because she was drugged. He couldn't move her out to the Abbey without giving her an hefty dose. He kept her sane. In the same way, Pam's being hypnotised, cushioned the shot for her, too. When did you realise what they'd done? When your superintendent showed me the dossier on Belias. He was highly qualified professionally, and it included a list of his works. The one title stuck out. A technique of hypnotic therapy. Well, everything became obvious then. Post-hypnotic suggestion is hard, incontestable fact. It works. And certainly worked with Pam. She undid the bolts that night in the house and let the dog in. Afterwards, she closed them again. Without knowing what she was doing? Yes. A part of the suggestion is an order to forget what takes place. And she was ordered to attend that shindig on Black Tour in the same way? That's right. A nice example of Belias's delight in mischief. I still sweat at nights when I think how lightly he might have escaped. Yeah. One must thank the providence that arranged so poetically just a solution. Father! There's a small camel past this way by any chance. If you're referring to my dog, Jamie Hughes, I'd thank you to keep a civil tongue in your head. Hey, go, get off, you daft apes. Go and sit on a rabbit. Hey, come on, boy. Come on, you scrappy man. Hey, bring the dog with you. <laughs> right, you cheeky devil. Assault on the police coming up. <laughs> I feel very old, Father. I understand there's a very exclusive home in this area which caters for just such a condition. Under new management, I'm happy to say. <laughs> he was on a good thing, wasn't he? He had to have money to be there at all. And then that very special welcome for those with no relatives. But a lucrative racket like that. Looking back on it, it's easy to see him as just another murderer for profit. Is that all it was? Were all the trimmings just just extra kicks? Well, perhaps that's how it started, and certainly in daylight that's how it seems. But to remember the night at the Abbey, however it began, somewhere along the line he'd become a believer. Then it was all real. You saw his face that night. His arena of crime was no longer society... It was as wide as eternity. Was he beyond redemption, Father? Can one be? It occurs to me sometimes that the ones like him, who deliberately seek to be, who deliberately insult God, 
are in the long run merely testifying to the power of God. Father, there's something I think you ought to know. I know a policeman who's bright enough to work out that if a dog is trained to kill, it's still a trained dog. And that if one man can handle it, so probably can another. So you knew. And yet you allowed me to let them all believe it was a police dog. You can't approve. No. But thank God I'm forbidden to judge and commanded to understand. I shall pray for you both. For you with affection. For him, without warmth, I'm afraid, through duty. Because it's just possible that even for him a cry does not go unheeded. Oh, it's getting chilly. Shall we go down? It'll soon be dark. But not as dark as it used to be. No, Sergeant. Never as dark as it was. That was the final episode of Roy Clark's Thriller Serial. In The Events of Black Tor, Bob Grant played Father Probert, Brian Peck, Jamie, Juliet Cook, Pam, and James Beck, the sergeant. The theme music was composed by Trevor Holroyd, and production for the BBC was by Alan Akebourne. The 17 jeweled shockproof Swiss made bomb. We present a comedy thriller in six parts by Roy Clark. The 17 jeweled shockproof Swiss made bomb. Episode 1 F8 and then Infinity. Sir, the bell's gone. It's marvellous how you managed to wake up in time to hear it, Martin. It's four o'clock, sir. Down, shop steward. I know what time it is. All right, off you go. Go on, go on. Good night. Good night. Mrs. Beckett. Mrs. Beckett. Oh, Mr. Shields. You're home early, Mr. Shields. Is anything the matter? A bit of classroom combat fatigue. I'd had enough when the bell went. Has Mrs. Harvey cleaned my place today? Today? Hmm. Why, no, she isn't due till Friday. What made you think she might have been there? The celebrated woman's touch, Mrs. B, which in practice boils down to the fact that things are not quite where one left them. She has not been in that flat today. I can put your mind at rest on that score. Well, I'm afraid that's not really very reassuring, Mrs. Beckett, because the question which naturally follows is, if she hasn't, who has? Oh, do you think someone's been when the house was empty? How long were you gone? It must have been a good three hours. Do you think we've been burgled? Oh, No, dear. no, no, I don't think so. I haven't, and you'd have noticed if you had been. No, no, it must have been my imagination. Well, I wish it give over. You'll scare me to death. What, you old Ironsides? Oh. Never. You <laughs> cheeky devil. <laughs> well, I suppose after worrying the life out of me, you'll expect me to get your tea. Yes, of course. Nothing too solid, mind. Why, are you out for dinner again? Who is it this time? Chop suey and chips with the beauty from the gown shop. What, Muriel? Mm -hmm. Oh, the girl with all that makeup. <laughs> she looks a right dripping. It's the modern trend, love. Try anything once. Here we are, then. Another green Watsit. Oh, ta. Do you always drink that? Usually. Especially in these nicer places. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, it's lovely. Uh, try a sip. Oh, no, thanks. It's far too technicolour for my drab English interior. I can visualise it doing an irreparable damage. Well, I'm English, and it's never done me any harm. No way with you, you're not English. Oh, I... oh, technically, yes, but essentially far too exotic. You'll embarrass me. Oh, come off it. If I didn't show the appropriate regard, you'd lay me low with a bottle of that green thing on me. You must be used to homage, Vera. The bloke in the raincoat's been fancying you all evening. Oh, don't call me Vera. I don't like it. It's a stupid name. But your own? I don't care. 
call me V. After the neckline, I suppose. I shall call you Deep V. <laughs> oh, you're an idiot. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, though. Mm -hmm. You are wrong about the man with the raincoat. Hello? Weighing up the competition? Well, you pointed him out. I'd never noticed him. Anyway, it's not me he's interested in. <laughs> he's watching you. Uh -huh. Oh, no, don't look now. Watching me? He must be very complicated. But he is. I can tell the difference. Well, I wonder if he can. He must think he knows you or something. That or something has some very complicated implications. Ah, he's probably trying to penetrate the secret of my influence over women. <laughs> oh, is he? Mm. What is this powerful influence, then? You mean you can't feel it? You wait. <laughs> well, uh, while I'm waiting for this experience, do you think I can have another drink? Oh, I can see I've swept you completely off your feet. <laughs> Keep your eyes on Raincoat Man. Mm. See if he watches me or you when I go to the bar. Right. <laughs> another green What's It coming up. Reception's bad here. Built up area, love. Much better in the countryside. You must let me take you out there one evening. There's a certain lane I know of. Reception's marvellous. <laughs> I'll bet it is. I intended a trip further afield this evening if it hadn't been for old Raincoat Man. Hey, is he still following? I assume those are his lights behind. Very strange. And I had such plans for you. <laughs> Could he be your guardian angel, do you think? Does he wear a raincoat, you know? I never noticed any lumps round the shoulder blades. No, neither did I. He's the next on the left. Oh. I could have managed without him, you know. I'm very capable, really. I never doubted it, pet. Not for a moment. Oh, just along here. There, look, the white gates. Well, uh, give me a ring at the shop sometime. I'll do that. You're a delectable woman. I'll see old raincoat man pays for this. He's just turned into the street now. He's stopping. He, it's a bit James Bond going out with you. You flutter the poor girl's senses. That's what we pay him for. Well, thanks for the meal. Mm, looking at you, I don't feel I've had one yet. Just merely wet the old appetite. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Whereabouts are you? Oh, I see. Right then. Now, let's have some explanations. Why me? Why are you following me? That colourful vocabulary won't get you anywhere. I want some answers. I'm quite prepared to damage this if I don't get them. Now, come on. Don't be a hero. I really can't permit you to manhandle my sergeant like that. Huh? Uh, no, don't move. You can't see in this light, but there is a weapon. Good. And I'll let him go. And I'll get back to your feet. Uh, and he's got some explaining to do. You too. All in good time. <coughs> and I agree with you. He has got some explaining <clears throat> to do. To me. I expect my subordinates to stay on top of their assignments, Sergeant. You can go. I'll see you later. Sir. What a very capable young man. You can stuff the flannel, General. Just explain. Capable, but rather <clears throat> rude. And not General, incidentally, Major. Well, never mind. I'm sure with that accent you'll finally make it. You needn't be too hard on your sergeant, you know. I could... I could probably have taken you if you'd been in his place. You didn't even see me. No. But then, of course, he had the dirty end of the stick... Rank has its little privileges. Oh, you should know. You had one once. Oh, nothing so exalted as Major. Second Lieutenant, National Service. It's hardly Napoleonic. Look, if I put this away and begin to explain, do you think you can restrain yourself from any further gymnastics? It'll only delay things, and what's more, be extremely tiresome if I have to belt you over the head or something. Your sergeant's nearly ruined my second best winching suit. Oh, all right. Truce. Don't think... These pants will stand much more. Excellent. Uh, but not in these dismal surrounds, eh? 
I think an adjournment to my hotel. Not that it's so much better, but there are things I want you to see. Here we are. It's hardly three-star rating, but temporarily it's home. You can always go back where you came from. You know, you're not exactly civil. That commissioning board of yours showed a great deal of wisdom in not appointing you to an ordinary regiment. It would have been too much of a trial in a regular mess. Well, uh, sit yourself down. I'll get you a drink. Uh, what'll it be? Mm, I expect it'll be drugged. What the hell? Whiskey. And ginger. Much ginger. Ah. Some very uh, imposing equipment here, Major. Don't tell me you've dragged me here just to see your holiday snaps. Oh, in a way, yes. Uh, would you mind setting up that screen while you're over there? Uh, right. That's it, yeah. Uh, just pull it out. It stays up once it's extended. Uh, here. Suppose you add your own, Ginger. Thanks. Well, where do I begin? Can I see your credentials? Yes, I think you might. Hmm. They're not very specific. Uh, deliberately so. Special branch? Near enough. Uh, the name's quite genuine, incidentally. Margerison. <laughs> it would be. I bet they go big licks on you in the Knightsbridge bars. Who went through my place? Was it you or the sergeant? Oh, you noticed. <laughs> it was me, I'm afraid. Why? Oh, very simple. To see if you'd notice. Most wouldn't, you know. I hardly moved anything. Uh, but then you've been trained. We wondered if you still had the right instinct. Two years national service. Now, apparently it was enough. Your record shows you had a flair. It was just a job a bit more interesting than many alternatives, oh, that's all. Some people might say a lot more interesting. You were fairly resourceful with my sergeant a little while ago. So, whatever you're checking me on, I gather I've passed. Yes, I rather think you have. Huh. Can I know what the examination was for? You can, as soon as you've seen this. Oh. The Official Secrets Act. I've read it. Now, if you look closer, you'll see you've actually signed it. Uh -huh. You have been digging things up. Now, the sanctions are still valid. You'll remember that the penalties for any breach of the Act are quite fierce. So, whatever the outcome of our little chat, you'll be expected to show a suitable reticence. Point taken. Proceed. I'll just uh, warm the projector up. You're employed as a history teacher at the local secondary modern school. Oh, I can never line these things up first time. Understand your school has an annual trip to the continent. Well, it's a joint affair. They combine with a party from the local girls' school, yes? Now, where are they going, exactly? I've no idea. You're not very keen on school outings, I take it. I am not. Does that seem in focus to you? Well, it's, it's all right. They're going to a little place near Lucerne. They always go there. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, do you think you could uh, turn the light off? Yeah, sure. Ah, uh, thanks. Uh, right, uh, all set for slide number one. Uh, they always stay at this same hotel, uh, the Grass House. It's not surprising, really. It's the only one big enough for the school parties. Hmm. Looks clean. Oh, don't they all over there? Uh, this chap's the manager. He looks clean, too, from this distance. But he isn't. He calls himself Bruno now. Uh, you might exercise those rusty special investigation branch faculties of yours by trying to work out why a particularly nasty Neapolitan racketeer is playing nursemaid to a gang of kids. Oh, he's reformed. Very unlikely. Hiding out? No, we thought so for a while. And now he's been there too long. And the place doesn't exactly abound in his rather sordid types of entertainment. And we think the answer lies in the person of this chappy here. And I'm... How does he strike you? Well, sort of substandard gigolo. Yes, yeah, it's fairly apt. Uh, anyway, he's English. Actually, he's a colleague of yours. Uh -huh. Name is Simpson, science teacher, Greater London. Now, there he is, shepherding his party, one of his parties. Are they staying at the Watsit? No, uh, the grass house, yes. He sometimes makes three trips a year, Easter, Whitsuntide and summer. Masochist. But I know the type. Cameras from arm to elbow. At the moment, he's using a Nippon ZF. Phew. Can you afford it? Now, that question is rather interesting. Now, look at this. Very nice. Where is it? Sussex. 
Who lives there? Our friend Simpson. Oh, there's more. He drives one of these. To flash. Agreed. But what of the import duty? Quite expensive. And take a look at this. The blonde leaving the building. You can't see her very clearly here, but you can see the type of apartment. The London rents, incidentally. And friend Simpson pays it? He does. Uh, now you can see her better. Ah, still a bit flash. But he never got that on any school outing. Yes, expensive model, this. Even without import duty. <laughs> Oh, I, I think we can have the lights on again. Ah, oh. oh, thanks. Well, what do you think? I think Simpson's weekends must be fun. But what the hell he makes of the backward streams on Mondays, I just can't imagine. What exactly is his sideline? Oh, some sort of cooperation, obviously. With Bruno? Almost certainly. If you know so little, how did you rumble him in the first place? Patient attention to detail. Oh, don't give me that. Somebody grass. No, not this time. Believe me, there's been some arduous spade work done on this lot. All we knew at first was that there'd been a big increase in the garbage trade. Somebody had obviously found a new route. It took us about a year to check all the likely channels. Then we had to start on the more unlikely. That's what I meant by the arduous speed work. Among the very least likely, sheer desperation, really... We began to check the regular school parties. That sounds ridiculous. Large scale, serious smuggling via a gang of kids. Exactly. It sounds ridiculous. But it's what makes it so devilishly good. Well, after a while, we found Bruno. It looked interesting. Then later, our friend Simpson appeared under the lens. Even more interesting. Well, that's about as far as we've gone. Doesn't sound like much for all those months of work, does it? What is the regular product? What are they bringing in? Oh, anything and everything. The roots, the big thing. The in business, we think, as a kind of refined haulage trade. Well, cart anything if the price is right. The safety factor is obviously very much higher than normal. Even at very high prices, their service must be attractive. To anyone looking for a bit of quiet trade. Have you any idea how they actually do it? Oh, a fair idea. Now, let's say that... Uh, Certain colleagues of yours might be prepared to accept a little extra luggage and distribute it among the kids. Well, you know how casual their custom check would be. Perhaps some of the kids' own luggage gets salted, too. Once through customs, it shouldn't be beyond the powers of a teacher to arrange to leave the bags lying about somewhere. Hmm. And so you're hoping I'll rally to the colours and join my school's expedition so that you can have a man on the job? Oh, better than that. We think if you go there and look as if you have expensive tastes, you might actually be approached by them and offered a share of the gravy. Well, oh, you can see, that's the only way we're going to get to them, can't you? It's the only way we can collect the right evidence. Or well, at least evidence is enough to get the executives. Otherwise, we'll have to be content with midgets like Simpson. Well, an ordinary man out there won't do. The place is too small. He'd stand out like naked. No, it has to be a bona fide teacher. Well, there are plenty of us. I wish you the best of luck. Ah, but you're something of a gift from the gods. You can imagine how intrigued we were to discover your army record. Two years SIB. I ah, didn't tell you what a difference the right sort of training makes on this sort of thing. Don't look now, Major, but your sales pattern's showing. Oh, damn it, man. You're tailor made. Your own school going to the very place. Your presence there wouldn't be questioned for a minute. Well, thanks for the drink, Major. And the interesting evening. My regards to your sergeant. He will be pleased when you tell him you've both been wasting your time. I'm sorry, Major, but I regard my holidays as an oasis of calm. I can't bear the thought of kids clutching up the piece. No, I'm determined whatever you say, I won't go. Alfie Pinder strains my holiday spirit. Did you see him then, Foster? I saw him, and that's about all. I'll tell you what, we're not going to get near any of them birds till we get to Switzerland at this rate. I told you, waste of time. Oh, stop moaning, Tadpole. Where are they then, Foster? Three coaches back. Cripes, it's like the Iron Curtain. Did you see Doreen? Just for a sec. Alfie's on guard, chatting up the bird in charge. <laughs> That'll be a treat for her. Where's Shields? Out here in the corridor, keeping a loose eye on the rest of our lot. Well, I'm going to have a drag then. Well, Shields, the ladies appear to be settling down comfortably. Now, how are things at this end? Well, nobody's actually been sick. 
How long do we maintain these oriental distinctions and have the women travelling behind? I think you'll have to bow to my experience in these matters, Shields. Not that I'm not delighted that you chose to come and share the load. A bit sudden, wasn't it? Is that it's nice to have some help. Nobody knows, you know. Nobody knows how onerous the responsibility can be. But at least the girls seem well behaved. Not like some of our louts. Superior cunning, that's all. There's something very sinister about young girls in batches. They're in very capable hands. Mrs. Hogg's a most experienced teacher. The other one's only a young thing, but she seemed very willing, I thought. Which, after all, is the main requirement, eh? Miss Page. What's that? Miss Page, the young teacher with the girls. Mm-hmm. You called her the young thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought maybe you didn't remember her name. They call her Miss Page. I got it from one of your duplicated sheets. Ah, my itinerary, you noticed. They sometimes say I fuss, you know. Incredible. Yes, they do. But you can't have enough information, I always say. What does she do? Who? Miss Page. What's her subject? I'm not sure. Oh, yes, I am. It's games. Something of that nature, anyway. Oh, Lord. Hairy legs. I'm sure I wouldn't know, Shields. She seems perfectly charming to me. It's psychosomatic, Alfie. Even though the skin's clean, mentally they get hairy legs. I must admit it being a little surprised when I learned you were joining us on this trip. Well, cheer up, Alfie. We'll win through for the good of the regiment. Remember, it's bigger than both of us. Ah, you must be Shields. How are you? I'm Jean Hogg. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Hogg. No, no, call me Jean. We should be seeing rather a lot of each other, you know. Well, I think we English are monotonously formal anyway, don't you? I find it quite pleasant to uh, go continental occasionally, eh? Well, what's your first name, Shields? Well, uh, <clears throat> it's John, actually. No. Oh, I don't believe it. John and Jean, eh? Damn near an echo. <laughs> Well, John, I must say it's a nice change to have some male staff in the offing on the right side of senility. Where is Mr. Pinder, by the way? Uh, Just back there. I mean, we're not always shepherding the little horrors about, are we? We do manage quite a few moments to ourselves, really. Oh, that's possible, is it? Oh, Lord, yes. Just you wait and see. In the late evenings, by that lake and all that moonlight. Uh, How many times have you been? This is my fifth year. I'm very experienced, eh? I'm even becoming used to the idiosyncrasies of your Mr. Pinder. Oh, sweet chap, but then I suppose you know. He loves to feel he's helping out the weaker sex. I always consult him. It's just protocol, isn't it? Oh, well, I'll winkle him out. I'll see you again. Uh, Down here, you said? Yes. I suppose he's lecturing the lower third on Victorian morality. Bye! Oh, Major, what have you done to me? Scotland Yard. Extension 2-4, please. Oh, Shields here, Major. Ah, oh, hello, Shields. Good boy. Where are you now? King's Cross. I've just arrived. And don't you good boy me. You might have warned me about Mrs. Hogg. <laughs> She'll educate you. Oh. I suppose you've checked them all out. Oh, of course. She is all right. Technically speaking, that is. Anyway, listen. Things are going nicely. Simpson's left with his party. You'll not be on the same flight, but the timing's pretty close, and you'll probably catch a first glimpse of it at the airport or the air terminal, even. Uh-huh. I'll see you at the airport, incidentally. Uh, you can offer me as an old friend from way back. I'll point him out to you in case you've forgotten the photographs. I haven't. Good boy. I knew you were right for this job. Stuff that. Listen, if Simpson's going to be there at the same time, what makes you think they'll be interested in recruiting me? The murderous and instinct, old sport. Famous throughout the service. Now, what do you think? You've seen how Simpson carries on. He's not exactly discreet. Once they tumble to this, and they're bound to, they'll want to shake him off. Well, wouldn't you? Hmm, I suppose so. Well, I hope you're right. If this turns out to be a wasted trip, bearing in mind the kind of company I'm going to have to keep, I'll sue you, Major, even if it means you selling your Chelsea flat. Such malice. And you look such a normal, uncomplicated boy. Uh, See you at the airport. Uh, Don't look for me. 
I'll find you. Where are they then? On the side of the snack bar. Oh, flaming wrap up. It's worse than quarantine, isn't it? Does it matter? Funny fella. So young, too. Hey, hey, if we can persuade Alfie to turn us loose for a quick coke at the snack bar and the birds see us slurping away, female jealousy being what it is, they're, they're bound to clamour to be let loose themselves. Yeah, and then we shall be in a position to chat up the delicious dory. And anything else that's tasty, bar that ghastly greeter. I don't like coke. Oh, oh belt off, tadpole. I will set greeter on you. Oh. Hey. How about that, eh? Of course, you'd crush him to death. She's fat. <laughs> She's not fat, mate. It's all muscle. I once saw a flat nerdy potter. Hell of a wallop. So watch it, shorty. Go and ask Alfie if we can go for a drink. Why me? You go. You're bigger than he is. You're only the start. He'll turn you down and then we'll start. We'll wear him down in the end. Go on, be useful. Come on. Oh, life was simpler in the third form. Heavens above, girl, what are you doing? Greta, come here. What do you mean by twisting her arm like that? You're like a Japanese wrestler. She called me a fat pig. Not having anybody calling me a fat pig. Oh, for goodness sake, what will people think? You're in the public eye, girl. Control yourself. She called me don't a fat... Don't start that again. Go over there with Miss Page's party. And don't be so... so Neanderthal. Please, miss, yes. we're dying of thirst, miss. Oh, not The boys are having a drink, look. Why can't we? No. Oh, it's not fair, miss. I wanted a word with you, Doreen. I saw you sprawling on that bench. I could see your knickers, madam. And keep your eyes off those boys. You're keeping touch for one of the waiters, Carl. But don't expect him to get involved any further than was your courier. He can't. Anything you tell him will get to the police at Lucerne and then to me. Conversely, if you have any questions to ask, he'll pass them on and see you get the answers. You're sure he's straight? No, yes, he's Detective Sergeant. Ah. He's your only link. Don't compromise him. Ah, look, down there. Our friend Simpson and party ready for boarding. Oh, yes. I wonder who takes care of the blonde while he's away. <laughs> yes, I expect he rather wonders the same thing. <laughs> Good Lord, look, he's at it already. Ah. Oh, well, you know these photographic types. Departure marks the start of the next album. <laughs> How they revel in this moment. The world through the viewfinder. <laughs> Good God! Oh, no! Did you see that? Must have blown his head off. No, no, keep away. No, I must Look go. Here. No. Whoever rigged that camera to explode will be watching somewhere. We mustn't get your face noticed too early. You said they'd get rid of him, didn't you? And by God, they did. Well, that's it, Shields. The measure of the opposition. Take a good look at it. That's what you'll be up against. Know your enemy. That was episode one of Roy Clark's Comedy Thriller. Listen to Light the Blue Touch Paper and Retire, the next episode of Alan Akeborn's production of The 17 Jeweled Shockproof Swiss Made Bomb. The 17 Jeweled Shockproof Swiss Made Bomb. We present a comedy thriller in six parts by Roy Clark. A large-scale smuggling concern is using school parties as a cover to move their illicit merchandise. Johnny Shields, a schoolmaster, has been persuaded by a mysterious major to travel to Switzerland and try to make contact with the gang. Episode 2. Light the blue touch paper and retire. Morning, Mrs. Hogg. Oh, I slept like a log. I think that journey yesterday was too much. Miss Page has ordered for you, I think. Uh, yes, I thought you wouldn't belong. Thank you, Pat. Ah, morning, John. Mm. Ah, croissant. 
I think they're just enough in the morning, don't you? I can soon get enough of almost anything first thing in the morning. Oh, early morning blues. I adore grumpy men. They're a bit like dark chocolates. Uh, would you pass the sugar, Pet? Uh, early morning? I- I've been up since six. I had a walk round the lake. On the water, of course. If I were you, I'd take some fruit salt shields every morning. A glass of fruit salt. I always do. They'll do the trick. Or perhaps a few manners. I should have thought three times round the hockey field would have been more in your line of advice, Miss Page. Oh. They've got a hockey field here. I don't recall one. If no one else wants this butter... Uh, you're a catalyst, John Shields. You'll have us all fizzing in a moment. That's where the magic is, you know, in the fizz. Tickles your nose a bit. Quite painful sometimes. But imagine all that agitation at work in your plumbing. Bound to do you good, flushes you clean. Lord, Mr. Pinder, that's very vivid prose. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I'd better go and have a word with them. Take my tip shields. Fruit salt. Julie, my pet. Would you ask the gentleman behind the newspaper if there's anything in about that horrid affair at the airport yesterday? We mustn't embarrass him. He's only pretending he can read the language. I don't think I shall ever feel the same about a camera again. Oh, uh, John. Silent men are fascinating. He's probably asleep. There. It's there. Page two. Full report and picture of him. Pre-explosion, I'm glad to say. I wonder who would do such a thing. They think he would. They think it was suicide. Ridiculous. It certainly seems ridiculous. I mean, why would he? I think he couldn't stand another school trip. <laughs> well, I see Alfie's almost ready for safari. Has he issued an itinerary this morning? Lucerne, the Museum of Transport. Oh, sounds hilarious. Oh, I see Bruno's back. Wondered where he was. Oh, usually here, is he? Mm, invariably. Looks a bit shattered. Out on the tiles, I expect. Or travelling. What? Oh, yes. I suppose we must have arrived looking a bit broken. No, I think the tiles. No, if he's determined to dissipate that huge frame, he's still got a long way to go. Good morning, Senior Bruno. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Hogg. I am happy to welcome you again. Oh, <laughs> kind of you to remember me. Uh-huh. Now, may I present Miss Page, Mr. Mm. Shields, Senior Bruno. Buongiorno. Good morning. morning. I am always happy to welcome English visitors. No, oh, you <laughs> like England, then? Well, that must explain it. I'm sure I've seen you somewhere. It must have been in England. Uh, you make a mistake. Uh, scusi, I am required. You seem to have a flair for endearing yourself to people. Don't I, though? Quite took the oil from his smile. Well, shall we go and find poor Mr. Pinder? Oh, that should be easy. They say on a clear day you can hear him fizzing for miles. They seem to be all aboard. Oh, look at that lunatic! That's a very striking model. The car or the blonde? Both. Oh, I hate these tan Scandinavian types. Oh, very dishy, though, in a hard sort of way. Hey, she's collared your Mr. Bruno. Oh, I thought she was going to hit him with that newspaper. It seems I was right about his being on the tiles. Well, it doesn't look like a lover's tiff to me. She's giving him hell about something. Oh, stand up to her, man. We are very rude. Look, let's get on the bus. Oh, fancy throwing the paper down like that. Too theatrical. Not bad for an exit line. Ah, they finished. Heavens, listen to Hey, 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 hey. Turn it off, you lot. Turn it off. Let's hope you're all as enthusiastic about the sights when we get to the museum. There's a lovely castle, eh? Smashing. (laughs) I've managed to procure a map. I I never like to go without a map. Where's Mr. Shields going? Shall be a tick. All right, you lad, climb aboard. A creature of impulse. Oh. After you, Mrs. Hogg. Oh, thank you, Miss Vinder. Earth, he wanted that paper. Would you believe it now? He's thrown it down again. Not a splendid example for the boys, I'm afraid. Discarding litter like that. Keep Switzerland tidy, eh? I, I just wondered what page she was so excited about. And? Page two, the explosion story. Come in. This is just come in, Major, from Lucerne. 
copy of a request for information Shields has made through the contact in the hotel. Now, what's he after? A woman, sir. Aren't we all? Well, read it, man. Sir. Woman, Scandinavian, 30 years, 5 foot 7 to 8, blonde, deeply tanned, drives a Ferrari convertible, sir. I can think of several reasons why I'd want this. Have Lucerne replied? Apparently not yet, sir. There's no copy of the reply. Mm, that means he's onto something new, then. Because it may not lead anywhere. Still, the boy's trying. Now, let me know the minute you get anything else. Very good, sir. Deeply tanned. I must get out of the office more. What's a game, sir? No, not straight after lunch. Don't be sickening. Be more good to lie in there, sir. Smashing. Is the gentleman comfortable? Oh, hello. Yes, the gentleman is. You disappoint me, Carl. Huh? Another illusion gone. I thought you'd always begin with some rubbish about your auntie in Heidelberg. Please? A password. Huh. The gentleman makes a joke. Oh, it seems to have had a fatal accident. No, Carl, pretend it never happened, if you will. Huh. Do I really horrify you as much as I think? It was not enough to place me in the hands of, you will pardon the word, an amateur, but one who is also, what shall I say? Frivolous? Try frivolous. Yes, that would seem to fit. Listen, mate. I'm not only amateur, I'm reluctant. And being apparently frivolous is the only way I can stomach this game. Now relax. I respect your vulnerability here. I know how tense it must be. I may be flippant, but I'm not careless. And that's all you're entitled to expect. Now then, let's get back to your auntie in Heidelberg. Mm. The lady you are asking about is Danish. Ah. Lindo. Khan Lindop. She has a chalet above the village, over there on the right. You can see the hill. Mm, she must have a nice view. She is the owner of an expensive shop in Lausanne. Handmade pottery, fancy leatherwork, costume jewellery. She's not known to us. We are, of course, taking steps now to find out if she's known to anyone else. It could be one of the pieces. There's just a chance. It would be essential for them to have some sort of legitimate business address. I get the feeling she's quite important. Nothing like top brass, of course, but a cut above Bruno. I got the idea she was dressing him down this morning, and he just stood there and took it. Um, one more thing. Has Bruno been absent lately? Hmm? Two days. Yesterday and the day before. Ah. You are thinking about that unfortunate explosion? Yes. So are we. His description will be circulated. Oh. I think the lady is seeking you. I will go. Be careful. Oh, you look very comfortable stretched out there. Oh, it's a shame to move you. Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, relax. It's not too bad. We've decided on an afternoon by the lake. Mm. Oh, do you swim? I potter about the edges. Decoratively, of course. I imagine you have a flat tummy. It came with the feet. <laughs> Look, it's a bit disturbing having your creative imagination at work on my anatomy. Makes me feel a bit naked. Hey, that was flaming cold. Oh, look where it's come from. There's still a lot of snow on them mountains, you know. Oh, this sun's lovely, though. Yeah. Has Doreen got it wet yet? No, she never will. You can't blame her. They all look rough wet through. Where's Tadpole? I sent him from some ice cream. Where are they, then? The birds? Over there, by that big umbrella. <laughs> you can just see Greta. Oh, dear, oh, dear, the lady wrestler. You wouldn't think she'd dare wear it. What's she doing? Giving Dory to rub down with suntan oil. Stroll on, we could have done that. Hey, up, Greta, have a rest, love. We'll do that. <laughs> What's on tonight, then? Well, according to Alfie, it's bed by half past nine. Oh, he must be imitation, you know. He can't be real. I reckon he's plastic. Oh, half past nine. He's a bit backward. No, but he's not too backward to check us in, though, is he? So, we'll be there. Thing is, where are we off after? You what? Sneak out again? Well, it's not impossible, is it? Fair enough. Hey, do you think Dorian will come? I don't think she wears all that makeup just to take it to bed. Only snag, she's bound to bring old Queen Victoria with her. 
Hey, oh, look at Alfie in that costume. Alfie! Hey, that Miss Pace looks all right, though, don't she? Yeah, I wish she took us for PE. I bet old Shields is chatting it up. Now, you'd think so if he had any sense, but I don't know. They seemed a bit acid in the museum this morning. He must be balmy. Oh, I'll never get used to this money. Oh. I don't know how much you owe me. Here. It's covered in sand, you bird. Oh, you are a potty little oil. I think you have serious knees. I'm sure there's no need to be personal, Shields. Oh, no offence. It's just that from this angle they loom enormous on my horizons. I can see snow-capped peaks beneath them. It's a symbol. I think you're both very rude. You particularly, Shields. Oh, come off it, Snow Queen. We find no faults with yours. Oh, really, Shields. Don't pay any attention to him, Mr Pinder. It seems to be pure reflex that makes him offensive. Oh, don't be too hard on him, Julie. You see, Mrs Hogg forgives me because of my flat belly. Can't you find a reason? Perhaps after that she'll change her opinion. I don't know what you're thinking of, Shields. Methinks there's something rotten in the state of Denmark over there. The one with the sunglasses bigger than her costume. If you'll all excuse me, I think I'll wander over and fondle her Ferrari. What's the man talking about? Sometimes I could hit him. Uh -huh. They say indifference is the only real contempt. Oh, I like him. So do the boys, I notice, and they can usually tell. But I'm just curious as to why he thinks it necessary to make us dislike him as if he wants to keep us all at a distance. He's succeeding admirably as far as I'm concerned. I can't understand where he's going. Over there, Mr Pinder. The blonde with the glasses. We saw her at the hotel this morning, remember? Hope she sends him packing. Don't we all? <laughs> oh, well, I think I'd better have a walk down to the girls. Doreen's tempting both fate and the Latin temperament with that thing she's nearly wearing. Mm, I'll come with you. I want to swim. I think I'll join you, lady. If you intend to stop, you had better sit down. You are keeping the sun from me. Well, there must be GP plates on my shorts. How did you know I was English? I see you at the hotel this morning with the English party. You are a school teacher, is that right? Guilty. And you, you are Swedish? No. I am from Denmark, Danish. Miss, um... Lindop. Karan Lindop. Hmm. They call me Shields, Johnny Shields. And I'd like to tell you, Miss Lindup, that from where I sit, you have one of the most attractive Ferraris in the business. Oh, you like my car? I think you're a handsome couple. And you would like some time to itch your eye, is that it? Any time, Miss Lindup. Any time at all. Why don't you offer me a cigarette and call me Karen? You may just be in luck, Johnny Shields. Mm -hmm. You see... I am fond of school teachers. Now, isn't that strange? Almost bizarre. Yes. I send most intruders away. Excellent. Then perhaps you'll do just that with the gentleman over there who seems to be trying to attract your attention. Where? Oh, Bruno. I can't do that. Bruno is a friend. Andiamo! Andiamo! No, Bruno, come here. Come over here. Sit down. You know Mr. Shields? We met. Mr. Shields is a school teacher, Bruno, with expensive tests. He likes my car. Oh, then maybe you let him polish it to some time, huh? Watch your tongue. I see no reason why we cannot all be friends. <laughs> Hotel, sir. In time for tea. Excellent service. I've enjoyed it. Ever since Bruno went off with the sulks, that is. He would like to own me. Who wouldn't? <laughs> is that why you try your luck at the casino tonight? Would you like to afford me, Johnny? You and lots of other things, Karen. A car like this, for instance. I have a theory, you see. Everywhere is paradise if you have the right sort of income. I think I shall come and watch you tonight. Perhaps I bring you luck. Perhaps together we can do something to improve your income. Ciao. Ciao.
We got a message to deliver. Keep away from the girl. He tells us not to hurt you this time. But you listen a good. Next time, we hurt. Horrors batten down. I feel quite free in the nights yet, young. You're sure Mr. Pinder doesn't mind staying behind? Well, I've just asked him again and he insists. I think he's tired. What about Shields? Oh, the elusive Shields. Who knows what instincts that one follows? I wonder why he didn't appear for dinner. I haven't seen him all evening. Oh, he's downstairs now, chatting with Alfie, looking very elegant and predatory. I imagine it's the blonde again tonight. She can't have sent him packing. Though I thought he appeared a trifle bruised about the cheek. I hope she clocked him. Oh, would you? Yes, I would. <laughs> I can hardly keep my hands off him, too. Oh, now don't explode, pet. Only joking. Now, tell me what you think about these earrings. Uh... Yes, I know they're huge. We'll accept that as red. Start exercising your critical faculties from there. <laughs> Who's it there? Hey, Bruno! Uh, what is it? What are you... Oh! <clears throat> Next time, Bruno, deliver your own oh! message. It was necessary to be oh. so dramatic. Good God, Carl, don't ever materialise like that again. It... Yes, it was necessary, as a matter of fact. I'm supposed to convince this crowd that I'm just the sort of impetuous young man they could use. Well, you really hit him. For a while, kaput. Well, he wasn't expecting it. That's half the battle. Tell you the truth, I wouldn't fancy tackling the brute any other way. Can we take a walk before he comes to? I think that during the week sometime he will slit your liver. Hmm? He has done it before. I can't. It would cause too much fuss. The organisation wouldn't stand for it. I got the impression he was being hauled over the coals for the airport job by the blonde this morning. They probably think he should have done it a lot more quietly. Oh, such confidence. I think you overlooked the little matter of the Latin temper. Oh, you're a regular tonic. I do not like this what you call playing my ear. Listen, Maigre, if there's any other way in my present position, I'd be glad to hear about it. And what does your instinct tell you to do next? Don't one? tempt me. Hmm. No, I want to take a look at the blonde shop. I'm meeting her later at the casino in my role of reckless young spender. I think she's nearly hooked. But first, I think we ought to have a nose round that place. We? Really? Oh, come on, come on. It'll broaden your mind. Just like that. Burglar alarm. Somebody there. Anything could go on. But he wants to take a look at the shop. That's why I need you. Use your influence. You're not telling me there isn't someone in your mob that can pull a few strings for us? It is very irregular. Oh, come off it. Now, be honest, you're just trying to steady me down. Is that surprise? After what I see you do to Bruno? Put yourself in my place. I have my life in your hands. How do you think I feel when I see you going berserk? What would you do? Nothing here, either. Well, let's find the workroom, the place where they actually do the leather work. There's no window. Let's have the light. Yes. Ah, this looks like it. What are we exactly looking for? Well, it won't be labelled evidence. Use your imagination. I would have thought we showed my interest in the office. This is just a waste of time. We haven't time to go through any papers. Besides, I don't suppose they leave them lying about. We're looking for... Ah. Now, come here. Look at this lot. Yes. 
There's enough stuff here to make 50 suitcases. And look at this. It's just leather. What do you expect in a leather workshop workroom? It's not new. Look. They've got every shape and colour and texture. Uh-huh. I bet your pension you could bring any suitcase in here and they could alter it or copy it. Uh-huh. This is where they salt the kids' cases, make a false bottom or side. So, even an hour two is occasionally right. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. Can we rely on your lot to keep tabs on this place now? We ought to know who delivers regularly, who the craftsman is for the leather. Please, I know what to do. All right, I just wanted you to see I could think like a pro. Come on, then. We might as well dance while we're here. I can't! Who's going to sit with Greta? She'll be all right. I don't know why the hell you bring her. I don't think I'd come with you two on me own. Besides, she's my best friend. Oh, come on, let's face it. Who's gonna molest her? Couldn't understand the words you said, but it didn't seem to matter. What's up then? Why aren't you dancing? Because the music stopped. Because the music stopped. <laughs> Are you sure she's had her injection today? I meant, why haven't you been dancing, glamour pants? Nah, she won't. She reckons she can't leave Cleta. I don't like dancing. Oh, you might as well have brought your ruddy mother. Go on. I'll sit with her. I'll see you get a medal. Come on. No excuse now. Mind you, stay with her then. All right. Go on. Oh, well. What will you do now? Well, it's a matter of adaption. I exchange you and the car for perhaps some little typist on a scooter. Shall you not mind? Oh, I shall miss the Ferrari. Flatterer. Here, drink this. Oh, thanks. Perhaps this too will be the last whiskey. I see you sitting at some cafe table, holding hands and sipping something fizzy through a straw. One has to make these sacrifices. It seems a little hard on the typist. I think she will find herself fighting outside her normal weight. <laughs> well, thanks for the drink. Where are you going? Wherever the typists gather at this time of night. Come on, one last favour. Give me a clue. Would you not regret to leave? Well, I had hoped to discover the extent of that wonderful tan, but you can't win all the time. You look better on the beach, incidentally. Something to do with these lights. Nasty. I see your pride is a little hurt. It's flexible. What else is flexible? Your scruples, perhaps? Can't afford them. You're a free spirit, Shields. I like that. I'm not a free anything, lovey. One way or another, I cost. I think maybe we can do a little something about improving that income of yours. Don't ask any questions. You'll have to be patient for a while. The decision is not entirely up to me. I hope it's not up to Bruno either. I'm not exactly his favourite charity. Bruno will do as he is told. What makes you think it might be him anyway? He's like that bosom of yours, Danish, a bit obvious. I mean, what sort of hotelier needs a pack of goons? And he's not past using them on a guest, either. Da. That's right. Your boyfriend had me worked over this afternoon. He is sometimes a fool. Apparently, he's not heard about the virtues of competition. Keep away from the girl, they said. Meaning you, lovey. He is not my boyfriend. He has no He obviously right... has not read the contract. Poor Johnny. Did they hurt? Now I see where you scraped your knuckles. I didn't, you know. Not then. There were two of them. Besides, they were only demonstrating. There are times when it pays to hold yourself in check. You didn't hit Bruno. Why not? You never get anywhere dealing with the help. Oh, Shields, that was a little foolish. You've got to go. I thought you said he didn't run things. He doesn't. But that will make no difference to you if he catches you still in a temper. You can't go back to the hotel tonight. You'll have to keep out of his way till I can make him see reason. We will go back to my place. You can stay the night. Uh Strictly business shields. I'm merely looking after you as I would any other investment. You are lucky, Shields. I thought they might have someone watching the car. Keep your eyes on the road. I'd like to stay lucky. You'll be safe now. We're here. Come in. I can't see a damn thing. 
Give me your hand. Come. The switch is on your side. Can you feel it? Mm, where? Ah, right. Buona sera. No. I knew you bring him here. No, Bruno. Put that away. Bruno, wait. <laughs> no, Bruno! <laughs> That was episode two of Roy Clark's comedy thriller. Listen to The Minestrone Thickens and is stirred. The next episode of Alan Eckborn's production of the 17 Jewel Shockproof Swiss Made Bomb. The 17 jeweled shockproof Swiss made bomb. We present a comedy thriller in six parts by Roy Clark. Shields made his first contacts with the gang in Lucerne through a Danish girl, Karen, and expressed his willingness to cooperate with the organization. However, Karen's boyfriend, Bruno, resents the attention Shields has been showing her. Episode 3. The Minestrone thickens and is stirred. You are lucky, Shields. I thought they might have someone watching the car. Keep your eyes on the road. I'd like to stay lucky. You'll be safe now. We're here. Come in. I can't see a damn thing. Give me your hand. Come. The switch is on your side. Can you feel it? Mm, where? Ah, right. Buona sera. No. I knew you bring him here. No, Bruno. Put that away. Bruno, wait. <laughs> no, Bruno! Keep out of the way! Stop him! Keep out! You fool! Oh! Me, at the fool, you walk in the way of a gun. Ay, ay, do you know how near you were to being dead? You wait. You wait till I tell Lugano. If we have any time left, you act like a maniac. You chase him away. Where to? Where do you think he will go, you ape? Straight to the police. He goes on our way. You think I'm a soft in the head. I got some boys in the garden. You bet. You bet I think you're soft in the head. If I hadn't been the first to walk into the room, he'd be dead now. You'd have killed him. Okay. Okay, we got him. Yeah, here they come now. Stick around, huh? Stick around for the party. After all, it's your house. Bruno, you remember what Lugano's been looking for all this time? Remember, Bruno, what comes first? What they want at Lugano or your personal pleasure? Bring him in, boys. Oh. The special job, Bruno. He's the one. Hey... Hey, this guy's a heavy. Where you want we should put him? What have you done to him? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Let me here just tap him a little. <laughs> Very funny. Put him down. In the chair here. Uh, yeah. Just put him down. Okay. Drop him. <clears throat> Pass me that cushion. You want we should start on him now? No. You gonna do the job yourself? Shut your face. You think I pay you ask her questions all the time? Get out. Go on. Get out. Take the time idiot with you. Okay, okay. Come on, Leppy. We can take a hint. Now, wake up! Keep your feet to yourself! Fetch me a towel. What? A towel. Soak it and wring it out. Wring it out well. Uh, should be his neck. Someday, maybe, eh? You see. It's all right. We've got you through round one. It's all right now. Oh, hell, David. At any other time, this would be an interesting close-up. Don't talk. How's your mm, head? Large. I've been told it's large, and I believe it. Ooh. Just let me lie here in the shade of your bosom. I'll be fine. Fine. Oh, 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 it's you. Now, 
What the hell are you doing up at this hour? Well, if it's any of your business, I like this hour. Oh, Lord. Deep breathing and push-ups. Nothing quite so energetic. It's probably escaped your rather malignant eye, but the place is a claim to beauty at this time of the morning. I don't expect you to be the least interested, but it's clean and quiet. Rather, it was. You, I take it, are not so much early as late? You look awful. Mm, the wages of sin. Are you all right? Now, don't get smug. If it wasn't for my sort, the healthy glow of your sort wouldn't appear half so attractive. Oh, do, you, do you think I'll be able to scrounge a cup of coffee? I shouldn't think so. Not yet. Oh, charming. How long before breakfast? You'll never make it. Mm. Look, um, as an act of simple charity, quite independent of your perverted charm, I have a tin of instant coffee. Mm. There must be some boiling water somewhere. I can probably engineer some kind of cup. Mm. There's a touch of the Florence Nightingale in that kind of her. Come on, lead on, Magpage. I'd do the same for any stray dog. <laughs> Oh, legs are dropping off. Oh, oh, wonderful. The air at this altitude. They bring the cows up here, you know, for the summer grazing. Let me have to carry them. I thought this was supposed to be holiday. Just keep your eyes on Alfie's rear end and slog off. Oh, when are we going to have a rest? Come on, you lord. Get in gear. You'll have the girls catching oh. up. Oh, oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, oh. 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 That's for oh, the now. Sing if you wish. Ooh. Oh, she's balmy. Oh, my shoes are killing me. Well, she said they were unsuitable. Who asked you? I know what suits me. We don't all wear damn great loaves of bread. Well, you knew there'd be mountains. Ooh. I thought we were going to look at them, not climb all over them. I can see the boys now. Oh. Having a rest. Oh, come on. Last few yards. Oh. Oh. Oh, the view's spectacular. Oh, I don't doubt it for a minute, Pet. Wish I dare look, but someone's got to keep an eye on this little lot. There's too much cover. <laughs> oh, they can't hurt much up here. And you made sure the boys are far enough away. Oh, not for long. If you look over there, you'll see a classical pincer movement beginning to unfold. Uh, isn't that metaphor a trifle mixed, Mrs. Hogg? If it is, it's the only mixing she allows. I intend to make quite sure that you never have to face a weeping parent complaining that her little darling's been got at. Quite right, Mrs. Hogg. Safety first, always. Well, never mind. If it happens, I'm quite confident an identity parade will soon reveal the girl responsible. <laughs> Oh, oh, jolly good, Shields. <laughs> Might be truer than you think. I think you must bow to Mrs. Hogg's experience in these matters, Shields. Oh, steady on, Mr. Pinder. That's open to misinterpretation. It's second <laughs> only to my own. I think 15 minutes in which to run wild is about all we dare permit. You'll be surprised where we flush them from even then. <laughs> Come on, then, Snow Queen. In the interests of desegregation, let's go and look at the view. Where are we now? A bit nearer, down there. Silly devils. Look at her, pretending not to care. Who's that little then, next to Daniel's? I don't know. I've more to worry about than that lot. What's she doing now? Combing her hair. What she always bring that big one for? Oh, don't ask me. She's come up for the summer grazing. We've seen so little of you recently, we just assumed you wouldn't be with us today. What happened? The Ferrari in for servicing, or is it the blonde? Mm, not by me, it isn't. But I refuse to argue today. It's too pleasant here. What's this, then? Rest day? Hmm, no manner of speaking. Hmm, this is a new shield, the Lotus Eater. I gather you must have kept quiet about the other night, or I would have seen that they knew. About your being away all night? Hmm. None of my affair? No, the commendable restraint... You mustn't imagine that everyone's interested in your movement. Ouch. I'm sorry, but you asked for it. Commendable restraint. You were getting ready to laugh at me again. Tell you what, then. Have a nibble at the old lotus and we'll call a truce. <laughs> All right. No low blows beyond this point. Agreed. Just a temporary arrangement, of course. Of course. Hello, Luscious. Who heaved you up here? What you gawping at, then? She means you, Taddy. Lovely way with words she has. Hey, she's all right. Aren't you, love? You keep yourself to yourself. Give over. Hey, you want to watch it. She'll have you. 
Oh, I'd like to see her try. All right. No, get off. Oh, get <laughs> off. Oh, get off. Oh, all right, all right. Get off. Oh, you're all set up, Tampo. She fancies you. Oh, don't be <laughs> She does, you know. She kept asking who he was. Oh, oh, get off, oh, mate. Oh, 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 get off, oh, mate. Oh, leave him alone. They're all right. Doing more good than smoking. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right. You speak for... Oh, speak for yourself. Oh, 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 behave yourself. Get off, Go again. Come on, Tadpole. Saved by the bell. What's the matter? Your boyfriend Shield's been spoiling you so much you can't light your own cigarette. Funny. I just noticed you eat too much garlic. Oh, you may be gonna get that too clever. You watch your step with boyfriend. How come he leave you today anyway? Because I tell him. He's on the hike. I know what I'm doing. He's to go with his school on the hike, and then tomorrow, when he goes with them to Lugano, everything is natural. He keeps in with his party. That's why we want him, isn't it? Because he is with a party. Uh, how much of use do you think he's going to be? Oh, sure. I know he'll go for the money. That's easy. But how strong do you think he is in that stomach? He'll do. We look for him a long time. Anyway, not your problem. Not even mine. We'll let Lugano decide. If they think he's right for the special job, okay. And if I'm not all right? No harm done. We use him ordinary. Uh, he's too many big ideas for ordinary. Here is you tell him all about the special job, this special job. You think he's going to settle down, be a porter like the others? No. That's why he's right for the special job. <laughs> Depend. You know what I think? I think he's going to get us so far, and then I think he's going to make a mess. Why should he? Because he won't have the stomach. As soon as there's something dirty he has to come, he won't have the stomach. You want to bet? You see, I'll show you. You'll show nothing. You'll keep your big feet up. <laughs> Relax. I know our way. Relax. Nobody get hurt. Only if they deserve it anyway. I got a way to check on your boyfriend's stomach. He'll never know where it's happened. Uh, unless... Uh, unless what? Unless he turn out to be unreliable. You keep out. You stop playing games. You want that? You tell Lugano you go soft. You like them to know you stopped me checking shields? No, it's not that. But I know you. You don't like him. Give you half a chance, you slit his throat. Lagana won't like that either. Not if he's what they're looking for. Okay, we do it together. <laughs> He'll never know. I tell you what I will do. You'll be surprised. You think sometimes Bruno's not got too much a brain. <laughs> I know what you think. Well, listen. You really have little idea of what will happen at Lugano. Mm -mm. All I know is that I have to break away from the others and make my way to an island in the lake. There's a cafe there of sorts, apparently. No doubt the rest will just happen. Oh, such confidence. What do you think? I think someone wants to have a look at me. Danish keeps on about some special job. Oh. Look, it'll be another link, won't it? That's what you're all after, isn't it? I think, perhaps... I teach you how to make big sign of the cross. Yes, yes, that's another thing, sport. Every time I catch your eyes these days, you're looking at me as if I'm already dead. I wish you'd pack it in. Somebody has to be afraid for you. And sometimes it is not you who I see dead, but me. Stand still. Still, boy. Try the count you. Where's Finch? Did anyone seen Finch? Gone for a book, sir. A book? Finch with a book? Never. I've heard some poppycock. Go and get him. Yes, sir. No, no. Stay where you are. Stay right where you are. Don't move. You're going to get lost. Stay, sir. What platform, sir? Don't wave your mutilated sentences at me, lad. Just contain yourself. All will be explained. Go. Well, get it over with. Not yet. I got to time it just right. I got to wait till the train's starting to leave. He mustn't have time to get off once I tell him. Now keep your eye on the guard any time now. <laughs> Finch Shields. Is he in with yours by any chance? Yes, he's here. Ah, I'd just like to have a word with that young man. Finch! 
I should be interested to examine your choice of literature, Finch. Please, sir, time we were off, sir. Yeah, it looks like it. The guard seems to be going through the... Boy, boy. What's friend Bruno after? Who? Me? You want me? Right, hang on there. Sit tight, lads. Back in a jiffy. No, don't come out. Stay inside. It's nearly time. You're full of surprises. I thought you'd be back at the hotel going through everybody's pockets. Or is it suitcases? Oh, everything a big joke, eh? You make them a worry shields. All the time a big joke. You're gonna be funny once too often. That's okay for you, but now, if you're gonna work for me, you've got to be careful. You've got to guard your tongue. You've got to keep your eyes wide awake. We all got to do all that time. I tell you, even me. That's why I come to warn you. Get to the point. Even at the hotel, we always have to be on guard. You never know. So, you got to keep a watch and take a care. Don't trust to nobody. Then you find out. Find out what? You find out if somebody's pretending to be something that he ain't. Like who? Like a certain police snooper back in the hotel. Ah, <laughs> yeah. You look a surprise. No longer funnier. No, it's not a funny. Not for him, anyway. Oh, he's still laughing, maybe. He don't know yet what we know. What are you going to do? Don't worry. He'll be taken care of before you get back. Don't worry about this end. We take care of ourselves. You, look out for yourself. I just thought that you should know. Teach you to keep awake. Have a nice trip. Guess who's waiting at the end of the corridor? She's not, is she? She is. Oh, you've made a right impression, lover boy. Oh, shut the door. Maybe she'll go away. I shouldn't bank on it. What's she doing? She's just standing there, patiently waiting. Go on, Dadpole. Give her a treat. Shut the door! <laughs> <laughs> She's heard about your bad habits, Tadpole. She's waiting for you to nip off for a fag. Well, I shan't go, then. It's a long way, Tadpole. You'll never make it. We warned you smoking was dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We never collected things like this in my day. Good heavens, the woman's deformed. <laughs> Wanted to learn the language, indeed. Can you imagine that, Shields? Finch, to whom no language is more foreign than his own. These trains must be very powerful. You'd never think we were climbing. You're sure we don't stop anywhere? Absolutely. First stop Lugano. Wonderful service. Imagine, right across the Alps. I've been telling the boys about all the tunnels. Splendid feat of engineering. How fast would you say we were travelling? I don't know. Isn't there some dodge about counting the telegraph poles? Or does that only apply back home? Very really powerful trains, though, I must say. Let's say 60 for an average. It must be all of that. That means Altdorf in about an hour. I don't really see the point of all these calculations, seeing we don't stop anywhere. But you in Lugano in about three hours. These little places they build in the valleys, quite enchanting. Fairy tale almost, aren't they? You'd be better employed looking out of the windows, Shield, than at that map. Quite beautiful. You can mix me a drink. I still don't see what you expected him to do about it. Not on a moving express train crossing the Alps. Yeah, and that's a little problem for him. Obviously, he can't get to a phone. He'll have to wait till they get to Lugano. Three hours, but then he'll think it will be too late. Exactly. So what can he do? Nothing. So his conscience will be clear, and it's all a waste of time. No. Either way, we'll learn all that we need to know. If he does nothing, then okay. I'm wrong. He's the right guy for the job. But there's nothing he can do. I think there is. Just the one thing. He knows we can play rough, so he knows better than to make it too much fuss, because then we find out, and he's dead. So anything like a stopping the train is out. That leaves him only one way that might work. He writes a note and throws it out when they pass it through the first station. Out off. And that's all he can do. And you've got someone on the train who'll see this? <laughs> better than that. I got Gino and Leppy. But we can't afford to have the note delivered, can we? So... A few minutes before they reach Altdorf, in one of the tunnels, the lights in his compartment going to be fused, and he's going to get himself mugged. Oh, they won't hurt him. <laughs> then, but then they'll know. 
If there's no note, it's clean. Everything's okay. But if there is a note... Well, uh, you know what these tourists are like. Always leaning out of windows. Oh, very dangerous. <laughs> and there's so much to see between Altdorf and Lugano. Drink. I'll mix you another. You see him, Gino? Sure. What's he a do? He's reading a map. What for? He read a map. How the hell should I know? Shut your face. We got to find the fuse. She's not in the carriage. When are we going to get him? Not yet. But the fuse we can look for now. Come on. I don't know what she looks like, a fuse. Uh, Lippy, how come they always give me you? Is a good job you skill with a knife, farm boy, because you thick in the head. Come on. We look in the guard's place. It's through here. You keep him talking, I look. How am I going to keep him talking? Uh, ask him something. What the kind of thing? Mamma mia. All the time you ask a stupid question. Now all at once you don't know one thing to ask. Look, ask him about Lugano. Come on, through here. This place seems curiously empty. I can't quite put my finger on it, but... Greta. Where's Greta? I thought things were strangely peaceful. Sit still. I'll go. I could do with stretching my legs anyway. Oh, thanks, Pat. What for you stick him, you crazy farm boy? He are gonna shout. He are gonna make a fuss. How come he gonna make a fuss? You're only supposed to ask him a question. I think he see my gun. Oh, low boy. You could have clipped him on the head. You didn't have to stick him. I don't know. I, I just uh, stick him. You are telling me. Mamma mia, you stick him good. I always uh, stick good. Well, uh, don't just stand there. Wipe your knife. What are we going to do with him? You tell me. You're going to tell me. Eh? No, you ain't going to tell me. It's my problem. All the time you make a problem. You find a few? Yeah, I find a few. Don't bother me. Well, why don't we throw him out? It's the guard's compartment. They don't leave such a door wide open. You got a key, huh? Uh, wait, wait. Here, key, here. Key. He'll, he'll maybe shove in this basket. Well, go on then. Pick him up. You will kill him or you pick him up. Uh, uh, you gonna have the help, me, Gino? <laughs> to disturb your lonely meditation shields, but have you seen one of the girls down here? I've only just come, but there's none here. Oh, I'll try the next carriage. Isn't that the guard's van? Oh, I'd better try it anyway. <laughs> no, 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 the leg, the leg. He's not a going uh, to be. Push, push, he's got a fit. Excuse me, I wonder if you could... Oh! Go! Quick, get! She is so hard. Close the lid, close the lid. Did you see her face? Not uh, very good. Uh, the light was in my eyes. Uh, didn't you see her face? With my back to the door? Oh, oh, it doesn't matter. We find her. We know her again. After what she saw, it's going to be written all over her face. Come on. Did they see you? Well, I suppose they must have done that. Uh, poor man. Julie, listen to me. You've got to act normally, do you hear? If they see you like this, you're as good as dead. Now, look at me. Do you understand? Listen. Here they come. Now, come on. Come here. Come here. Come here. Now, kiss me. Kiss me. <laughs> was it necessary to be quite If so... you mean was it necessary to put my hand there, yes, it bloody well was. We were supposed to be giving an impression of being so engrossed in what we were doing that we hadn't even noticed an hysterical woman flying down the corridor. It didn't seem to be the time for being subtle about it. I'm sorry. I, I suppose you probably just saved my life. Only temporarily, sweetheart. Now, let me have a think. Oughtn't we to tell someone? Like who? Now, sit down. You'll be all right here for a few minutes. They'll go the length of the train. Where are you going? I'm going to have a look in that basket, just in case there's something we can do for the poor devil. That's the first thing. See if he really is dead. I'm coming with you. I'm not staying here. All right. We should have time. 
Will you recognise them again? One of them? I didn't see the other's face. It's a pity you saw either. The chances are the next time you see him, you'll give the fact away. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be depressing. I'm trying to work out the angles. Come on, then. The big hamper thing over there. Is it? Yes. There's nothing we can do for him. Did you see them when they passed? I was preoccupied, remember? No, I couldn't look. If they'd seen me looking, they might have figured out the rest. The thing we have to do is keep them from spotting you as the witness. That's your only chance. Never mind about apprehending them at this stage. They're stuck on the train, but so are we. First thing is to keep you alive. Well, Pepe, did you see her? No, I don't know. So many. It could have been some of those. I don't know. No. The light was in my eyes. Ay, 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 ay. I don't know what I'd do without you. What are we going to do? we got to be more careful, that's all. You want to go back and tell Bruno we made a mess, eh? Oh, uh, look at the time. Out door in 20 minutes. First we do the little job and afterwards we got plenty of time to clean up all the mess. Oh! It's all right, it's all right. Just a tunnel. <sighs> Oh, Jess, I'd forgotten about them. No, you're doing fine, fine. You just need something to do. Uh, Look, how's your German? German? Mm. About O-level, I suppose. Why? That that makes you the available expert. I want something translating. A note. It'll sound strange, but trust me, don't ask any questions, okay? All right. I think I do trust you anyway. Mm, You must be crazy. Here, write it on this. Now, large letters. Station Master, Altdorf. Altdorf? I thought we didn't stop. We don't. No questions, remember. Imperative contact Lucerne CID immediately. Phew! We're out. Oh, thank goodness for that. Uh, CID immediately. Um, yes. I think I've got it more or less. Good. Now, cover of contact in Gross House broken. I suppose I'd better give his name. It's the only way they'll believe it. Add... Remove Carl at once. That was episode three of Roy Clark's comedy thriller. Listen to Saraband to a Burning Fuse, the next episode of Alan Eggborn's production of The 17 Jewel Shockproof Swiss Made Bomb. The 17 Jewel Shockproof Swiss Made Bomb. We present a comedy thriller in six parts by Roy Clark. Julie and Shields, on the way to Lugano, discover that Carl is in danger. Despite Bruno's men on the train watching him, Shields plans to use desperate measures to warn Carl. Episode 4, Saraband to a Burning Fuse. Still clear out there. Now, just one more thing and then we'll get you back among the living. I want something heavy for a weight. Ah, coins. No, that's why we wrote the note in an envelope, so you could seal the weights inside and, what, throw it, I imagine. Ah. Very cunning. How do you feel now? (sighs) Better. You knew I would, didn't you, if you gave me something to do. I suppose you took quite a risk, really, half confiding in me like this. Don't let your imagination run riot. If you do bump into those two, just stop where you are and dive into your bag. Put some lipstick on or check your false eyelashes, anything. Then? False. Enough of these legalistic objections. Just do it. Very calm, very cool. You know what I mean. All right. I probably need that lipstick anyway. Oh, God, I must look a mess. Under the circumstances, yes, quite ghastly. Come on. Don't go wandering off. Stay with Mrs. Hogg. Pull her on like a blanket. 
Yes, all right. No. Thanks for the lift. Trace the elusive greeter, incidentally. You went the wrong way. She's down there, loitering quite peacefully in the corridor. I thought I'd leave well enough alone. Shouldn't we be passing through Outdorf soon? Oh, should we? Oh, I've no idea. Oh, hello, the light's on the blink. Oh, look, the bulbs have gone out. <laughs> I'm delighted to see it. This Swiss efficiency was becoming almost sinister. I hope they come on again before the next tunnel. Oh, I expect they will. More fun not, though, eh? Like the tunnel of love. I say, uh, cast an eye over your fellow passengers for a minute. Who would you classify as not to be sat in the dark with? Oh, distressingly peaceful lot, aren't they? Still, you never know. Sometimes the dark brings out the best in people. Now, where's Shields, I wonder? He's tailor-made. <laughs> A child. She's got me toffee, miss. I haven't, miss. I haven't. She's a It's on a seat. Oh, for heaven's sake. Heavens. Oh, I suppose some idiots lowered a hot little bottom on it. I detest these wet nurse jobs. <laughs> now, be quiet. You'll see to it in a moment. We're coming out, I think. Oh, yes, here we are. Girls. Shameful performance. She moved it. She moved it. Got it now. Yes, miss. It's on her skirt. Oh. That will do. Good gracious, what will people think? Hey, are you going through to the next carriage? Yes, sir. Would you ask Miss Page if I could see her a minute? Ask her to come here, please. Right, old sir. Oh. Is anything wrong? Can I... Walk past me, will you? See if the compartment there... Is it empty? This one? Yes. Open the door. All right. What is it? Why can't you... Your mouth's open. You're hurt. Your head, it's bleeding. Is anyone coming? Uh, no. All right, you're the game's mistress. Catch me when I let go of this ruddy support. Oh, uh, uh, here. Uh, 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 better close the door. What on no, earth? no, no, stay there. Lean against it and smile at me or something. Warn me when anyone's coming. What on earth happened? Did you fall? Yes, like an idiot. I'd appreciate a tissue and the use of your mirror. Oh, uh, here somewhere. Uh, did you stumble in the dark? I've been stumbling in the dark ever since I got on this blasted train. The note's gone. Gone? Sorry, I don't want to start repeating you, but how do you mean? Removed. It wasn't any stumble, lovey. I've been rolled, mugged by experts. Your boyfriends of the guards, then, for a father. There's someone coming. A boy. He's all right. He's gone in the loo. <laughs> you must be keeping bad company, Snow Queen. Your language is beginning to deteriorate. Look, can I get you anything? You're obviously hurt. Only my pride, love. I've been set up. They've led me by the nose. I don't understand how they knew you'd have the note. They didn't. They were just looking to make sure. You see, I was told something earlier which in certain circumstances, like my not being what I'm supposed to be, would result in such a note. Now they're sure. They know just how things stand. How do things stand? You're looking at death, love. When a certain German beetle first laid eyes on me, he saw his death at my casual hands. Now I've dug his grave and labelled it. I've made a right muck up. You were trying to save his life. It's not fair to blame yourself. The thing is to decide what we're going to do. We are going to do nothing. I am going to tell you what to do when we reach Lugano. Then you are going to get the hell out of here. Now listen. You forget that I'm a witness to murder. I'm involved whether you like it or Stop not. Stop yapping and listen. Don't start going British Someone's on me. Someone's coming. The steward. Me excuse me, signore. If you would like coffee, it is now being served. I gather that they'll now have a vested interest in seeing that you don't reach Lugano. Oh, there must be something we can do. What about the communication call? You might just as well flush the toilet. Look, they're armed. They're not particular who gets hurt. You saw what happened to the guard. 
You've got to think about the kids, haven't you? You can't just do nothing. I know it's now, devilish, don't but... Don't worry, I... don't worry. I'm not going to sit here and make it easy for them. But first I want some belated insurance. That's you. If things go wrong, you at least must get through to Lugano. If things go wrong? Listen, will you? When you get to Lugano, no heroics, no public-spirited rubbish. Never mind even trying to have them arrested. Let them go. Let them walk off the train. I can tell you enough about them to ensure that they'll eventually be picked up. Anyhow, you've seen enough to make a murder charge stick. Now listen, they're Bruno's boys. What? Not the chap... Yes, yes, Bruno from the hotel. He's in it right up to here. Once you're clear of the train and out of immediate danger, get to the police. Not the bloke at the traffic junction or the first one you see, but get a taxi and straight to headquarters CID. Yes, but Make what them about listen the... to you and make them double quick. Get hold of Lucerne and tell them to drag Carl out of the gross house. Get him clear first. Yes, but Have you what got about... that? Yes. Are you sure? Yes, damn it, yes. Right. Then you can take a deep breath and start telling them everything else. The lot. They'll take it from there. Make sure they're prepared to give you protection from then on. For protection? I mean it. You'll need it. What about you? Oh, you're a dreadful woman for questions. I don't know. I'll be doing what I can. It'll help if I can know that you'll be seeing the things at Lugano. They'll try to kill you, won't they? Somewhere between here and Lugano. They've got to. Look, you can say what you like. And I don't see how you can exactly throw me out without causing that fuss you're so worried about. But I am not calmly walking back to the others and pretending that none of this has happened. I'm staying. Oh, I should have known better. I should have realised that at the first sniff of action you'd be dusting off your prefect's badge and clattering into the fray. There's no referee, you know, no whistle, no half-time. Sit down, you'll make your head ache. Things obvious. Somehow we've got to get them before they get you. How, for cripe's sake? The train's theirs, whether Swiss Rail know it or not. They're waterproof, Snow Queen. And we're all clogged up in a smooth, lethal machine. It's a 17 jewel shockproof, Swiss-made bomb. Oh, shut up and think. There must be a way. Proceed, Miss Kipling. Don't be snide. You're a dreadful hard woman. Now, be honest, wouldn't you welcome me out of the way? A man who's had his hands where I have, and without invitation at that? Don't be ridiculous. If it's any consolation, Miss Scarlet, I was that damn busy at the time I hardly noticed the not unpleasing sensation. Oh, wouldn't you be better employed concentrating on the matter in hand? I gather your head must be less painful, if not any clearer, this sudden resurgence of your peculiar humour. Please, miss. Potty Halliwell's going to be sick. Huh? What on earth are you talking about? How does today's dedicated young mistress, if you'll pardon the allusion, deal with a thing like that? I don't you'll see You'll have to be what... quicker or you'll be inundated with regurgitated goodies. Beginning to suspect that blow on the head did you no good at all. What about the green, unpleasant Halliwell? Is her appeal to be in vain? I've got some travel pills, if that's what... Oh, you're feeling ill! You needn't feel ashamed, you know. I don't expect you to be above such common failing. How many have you got? Um, here they are. Nearly a full file. Enough, anyway. I think not. Uh, does Mrs Hogg come similarly prepared? Well, I Yes, suppose... of course she does. For every emergency, I bet the contents of that woman's bag are truly comprehensive. Now, nip along and borrow anything she's got in the pill and capsule line, barring aphrodisiacs, of but course. what on earth? Tell her you're working on a recipe for instant yoga or something. You mean... Caution not to exceed the stated dose, that sort of thing. That's it. No aspirin, they'll be too bitter. Try anything else, the more the merrier. Will do. You know, you had me worried. For a minute I thought you weren't really awake. Have you worked out yet how to administer them? Tell you when you get back. Don't excite anybody. Play it cool. Put those in. We can use those. What about this little lot? Uh, cyclazine hydrochloride meclazine. Even sounds soporific. Yes, bung them in. What else? These? Yes, yeah, shum them in. Well, here's hoping there'll be enough. Good heavens, I should think so. Good enough to drag an elephant. I don't know. The safety margin's bound to be pretty wide. What were our friends doing when you passed? They seemed perfectly relaxed, feet up on the seats. Mm, they're happy, not in any rush, all the way to Lugano and nine miles of the Gotthard Tunnel still to come. They should worry about one unarmed man. Now, um, we can't possibly administer them like this. They'll rattle for a week. Uh, a piece of paper. Here. Good. Now we crush them on this and then put the powder in one of the files. This one? Fine. 
Then we can dissolve it in as little water as possible, and that way we get a nice, powerful little concentrate. Let's hope the wretched stuff doesn't taste too vile. How do we persuade them to take it? Yes, that's the rub. There's one slim chance. The steward gave me the idea with his coffee. It's going to be a matter of timing. You wanted to play? Well, here's your chance. I think it's the only one we're going to get. Just tell me what to do. Well, when we're ready, I'll walk down to the diner. They're bound to follow. They'll want to keep an eye on me. I'll order coffee. They'll feel the need of an excuse to stay, so they'll order some too. As soon as they get theirs, I'll get up and leave. I hope they'll follow again. As soon as you see them leave, get to their table and get the stuff into their drinks. How can well, I... you can put your bag on the table and pretend to be searching for something. Give it a good stir if you get the chance. Keep an eye out for me coming back. I'll have been to the loo. I'll come back. As soon as you see me, Scarper. I'll sit down and finish my coffee. And then let's hope they do the same. I think it might work. I think it had better. Your coffee, sir. Oh, thank you. Oh, come on, come on. Two nice big cups of the gentleman down there. That's it. Right. Stage two. Make some excuse to get to their table, he says. Search through your bag, he says. There. That's one. You know, Shields, I feel very conspicuous. Now, give it a stir if you can. And very well for him to talk. Everybody's looking. I know they are. This is where I get off. Oh, Shields, I hope it works. Slight conspiratorial nod. Mission apparently accomplished. She's a dish. Now then... We've got to sit it out until you drink. Come on, come on, come on. That's my lifeblood in those cups. <laughs> you fool! Well, give us a kiss then. I think we've made it. You idiot! Deliberately leading them after you like that when they'd finally drunk Well, it. I didn't want them passing out in the dining car. Too much fuss again. But suppose it hadn't worked in time. They might have might have got rid of you. How about another cigarette? You see, it serves you right. You would work with me. It's going to cost you a fortune in cigarettes. Here, keep the damn things. Oh, be like that and I'll smoke my own. You're incredible. No wonder that little German was dubious. Well, what now? Do we inform someone on the train or do we wait until Lugano? Neither. They're safe enough. I've planted the dead guard's hat on them. They're sitting on it. I've also shoved the knife they did it with down the back of the seat. The police will find it. It's covered with dabs. That should give them all they need to hold those two until later when we can fill in the details. Shall I still no, go to I the... No, I don't want you to do anything at Lugano now, not for the time being. I'll ring Lucerne and get them to withdraw Carl just in case. I don't see why we can't go to the police as soon as we arrive. I haven't the time. They'd never let me out again for hours with a story like this. By then it'd be too late. For the moment I can press on. As far as Bruno's mob at Lugano know, everything's still all right. I've got to take advantage of that. I'm safe till the papers get the story. If we leave the police to work it out, it'll take longer. They'll get nowhere until one of those two starts to wake up in hospital. Charming, I'm sure. In other words, you're working against a burning fuse, just hoping it's a slow one. You're a very dishy piece, Snow Queen, but a shade dramatic. It's a question of proof and responsibility. If we leave things as they are now, all the police will get will be those two very minor chorus. None of the principals are going to be touched. That won't do, Snow Queen. It's not really on. Now, come on, come on. Sit down and let's watch the scenery. This is supposed to be a holiday you're on, remember? Two more seats. A trip to the restaurant on the island. A few more seats. Mind the steps, please. Okay? Okay, okay. We go. Just a we minute, go. please. Huh? Oh, have you got room for one more? Huh? Oh, thank you very much. Hey, careful, lady. Please. Hold on. Here. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'll uh, sit over there, I think. Okay, okay, okay. We go, we go. Excuse me, uh, is this seat taken? I ought to wring your neck. I thought you'd be pleased. That's why I waited until the last minute. You can 
hardly send me back now. Oh, the lake's very beautiful, isn't it? I hope you're not going to sulk, Sheila. More wine? <laughs> Better not. I thought you believed in living dangerously. Come on, look at its sparkle. Only a drop, then. I hope you're not planning to get me tipsy and then drop me before the fun starts. Mm, don't tempt me. When does it start, incidentally? I expected loads of cloak and dagger, and all we've had so far is a good meal and an argument or two. Oh, something will happen when they're ready. All we can do is wait. If you're restless, you might occupy yourself with the thought of what Alfie and Jean Hogg are doing to your reputation by this time. My reputation? Well, we both sneaked off. They'll naturally assume it's more than coincidence. It'll take years of hard work with your vest tucked in your navy blue knickers to restore your image after this little lot. <laughs> I really must bring you up to date on ladies' games apparel. <laughs> that offer would seem to include some very interesting possibilities. <laughs> oh, I like this record. Could we dance, do you think? Oh, good heavens, you do expect all the social graces. You really have had enough, Vina. Oh, come on. Everyone else is. Don't be so miserable. There. Not so painful, is it? I find it very dubious psychologically. Oh, go on with you. Relax, you're too stiff. Stop being the alert young secret agent for a minute and pay some attention to me. Look at me. I'm quite nice, really, you know. If a little tight. <laughs> Your fault entirely. Are you still angry with me? You shouldn't be here, not uninvited. Oh, rubbish. How can I be here any other way? You'd never invite me, would you? Because you think it's dangerous. You're a fool, Shields. I can be useful. I was useful on the train. Admit it. So we'll get you a medal, nevertheless. Nevertheless, nothing. You're just stubborn. I have to invite myself because you won't, ever. I suppose you're another one of these exponents of the helpless female school. They make me sick. You're fuming in my ear. <laughs> Sorry. No, not at all. It's strangely stimulating, almost like a tiny bite. Hmm. You're quite cuddly, too. Less sinew than I anticipated. Fancy, all this and healthy, oh, too. Don't prod. Don't pretend to be vulgar and try to discourage me off. Beginning to see through your tactic shields. I believe you're not half so unpleasant as you try to pretend. Careful, lovey, you could be wrong. It might just be that if ever I'm in a position, if you'll forgive the physical illusion, to do something single mindedly about you, they'll hear your liberty bodice giving in Luxembourg. It's no good, shields. I won't be put off. <laughs> <sighs> go back via the terrace? Oh, oh, look down there. What a spread. They certainly know how to enjoy their food. It looks like a family. Mm, there must be four generations. Probably staying at the villa down there. <laughs> look at the old couple, quite feudal. Looks like a fairly rigid pecking order. Are we on Italian soil here, do you think? No, I shouldn't think so, though we are nearer the Italian shore. I'd better get back and be seen. Come on. Did the gentleman enjoy his wine? Mm, very pleasant, actually. Thank you. A very fine Asti Spumanti, sir. A local wine, so naturally we are proud. Perhaps the gentleman would care to see our cellar before he leaves. It is well worth a visit. Mm, I'd like to. Yes, Perhaps I'm... alone. The lady would find it merely damp and depressing. Mm, I'm sure she would. The lady will stay here. I very want good, to... sir. If you will pass through the door over there, you will see the stage. There will be someone to show you around. The lady will remain here. Just sit still and keep off the vino till I get back. Yes, my captain. If the local gigolos get active, tell them you've got something virulent and contagious. The way you treat me, you'd think I had. <laughs> be careful. Ciao. Hello? Anyone home? That's a trouble with striking a light. Once it goes out, one sees less than ever. Who the... No, stay where you are. I'll guide you in a moment. 
Suppose at first you tell me what impressions you have formed of our organization. I don't know what you're talking about. I just came down to see the wine cellar. Oh, very good, Mr. Shields. We appreciate the caution. Now we can see what we are doing. I'm very happy to note your suspicion of strangers, but then Lucerne told us to expect some good material. My name is Vittorio. This way, Mr. Shields. You see, it is quite correct that we do have an excellent cellar. Before you leave, you must take a bottle, compliments of the house. Through here. Si, si, okay, papa, si. Okay. At 50 years old, he still tells me when I should leave at a table. Is this the one? Uh, yes, Marco, uh, this is Mr. Shields. Okay, beat it. Leave us alone. Go tell my old man I come in a minute. See. Go on, what have He's a nice guy, my old man. But he's never been out of the old country. He still acts like a father all the time. But you've traveled? Sure, every place. Stateside, mostly. And you? Just a bit, in the army. Hey, you can shove the army. For me, too. Hey, you want a drink? There's all these lousy bottles. No, thanks, not now. Mm, you want to get back to the chick, huh? I see you on the terrace. Hey, she's a nice chick. That was us having the old Italian family meal. Big deal. All of the family. Every year I got to bring them for a vacation. Else the old man beefs the rest of the year. I made some loot, see? They all know. This is my place. The whole shebang. <laughs> it's a nice place, huh? Yes, very. Local boy makes good. I you know the routine. It's mostly legit, too. So, you may be gonna work for Marco, huh? I'm working for you right now. Or else... Else what? Else I'm dead. I'm in too far already. You can't just send me away sorry we think you're not quite right for the job. Mm, you're a smart boy. Now, nah, don't worry, you're in. Your son rigged up a neat little trick, they tell me. If you arrive here at all, they say you're clean. Real clean. Well, you're here. Hey, Nick, go get to the item. Now we're gonna have that drink. This is the party, boy. I've been waiting for you. A long time. <laughs> to the new member. Shake. <laughs> hey, lesson number one. Now you're in, you don't trust nobody. Okay? Point taken. Hey, you <clears throat> wrote that pretty good. I've been known to send them to sleep, you know. I believe you. Hey, now we have a drink. No arguments. Straight out of the bottle unless you're gonna make me send for a glass. After you. Hey, you learn fast. Hey, that's right, you don't trust nobody. Here we are. Put it down there, Nick. Here, now, Shields. Take a look. Go on. Handle it. What do you think, huh? Mm. Nice camera. Mm, bet, Solid. Bet you've never seen one like this before. Look. Peel back the cover here. You see why it's so solid? You expect plates in a camera, huh? But not plates like these, eh? Printing plates. Look at this. Look at the work they produce. Mm. They're copies from some of the German plates made during the war. We had them some time now, but money's kind of bulky stuff to smuggle. Even through the school gimmick. So we figure if we can get one good man, let him take the camera through, and then set up shop in his own hometown. Who's gonna look for a teacher when the money starts to flow, huh? Shields, can you do it? You're just in time. The boat's coming. How many bottles have you bought? Tell you later. Come on. Most of the people are already down on the jetty. Oh, the boat's in. They're unloading. It's amazing how many they... What's wrong? Those pills. They can't have been enough. It's one of our friends from the train. What? He looks like death, but he's here. He's just got off the boat. Hellfire. Can we make it to the boat when he comes up? No. He's not coming up. He's just sent one of the boatmen up here with a message. He's staying there, watching the passengers as they board, looking for us. That was episode four of Roy Clark's comedy thriller. Listen to Smaller Shrinks the Standing Corn, the 
next episode of Alan Akebourne's production of The 17 Jeweled Shotproof Swiss Made Bomb. The 17 Jeweled Shockproof Swiss Made Bomb. We present a comedy thriller in six parts by Roy Clark. Shields has been given a set of forgery plates by Marco, head of the organization, but before he and Julie can leave the island, one of Bruno's men arrives to raise the alarm. Episode 5. Smaller shrinks the standing corn. Down to the villa, come on. Let's hope Marco's lot are finished eating. They can't hide on the island. It's not big enough. There'll be a boat. There must be. The great Italian family should have at least one between them. OK, it seems clear at the moment. Let's get out of sight of the cafe. Now, make a beeline for the water. Uh, you better have one of these. Where did you get them? From our friends on the train. Just point it and squeeze the trigger should the need arise. Oh, look, there's someone in it. Good, excellent. I don't see why. Because he'll know how to start the motor. By the time I've figured it out, we'd be knee-deep in Marco's cousins. Who is this Marco? And look, must you hang on to those bottles? If we ever get out of this, I'll buy you a drink, I promise. For Marco, read Mr Big. And that parcel, lovey, contains as well as bottles a most original camera. Stay there. Hey, you, you, sí, get señora, in the boat. Señora. Move, rapidamente. ¿Qué, qué, qué cosa get in. Sí, sí, sí. OK, come on. Right. It's not very big. Oh, perhaps you'd like to wait for the next. Now, you, start the motor. Sí, sí, the motor, sí. the outboard. Sí. Yeah, come on, andiamo. Sí, sí, sí. sí. Mio Dio. Let's see, which is the throttle? Uh, can you swim? <laughs> swim, no tare, poor. Yes, okay, okay, okay. Message received. You can come with us for a bit. Let's go. Andiamo. <laughs> we'll drop Boyo here when we get some way out. We don't want him to report it before we can even get a start. What do you mean by a very original camera? Please, not in front of the help. OK, this is where you get off. <laughs> what? <laughs> you didn't need a second invitation, did you? Hardly surprising you're waving that gun about. Oh, my God, do you see what I see? The boat just leaving the island. Yes, it's a big brute. And fast. That does it. We'll never make Lugano in this thing. They'll intercept us first. We'll make for the nearest shore, somewhere over there, where the slopes are wooded. We'll get in among the trees. Can't we simply head for the road and get a lift? No, they'll be covering the road soon. We might flag down the wrong car. Those wooded slopes of the thing, lovey, until dark. They wouldn't dare, surely, not on a highway in broad daylight. But that sounds fit to be included under famous last words. That camera in there contains a set of plates. Not photographic, forgery. They're beauties. Marco got all lyrical about the workmanship. I've got his fat dabs all over them. If we can get them home to mummy, love, then the forces of light shall prevail. He's up the proverbial backwater, is our Marco, unless he can stop us. He's going to throw the lot at us. I'm sorry, lovey. It's going to get hot. We'd be safer carrying a bomb, wouldn't we? Much. Tell me, Miss Cage, and how did you spend your holiday in Switzerland? I'd better hang on to the parcel, haven't I, while you run us ashore? Good girl. <sighs> Is this high enough, do you think? Well, we can have a rest. Now, just a second. I'd like to keep an eye on the road. What are they doing? Can you see them? Only two of them. Near the car. The others have spread out. Why aren't they climbing after us? There are probably not enough of them yet to make sure of all the ground. They can't afford to have us slipping through. Now, for the moment, they'll simply cover all possible exits and be content to keep us here. Can they do that successfully? It's pretty rough country. I think they probably can. Whichever way we try to go, eventually it means leaving the trees. They'll cover both sides. They could pick us off in the open. 
You can rely on it. There'll be somebody in every nice, quiet spot waiting with a rifle and a silencer. No noise, no fuss. Oof. Oh, it's hot. How are you bearing up? Well, I can nearly breathe again. Well, look, I'm going to take a look a bit further up. Stay here. Keep an eye on our friends. If anything begins to happen, shoot. Look, uh, could I have a drink from one of those bottles? Only a drop. We really ought to have water. That's one of the things I'll have a look for. I'll take a bottle in case I find a cataract or something. Take it easy on the vino. Go away. But don't be long. you creep up like that? I suppose now you're half Indian. Well, that's the wrong half, then. I can't find any water. Why are you so acid all of a sudden? Because I'm beginning to hate you, Shields. What the hell have I done now? You see, you don't even know. You treat me like some female Gunga Din. You throw me the odd smile as a sort of bone and I'm expected to wag myself silly on that. You don't even know I exist as a person. Good girl, he says. Pat her How on... How much vino it have you... It isn't the vino. Well, it's strange. What did you find? Well, there is a sniper. I could see him. I suppose they wanted me to. They want us to realise we're stuck here. And there's a forester's hut or something a bit higher up. It's full of clobber, saws, axes, ropes. None of it any damn use to us. Not a drop of water. I'll just have to have a swig of that plonk. What's the programme, then? Well, we try and... We try and hang on here till dark. We rest. As long as the opposition permits. It's their move. I'm afraid for a while our strategy is purely defensive. That's a military term for not knowing what the hell to do next. You might as well stretch out, then. Make ourselves comfortable. At least they won't be able to rush us. The slope's far too steep. Oh, don't let me doze off. It's so damn warm. Come in. Shot! Well, what is it, Sergeant? From the sound, sir. They've just had an anonymous tip via Lugano to withdraw their officer from the gross house, sir. Have they now? And for Shields, of course. He must be playing things very near the limit if he thinks the contact's cover's broken. If the thing's gone bad, why the hell isn't he packing it in and pulling out? What's he doing? Not playing the thin red line. No, he wouldn't. No. Not Shields. If he gets himself killed, there'll be a hell of a row. They'll have my guts and yours, Sergeant. Sir. If one goes, we all go. Got to have some esprit. Sir. No? Mm. Sir. No, he wouldn't. Very much a man with his feet on the ground, his shields. Not susceptible to the lure of posthumous glory, wouldn't you say? Yes, sir. Yes. Now, if he's gone all charge of the light brigade, I'll... Get the airport, Sergeant. Sir. Commandeer two seats on the next repeat... Next, flight to Switzerland. You're frowning. Oh, I thought you were asleep. Suits you, actually. Sets off your eyes. Beautiful eyes. What? I suppose you know you're greying at the temples a bit, attractive devil. Why don't you look at me? Smug little cat. Yes, look at you, chock full of feathers and cream. Whatever happened to standard British Reserve? Mm, poor old Shields, getting worried. Have you been nursing a viper in your bosom? I've been thinking. Yeah, I can see that. I've been thinking about us. I've decided that standard British Reserve might be all right if I was sure that you'd be coming to tea for a lot of leisurely English Sundays. But uh, since we can't count on that, I decided to hell with British phlegm. I've been telling myself that if I think you're gorgeous, I'd better be quick and tell you I think you're gorgeous. So there we are. I think you're gorgeous, Shields. Silly word, isn't it? But the only alternative which occurs to me is lovely. I felt you'd not care much for that. Not that I give a damn what you care for, really. Have you finished? Please don't interrupt. I must say I'm delighted to see how British you are, really, under all the glibness. You hate this, don't you? You're positively squirming. Sit still, you'll nettle yourself or something. I'm delighted to see you so embarrassed. I should just think I am. Pass me the vino. Hmm. And how the devil is one supposed to respond to comment like that? It's shameless. You're doing fine. 
You're responding very properly, it seems to me. Your being simply at a loss for words is quite an event in itself. Entirely suitable. I'm quite satisfied with you, Shields. Really, I am. You can kiss me now, if you wish. Mm, I've met some dotty women in my time, but you're the queen. I'm quite prepared to overlook your being offensive. I realise it comes from your embarrassment. Will you stop talking like a lady umpire? And will you stop making love to me in those cold, polite tones? You don't get kissed like that. You sound like somebody's maiden aunt. God knows you don't look like anybody's maiden aunt. You complicated little idiot. You're missing your exercise, I bet. That's what's wrong with you. Tell you what, blow your whistle and we'll have a wrestle. Oh, I could kill you. <laughs> All you can do is to make fun of me. I wanted to be honest with you, to tell you that I realise what a fix me in and that I don't care that, that I wouldn't be anywhere else. I wanted you to know. You're an idiot. Perhaps I am. Yes, I think I must be. But I thought perhaps I might be on your conscience. I thought you might feel responsible for me, even though it wasn't really your fault that I'm here. I wanted you to know that it was all right. It's not all right. I wish you were safe and out of it. Anywhere. I wish I knew what they're up to. They ought to be doing something by now. They've got to get us before dark. It's time they were doing something. They've still got plenty of time before dark. It looks quiet enough down on the road. They're still patrolling, though. There goes the car. Ah, oh, well, at least it's getting a bit cooler. The school will be on its way back by now. If we manage to hang on till dark, what then? Mm, good question. They've had all this time to cover all our probable moves. I rather think Lugano's out. Even supposing we make the town, they'll have the police station covered. I can just visualise our walking down a quiet street. It'd be too easy for them. I suppose the nearest phone would do. It would, very nicely, but we can assume that any villa hereabouts will be watched. It's not going to be all roses, even if we hang on till dark, then. Sure not. The trick is getting out of this immediate area. We're up against some very devious minds with the added incentive of their being desperate. That's why I can't understand why they've wasted all this time. One assumes they haven't. What then is brewing? Do you expect a direct assault? Well, they've got to do something. It's full of snags, but they could pin us down if it was determined enough. I think I'll have a climb down there, not too far, see if I can learn anything. Then I'm coming too. We mustn't get split up. Listen. Again. This is the third time he's been learned. Can't be them, surely. Why would they need a plane? They know just where we are. We're not going anywhere until dark, and by then the plane wouldn't be much use. It must be some tourist admiring the lake. There it is, over there. Yes, I see it. What were all those pipes and things? Crop spraying gear. Seem to be spraying the trees lower down. Must be the Forestry Commission or somebody. Insecticide, probably. Ugh, hope it's not too toxic. Might be working its way up here. I say, it's a bit long arm of coincidence, isn't it? And the wrong end of the day. Change of plans. We're going up a bit. There's a better view of the lake up there. Come on, we should be able to see it for longer this time. You're more windy than I am, Shields. Serves you right for smoking all my cigarettes. Well, kindly don't flaunt your youth and vigour. Here, give me a hand. Ah, oh, thanks. Uh, that's better. Oh. Ooh. Quite a view from here. I don't stick the old neck out too far. I'm becoming fond of it, remember? Uh, can you see the plane? No. Yes, I can. Over the lake there, making a circuit. He can't turn the other way, of course, because of the mountains. Here he comes. They don't look like official colours. Forestry Commission would be more sober, don't you think? Try and spot where he begins to spray. And where he stops? Yes. Just the trees. You could see the spray quite clearly. Yes, and a bit closer to us than last time. He's very systematic, is this bird? Looks like we're in for a dose, then. I wonder what the stuff... <coughs> Gosh, what's that? Some poor devil further down. This way. <coughs> down there. There he is. Oh! No, no, keep back. There's nothing we can do for him now. 
There aren't any flames. But he is on fire, as you say. At least, that's as good a way as any to describe what's happening to him. I can't look. It's the stuff from the plane. God knows what it is, but it it seems to act like an acid. Uh, uh, Poor devil. uh, He's one of their snipers. The wind must have carried the spray, or maybe got a bit eager and crawled up out of his position. It's horrible. I didn't hate them until this moment, but I do now. They're loathsome. It's meant for us, isn't it? Yes, that pilot's going to cover every section of these trees. We've seen how thoroughly he's done it so far. He's a very careful boy, painstaking. So so either we finish up like that or they drive us from the trees. That's the general idea. Or perhaps they haven't been wasting any time after all. They've organised it very capably, almost too capably. No, do you think they could? Would they? He didn't stray out of his position, did he? They sent him in there knowing he'd be contaminated like that. It wasn't an accident of wind. They made it happen. Oh. That was for our benefit, lovey. They wanted us to see it and to understand. Oh. Come on, let's start climbing. Hold my hand. It's like harvest time. Round and round the reaper goes and smaller shrinks the standing corn. And the men with the guns on the dogs gather. very solid. Would it make a shelter? Well, we're all right inside, but we'd never get out again. The undergrowth, the trees, everything's going to be saturated in the stuff. We wouldn't get 20 yards. All they'd have to do is clear a path and come and get us. Yes, I suppose we couldn't withstand a siege for long. There'd only be one outcome. Well, I'm going to do something. I'm going to shoot at that plane. Yes, I know what you mean, but it's only a gesture. Now, here he comes again. These automatics haven't the range. He's only just above the tree. We'd just be playing cowboys. I'm going to put that prat up his throat one way or another. He thinks he's got it made, stooging about up there, no opposition. What are you going to do? I'm not right sure, but I'll give that airborne eunuch a nasty moment, so help me. What's that? Oh, you're the German expert. Read what the nameplate says. Uh, Handline throwing pistol. Handline throwing? We must fire this line. Not very far, probably, but maybe far enough. If I can belt the thing off in front of his nose and he suddenly sees a rope snaking about in front of him, at least it'll shatter his snug little sense of security, might even force him to go higher afterwards. That way the wind's bound to disperse the stuff a bit, give us a bit more of a chance. Can you start folding this in here? Loops, not knots, for crap's sake. It won't work. Why not? You were just squawking about doing something. You'll have to get too near the spray. You'll finish up right underneath it. Get looping. No, I won't. As soon as he sees it, he'll pull back on his stick and bank like hell. I'll be upwind anyway. Get looping. I'll see where he's got to. (sighs) Right. Now, you get back up there where you can see him coming. He comes in low and then starts to climb for the trees. He's got to do it that way to keep low. He's fighting the lift all the time. As soon as he rises for the trees, fire that thing as a signal. Don't hang about once you've shot. Oh, not likely, lovey. Well, go on, get on with you. Oh, that's not a proper salutation. Be careful. Have you got the camera? It's all right. It's here. Don't mess about as soon as you fire. Oh, she's a dish. Can you hear me? You're a dish. I think you're gorgeous! How about that, then? Here we go, then. Let's see if we can ruffle that professional car. You've left out the retreat! Are you all right? Oh, 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 you've scraped your knuckles. Let me... It's bound to bring the police out. And the crowds. Yes, we'll be able to go down in a little while. No, sorry, love. That's what they expect us to do. They'll still be waiting. They'll be among the crowd. Oh, of course they will. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. And at least we've gained a reprieve. They can hardly tackle us now for a while. The lower slopes are going to be alive. 
We're going to make it, though. We're going to make it. It'll soon be dark. Is that an idea I can feel pounding inside there? Their strategy is based on our taking up a defensive posture. We're going over to the attack. That car they've been patrolling with, it uses the same spot for a halt every time. We're going to have a go at it. If we can get it, then straight for the Gotthard and Lucerne. Come on, we'll wait inside the hut. Down there, parked just off the road. Can you see it? Yes. Can't make out how many men, though. They're bound to be two. One to drive, one to deal with us when sighted. Wouldn't be economical to have any more. Now, we'll cross the road on the bend. Mind your athletic feet. Who the blood squeak and you're dead? Put your hands flat against the windscreen. Move. Now slide out, keeping your hands stretched out in front. Okay, stand there. No, don't turn round. Now, let's see. Where do you keep yours? Ah. That the only one? Yeah, feels like it. Now you. Oh, very orthodox. Ah, and the shiv. Ta -ta -ta. You want the... Ah! Ah! Oh. Julie, give a hand. Shields? What did you hit them with? Nothing but the best. Proper instrument. Loaded sap. Compliments of our friends on the train. Here, come on. Help me roll them in the bushes. Uh. Never used one before. See, very efficient. Beats filling your sock with grit. Come on, now this one. Uh. Imagine afterwards all that sand between your toes. Oh. Now... Now, let's have a look at the buttons on this mobile coffee bar. Oh, what the hell's this? I thought alert young agents leapt into strange cars and off with never a pause. Oh, beginner's luck. She's automatic anyway. That solves the gear problem. Now I want the lights. Hell, the, the wipers. Ah, that's better. Right. Ignition via the key, I hope. Lovely. Now, in to drive and we'll get the show on the road. I suppose this waffle iron thing's the handbrake. St. Gotthard and the Noble Alps, here we come. Keep your fingers crossed, lovey. <laughs> oh, pet, they've never been uncrossed since as far back as I can remember. it was, but it tastes all right. I didn't realise I was ravenous. Well, I had to stop. I didn't dare tackle the next stage without checking the oil and filling up with juice. The waitress looked a bit old-fashioned at my appearance. Thought I was some overgrown beet. Mm, I think you're ravishing my pet. Bless you, love. You can come again. Will they be after us? Yes, they've only about three roads to check. This must be one of the favourites. Hold tight. Oh, she's a bit spongy on the brakes. Bags of power, though. We're actually climbing quite steeply, really. Soon need the heater. Do you think you could begin to disentangle it from all the other bits and pieces? I'll have a try. I'll have bits of sausage and things on the levers, <laughs> though, I warn you. I shall ignore it in the best traditions of the service. We'll make better time now we're on the descent. Why don't you sleep? With roads like this, no thank you. It's too dark to see the drop. That awful sinister blackness is quite enough. Hell! Tars gone! Hold tight! Oh. Oh. Let's look at the damage. Oh. It's the rear offside, lousy, rotten thing. Can't stop here. Too near the bend. Anything coming round fast might pile into us. I'll have a walk further down. There might be a lay-by or at least room to pull off the road at the other side, away from the drop. Right, oh, lovey. I'll see if there's a spare and a wheel brace. Keep away from the edge. Have no fear on that score. I'll look in the boot. Now, is there anything useful there or not? Something's coming. What's that? Get off the road! Something's coming! Hey, look out! What the... Crazy place to leave it! It's them! Look! The girl! Get the girl! Get her, stupid! Get her! 
Run, Judy, run! Ah! Let me go! Oh, no! Come here! Let me go! You are the... You too! Oh, no. Oh, listen to you. Built her, she won't behave. <laughs> Hell, we've got it made. He's coming, he's coming. I'm oh, sure he's coming. We can lead him like a lamb now we've got Miss Cookie here. We'll keep going till we make Bruno's roadblock. Then we'll all have a little reunion, eh? Sure, that's right, lady. Bruno's roadblock. You didn't think Marco was going to let you through now, did you? Hey, he's coming fast. He's all over the road. He's got a flat tire. He'll be killed. Slow down. He'll follow. Slow down. Yeah, maybe she's right, Pete. I better slow down. OK, OK. No hurry, anyways. What's the crazy fool think he's trying to do? Hey, look out! I think he's trying to get past. He's trying to get killed. He's going to get us all killed if he don't stop. He let him through. He let him through. Let, slow down, for God's sake. Let him through before we make that next curve. He'll have us over the edge. Come on, then, you crazy son of a... Oh, shit. Be careful. Shut that up. Here's the curve. Let the crazy slop go. He'll never make it. Stop, Pete. Stop. Sure. Jeez, why don't he slow down? Watch with the brakes. Hey, look at him. He'll never hold it. Hey, hey, I guess he made it. Hey, I, I guess he... Listen. Jeez, what a hole! Oh no! No! That was episode five of Roy Clark's comedy thriller. Listen to Don't Go Near the Water, the next episode of Alan Eggbond's production of the 17 Jewel Shockproof Swiss Made Bomb. The 17 Jewel Shockproof Swiss Made Bomb. We present a comedy thriller in six parts by Roy Clark. Shields and Julie are fleeing from Marco's men in a stolen car, only to break down on a mountain road. Whilst Shields is attempting to fix this, Marco's men catch up with them. Episode 6. Don't go near the water. Nice to leave it's them! Look, the girl, get the girl! Get her, stupid, get her! Run, Julie, run! Let me go! Oh, no. Come here! Let me go! You are the... You too, sir! Oh, listen to you. Built her if she won't behave. <laughs> Hell, we've got it made. He's coming, he's coming. I'm oh, sure he's coming. We can lead him like a lamb now we've got Miss Cookie here. We'll keep going till we make Bruno's roadblock. Then we'll all have a little reunion, eh? Huh? Sure, that's right, lady. Bruno's roadblock. You didn't think Marco was going to let you through now, did you? Hey, he's coming fast. He's all over the road. He's got a flat tire. He'll be killed. Slow down. He'll follow. Slow down. Yeah, maybe she's right, Pete. I better slow down. OK, OK. No hurry, anyways. What's the crazy fool think he's trying to do? Hey, look out! I think he's trying to get past. He's trying to get killed. He's going to get us all killed if he don't stop. He let him through. He let him through. Let, slow down, for God's sake. Let him through before we make that next curve. He'll have us over the edge. Come on, then, you crazy son of a... Oh, shit. Be careful. Shut that up. Here's the curve. Let the crazy slop go. He'll never make it. Stop, Pete. Stop. Sure. Jeez, why don't he slow down? Watch with the brakes. Hey, look at him. He'll never hold it. Hey, hey, I guess he made it. Hey, I, I guess he... Listen.
Jeez. What a hole. Oh, no. No. I better pull off the road. Hey, one thing. It's sure quite and damn Miss Cookie here. <laughs> You don't feel so tough now, eh? Your boyfriend over the cliff? <laughs> <laughs> Hold it, can't you? Yes, take it easy. Oh. Come on, mate, sit still. Oh. Leave her alone, big man. Went for my eyes. Oh. I'll fix you later. When you fight, finish brawling with the dame, what are we gonna do next? I'll tell you what we're gonna do. You're gonna go down to that wreck. Oh, you, you can shove that. Ah, that's so. You wanna go back and tell Marco he just left the plates down there, hey? Waiting for the cops to find him, hey? Well, well, so you go. Please, one of you go. He might be... Forget little... it, sweetheart. He might be nothing. You heard the bang. Slip, you've got to go. I'm the driver, ain't I? I've got to stay here with the car. Now go on, man. Take a look. I'm coming with you. Forget it. You sit tight. Slip, here, take the torch. At least go down and take a look. See if there's a way down. How come I always get the crap? Eh? Always. Hey, hey listen... If it's steep, I ain't going down. Sure. I'll tell Marco you didn't feel like no exercise. Okay, okay. Nobody's trying to break your neck. But you've got to get the plates, man. Oh, I should have my head examined. Hey, it's, it's a good way down. Hey, hey, it's upside down. Oh, hey. oh no. <laughs> Can you get down there? I don't know. I found it away, maybe. Listen, there's a rope in the trunk. If you get stuck, flash the light and I'll drop the rope. Now, go on, man. We've got to get the plates. Hey, what's all this wee routine, eh? I don't see nobody else busting a gun. Why don't you let him get on with it? Uh, what's with you? You just sit tight. You think he's going to find your boyfriend still kicking? So what, anyways? You think we're going to rush him to a medic? Come on, use that loaf. <laughs> Quit squirming around. Sit still. You make me nervous. <laughs> Hey, you act like some hophead. Why don't you try and be a bit more friendly, eh? Get off me. Oh. Hey! If I squeeze this trigger with the barrel right in your ear, there'll be the hell of a splash. Hello, lovey. Bearing up. Shield! Just relieve this character of his weapon, will you? There's a good girl. While I waggle this about in his shell like... Ah, that's better. What are you trying to do to me, Shields? I thought... Where have you been? Come on, you. Out. Okay, okay. Come on, Don't come push on. Me, man. Come on. Oh. You're a sight for sore eyes, lovey. When I saw him grab you, I nearly went. I'll you make me. one squeak and I'll shove this right down your throat. Now start walking. Round the back of the car. Hey, what you gonna do? Open the boot. Hey? Now get in. I'll need some air, man. I can't do it. Don't push your luck. You'll be safer out of my sight. Get in. Go on. I'm suffocating there. Come on. Never mind that. You can't take me in here, man. Man, I'm... Yeah, that should hold him. Oh, Pat, you had me scared to death. Are you all right? Oh, darling. I know, I know, me too. I nearly flipped when I saw them grab you. What happened? Well, I knew I had to get in front. I had to pass them somehow. I thought you'd gone berserk. I think I had a bit. The dodgy part was overtaking you. I knew if he panicked at the wheel, we might all have gone over the side. But I had to get to the bend first, get out of their lights long enough to jump clear before she went over. Darling, look, are you badly hurt? Well, I don't think so. But what could I do? I had to stop them. It was the only way. I knew they'd have to have a go for the plates if they believed they were down there. Are they down there? No. Found them still attached to me, hot, sweaty, poor, when I picked myself up. <sighs> Can't for the life of me remember grabbing hold of them before I jumped. They're up there somewhere. I shoved them to one side. I'll go and get them. Here they are. Well, they don't seem too badly bent. I'm afraid that's more than can be said for your jacket. Come on inside. You'll have pneumonia next. You're sounding <sighs> like a maiden aunt again. Mm. <laughs> you obviously need someone to keep an eye on you, great oaf. Oh, uh, incidentally, we can't go on. Bruno's got a roadblock down there somewhere. I heard them talking. I see. He'll be looking for the white car, though, not this one. Still, enough's enough. I think we'll just turn round and head for one of those roadside emergency phones. It's going to be a hell of a long conversation. But now there's no one on our tail. We've got time to spare. 
Oh, it's energy. I'm running short of. I think that sounds fine. No more excitement, Shields. I don't care how long you're on the phone. <laughs> what about our intrepid mountaineer? You said he was quite nice. So he was, compared to that other horror. Then he's earned himself a chance. Maybe he'll still be around when the law gets here. Maybe he won't. Ah. I think I'm going to prefer this car. That other wobbly old car was half spin dryer. <laughs> oh, love. Have we really made it? Is it nearly over? Do you know, I rather think it is. Well, Shields, taking everything into consideration, you seem to have done rather well. He's done very well, and don't you forget it. That's what he means, really. It's his training, the art of understatement. You know what they do to them at Sandhurst. Looking at you, Miss Page, I'm inclined to agree that in one particular at least, he's done very well. He's a right old flanneler. Watch him. He took me into this whole caper much against my better judgment. Oh, I detected a certain flair, a gift of rapid improvisation. You were looking for a Charlie. Don't permit him to undervalue himself, Miss Page. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't, Major. For a long time, he seemed to me to be the most conceited, bumptious individual I'd ever met. In short, she fell for me immediately. Oh, incredible. Uh, Miss Page, uh, will you have another tray brought in? Oh, no, thank you, Major. The first was most thoughtful and quite adequate. Shields? Nothing to eat, thank you. I'll have another tot of that brandy, though. Oh, uh... Help yourself. Uh, excuse me. Hello? Marjison here. Yeah? Have you? Oh, good, good. I don't believe it. You, you mean they're quite satisfied? Oh, I'm delighted, Inspector. Yeah, thank you for letting me know. Yes? Yes, he's here now. Yeah, I will. Mm. Goodbye. In my opposite number. The prints on the plates are well up to the legal requirements for evidence. All 16 points. And more, if necessary. He, he wanted you to know. They can prosecute with confidence now. I mm. gather this is good news. Oh, the very best, Miss Page. Your rather hectic passage was not in vain. You brought sufficient hard physical evidence in the form of fingerprints to ensure the prosecution and almost certainly the conviction of the people right at the top of the organisation. <laughs> oh, you must excuse my rather boyish glee, but this sort of thing makes a policeman's day, you know. Oh, I think I'll join you in that brandy, Shields. You know, the difficulty in this sort of thing all along the way was the gathering of the right sort of evidence. Guys, one thing to know who's up to his tricks, quite another to set about proving it. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Now, I... I really think I ought to let you be checked over by the medics. I never felt better. see no real need, Major. Uh, I know you both feel on top of the world. I can see it in your eyes. Very glossy and bright. Unnaturally bright. It's upper limit stuff. There'll be a reaction. Not that a good night's sleep won't cure. Oh, there's not much of this night left. No matter. We can lay in. If you insist, I'll clarify the ambiguous nature of that. I'm sure uh, the Major realises you'll be behaving like an officer and a gentleman. At least I'm sure he realises that I'm too tired. <laughs> yes, there'll be no need for sedatives. Oh, speaking of sedatives, Major, did you find out how one of our drug friends from the train managed to turn up at the island so inconveniently? Walked out of the hospital. Oh. After they'd pumped him clean, too. Nobody expected that. People usually just want to die after a stomach pump. It's very determined of him. Still... Somebody slipped up. I see. His friend still doesn't know what day it is. What day is it, by the way? <laughs> oh, dear. Still rather early on Thursday morning. <laughs> you've got three days' holiday to enjoy. I'll enjoy them better when I hear you've got Bruno. Yes. Perhaps that was rather a miss of somebody, too. Though I understand he slipped away by the time the Swiss police reached his roadblock. They'll get him, though. They're pulling him in halfway across Europe tonight, even if there's no real evidence. Having the top boy safely inside will make it easier to get what they need on the rest. Encourages cooperation no end, having the big brass under lock and key. <laughs> Marco is no trouble at all, they tell me. A nice clean snatch at the border while the Italian officials delayed him beautifully. Uh, there'll be an officer from Lugano to see you sometime tomorrow, incidentally. Uh, usual formalities, statements from you both regarding the aircraft and all the rest. I must say... You put my stock up to new heights there. I've never had a better line. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, uh, that crashed aircraft of yours, uh, that chap of mine shot it down. <laughs> oh, you should have seen him swallow. Oh, give over. I was, I was trying to get the pilot to scare absolute thunderous flute. I refuse to listen to such defeatist rumour. 
Damn it, man. Let me have me a bit of fun, sitting all day behind a blasted desk. You're quite right, Major. He was lovely all the way. Lovely? Not quite the term. Now, uh, you, it would fit. Down, boy. Watch this, Deb's delight, Julie. Mm -hmm. Not to do but sit on his privileged bottom and plot. <laughs> Pick up the phone, then, Major. Organise a car to take us back to the hotel. All laid on, old boy. Oh, he's sweeter than you think. I never doubted it. It was very thoughtful of you to arrange replacements for the hotel, Major. It is, after all, the children's holiday. Oh, not at all. Least I could do. Seeing what inroads we'd made on the hotel's staff for one reason or another. <laughs> my pleasure, Miss Page. You're wrong, Major. She's my pleasure. Come on, lovey. Is she not a dish? Come on yourself, idiot. As you say. Good night, Major, and thank you again. Uh, good night, Miss Page. Oh, uh, Shields. A modicum of caution, I think, until Bruno's safely inside. After all, he is number one hatchet man. You're the main support of our case, an obvious target. He'd be crazy to try anything, but... Uh, You'll be watching us, I take it, in your own quiet way. All the time. Even if you don't see us, we'll be there. Good lad. God, your discipline's awful, Shields. <laughs> Good night, sweet prince. Well, 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 the return of the prodigal. Julie, how did you manage it? I'm green with envy. I, I thought you'd both be in bed all day. Oh, um, I, I mean, uh, well, you, you know what I mean. Very often. We decided against any more sleep. There's still some holiday to catch up with. Well, I suppose there might be some lunch left. This place is chaotic today. No organisation. Still, hardly surprising if you insist on having half the staff arrested. Well, perhaps next time he won't be so thoughtless and he'll leave it until the end of the week, Mr Pinder. I wouldn't go so far as to expect that. You must have done a useful job, I suppose, really. Can't see why you couldn't confide a bit more, though. Might have helped us to do the extra work a bit more graciously. Still, I suppose you have to have security. Aren't you the dark horse, though? I demand to hear all about it. You know, it's been quite thrilling here these last few hours. Turn any stone and a host of policemen scatter for the darkest corner. I wouldn't mind being under the command of that dark major of yours, incidentally. We've planned an excursion to the Lido at Lucerne for this afternoon. I see no reason for amending the itinerary. Perhaps they'd rather rest. Oh, no, let's not amend the itinerary. It hmm? might be pleasant just to lie about in the sun, don't you think, Pet? Peaceful, calm, good for the nerves. Mm, OK. Anything you wish, my love. Oh, very kind of you, my precious. Oh, I say. <laughs> Things have changed. Welded together by the dangers of the chase, eh? Shields and I have a lot in common. We both find him deeply attractive. <laughs> we did so even before the dangers of the chase, didn't we, love? I thought you managed to hide it rather well. I fought it for a while. There were times when you appeared to be winning. Never, my love. Basically, I found your magnetism quite irresistible. Kiss me, Hardy. Do you think we ought to leave, Mr Pinder? These seasoned campaigners seem to be mutually self-sufficient. Do you think this uh, liaison is quite wise, Shields? Quite discreet? Now, look here. Come, boy, steady. I wondered if it was quite the example to show the children. They are apt to notice these things, so if you watch me, you'll see I never allow my private life to intrude upon my professional duties. Now, if you'll be guided by my experience... I'm sorry to keep you waiting, madame. Uh, your arrival couldn't be more opportune. The timing's perfect. Uh, now, um, we'll have anything that's left. We want to cause as little trouble as possible, <gasps> don't we, pet? Oh, yes, of course. Of course, anything you say. And I'm sure we can find something, madame. Now, you mustn't worry about us, Mr Pinder. Toujours la politesse. I'm sure I can rely on your good taste, Miss Page. It's just that when you appeared to have elected to remain clandestinely in Lugano overnight, some of the children seemed fascinated. They formed some very precocious theories, I might tell you. Come in. Oh, hello, Carl. Come for your job back? Hello. How are you? I come to tell you that the arrangements are being made to make the leader secure. Oh, good. Are they efficient? Are you impressed? Uh, they seem adequate. Well, don't stand there looking so sad. Got a damarung in every line and posture. They really expect Bruno to have a go, then? Yes. You see, he knows your school schedule, and the leader presents many opportunities. As many a young blood has found to his delight. <laughs> It's going to take some guarding. There will be officers on the beach, on the approaches, even in the water. Oh, not very comforting. Where the hell do you secrete the artillery in your bathing drawers? Mm. 
What are they hoping to do if Bruno does turn up? Splash him to death? It is the custom here for everyone to take to the beach a briefcase. The plan seems efficient. Oh, I'm delighted to hear it. Will you have a drink? Nein, it is not permitted. I just felt that some little human gesture seemed appropriate. I'm glad you got out. Thank you. I... Well, you are not perhaps so unprofessional as I believe. Oh, don't rely on it. But I know what you mean. I shall not be at the Lido. My face is known, you see. I wish you luck. Thanks. Ciao. Canoes. Let your dinner settle. I don't fancy them things. They don't look safe. Neither does your girlfriend, but you seem to fancy that. Yeah. I suppose you're off courting again. <laughs> Just a walk. Grime Thorpe's most eligible bachelor. It certainly broadened his outlook, this little trip. <laughs> Aye. Hey, he doesn't seem to have done old Shields any harm either. Look at him. She's a bit lush, young Paige. I don't blame him. Too thin. Oh, get knotted. Too thin. We don't all run to your taste in saddlebacks, you know. Uh, too thin. Your Doreen's just as bad. Same as that Austrian bird of Foster's. He's getting unbearable, his passion fruit here. He was less bothering the old uncomplicated days. Uh, hey, you know, I can't get over old Shields doing a danger man like that. I'd like to know what happened. Ah, uh, me too. That Swiss cop was telling me they've arrested dozens. All except Bruno, he said. Fancy missing that big twit. They reckon he'll have a go at Shields if he gets a chance. I wish he'd have a go at Alfie. I'd give him a hand. Oh, you've collected a few bruises, Shields. Oh, pack it in. I'm not making remarks about your topography. My jacket got mortally wounded, Major. We're going shopping tomorrow, aren't we, love? Running you up a few expenses. Mm, I'd like that. A uh, bit of a cold front on expenses at the moment, I'm afraid. I can't hear a thing that man says. Must have sand in my ears. Oh, I could lie here for a week. <laughs> what? I was just thinking. Poor old Danish. It won't be sunny where she is now. She's going to miss that tan. <laughs> <laughs> for a long time. Why, Major, I do believe you're quite ruthless. What a gift of innuendo this woman has. Makes tall men suddenly feel hunted. Uh, just you be <laughs> thankful you're not fair game anymore, Shields. Now, the Major here... Madam, if you look closely around my equatorial regions, you'll see the clear signs of advancing middle age. I'm no longer the gay young lady. Lies, all lies. Oh, you're much too modest, Major. Everything looks admirably firm to me. Uh, I think I might perhaps take a look at the men in their positions. I'll come with you. It lends authenticity to have a girl attached. Come along. Oh, stay behind. I can't. Nobody to stop with. Where's Greta? Where do you think? Gone off with Love Young's dream again. Make your mind up. Oh, come on. We're not going far out. Besides, you can swim. I'm not getting this hairdo wet through. How long do you think it takes? Oh, come on. We'll keep you dry, won't we, Foster? You can keep her dehydrated for all I care. Hey. Don't get snotty with me. I can't help it if your Austrian bit's got to work this afternoon. Oh, come on, Dory. Well, mind me then. Careful. No, oh, 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 what are you putting your ruddy what feet with? performance. Oh. You aren't half lumbered with this one, Daniels. Get on with it then. And don't splash. Don't splash. Don't splash. Don't splash. Plane. It's all right. You've been dozing. Oh, for a minute I thought we I were... I know, I know. We're back, safe as houses, ringed by the imposing buttocks of the law. <laughs> There's something elemental about policemen in trunks. Look at that one over there. <laughs> it really would have made my day if one had forgotten to take his helmet off. <laughs> hey, dear. <laughs> Where are you going? For a swim. I thought I'd soak the bruises a bit. Do you think you ought? No, oh, I won't go far. I really must work off this stiffness. You're entitled to a supple, pliable shields. Accept no substitutes. What good's a rigid idiot? Which reminds me, where's Alfie got to? <laughs> oh, you mustn't be awful with him. He means well. <laughs> oh, I suppose he's casting the eye of moral rectitude over our little lot somewhere. 
don't go far. I bow to your superior charity. Shall we now? Late without bumping into that fella's boat. Oh, forget it. Fancy <gasps> knocking him in. I didn't. He dived in. He did. He dived. I was watching. Why are you out as like watching? How come we bumped into him then? Oh, shut up. He wouldn't see much past your ruddy great hair, do anyway. Where were you looking anyway? You're in front, dreaming about your little Austrian bird. Stop bitching. Bloke didn't complain, did he? He didn't look exactly pleased. What bit you could see through his goggles. If I'd been him, I'd have cursed you rotten. Yeah. Hey, I wonder why he didn't. <laughs> Too much of hurry to hide his hairy chest from the lady. Hey, did you see it? Just before he turned and went in. Ooh, fancy snugging up to that. Just like the fella in the hotel, like an ape. What Ooh. fella? That manager fella. Hey, you shouldn't be going round looking at fella's chests. <laughs> Shut up. You, you mean Bruno? That's who it was. Hey, ruddy egg. Under that face mask, Bruno. For crying out loud, come on, get right. paddling. Okay. <laughs> he went this way, inshore. Can you see him? No wonder he turned and dived in. Look for him. You're splashing! There, over there, near the diving platform. I see him. Oh, well, look who's floating on his back. <laughs> Mr Shields, look out, sir. Shout, you stupid idiot, shout. Mr. Mr. Shields! Shields! Mr. Mr. Shields! Mr. Shields! No, Shields! No use, he can't hear us! Paddle! Paddle! We'll never make it! We will if we lighten the boat! Oh, what are you doing? Sorry about the air, do! Ah! Paddle! Paddle like hell! <laughs> I think I will. Mm. Oh, <laughs> may say. <laughs> well done, Foster. Right above the ear with the edge of the paddle. He went out like a light. Lovely stroke. Those expenses of yours are going to stretch to a bit of a celebration, Major. Yes, I think we might marry something. We'd better. I hear there's a young Austrian lady somewhere in the wings, Foster. I bet she'd like a party, especially when you'll be able to tell her that you'll be coming back here soon. Are we? That's right, for the trial. You'll be giving evidence. I say, is Bruno dead? I saw them lugging him off. Uh, no, just a bit waterlogged. He'll stand trial. Look at me, Ed. Just look at me, Ed. Like a rabbit with no fur. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't expecting it. Oh, I think you're lush, honest. Honest, you'll be all right when you die. <laughs> oh, dear. Looks like defaulters parade. What's Alfie glowering for now? He's got tadpole and greeter. I warned you. I warned you. I said there wasn't enough supervision. You can't leave them alone. Not for a minute. Caught these two in the bushes, if you please. Oh, Lord. Yes. Of course, I'm not surprised at this boy. But I am shocked the girl should be a consenting party. Greeter. Miss? Well, come here, girl. Yes, Miss? Have you any explanation? I only did it to be sociable, miss. I didn't want him to think I was stuck up. I shan't do it again. It made me feel sick anyway. I should hope it did. Now go and get dressed. Yes. All of you. You too, Foster. Sir. I'll see you later. Sick indeed. Serve you right if I made you smoke the whole packet. They were smoky. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> Caught the message. <laughs> I don't see that this is a laughing matter. I should have thought... I must say from the beginning, I've not had the... Should you be holding Miss Page quite like that, Shields? I mean, out here in yes, front of... Yes, Mr Pinder. I really think he should. I really believe he should. <laughs> That was the final episode of Roy Clark's comedy thriller. In the 17 jeweled shockproof Swiss made bomb, Peter Cook played Shields and Anne Stallybrass, Julie. The incidental music was written and played by Trevor Holroyd, and the production was by Alan Eggborn.